Come on, handsome. We've got work to do. You'd think he was going to flirt with the cows instead of punching them. Pretty enough would do no harm to a certain funny face I could name. Good rooks never made a cow hand lay a loop in straighter. No? Well, you notice they didn't miss any of my throws yesterday. That's more than a certain old mossback can say. Are you trying to insinuate that I'm a mossback? Why, you young whippersnapper. I've learned better men than you all they ever knowed about punching cowards. <laughs> it was me that first shoved a gun in Bill Cassidy's hand. If you're spouting off about Bill Cassidy again, you can save your breath. Cassidy, Cassidy. That's all I've been hearing about around the bar 20 since you heard he was heading up this way from Texas. You folks act like he was all the aces in the deck. What you so head up about, kid? Afraid Bill Cassidy will steal your thunder when you meet up with him? I can take care of myself. I always have. You take my advice, young fella. You walk soft when Cassidy's around. I reckon him and me will get along fine. If he keeps his place. Don't get salty with Bill Cassidy, kid. He'll jerk a leg off you and spank you with it. Hey, Red. Johnny. Hi, Buck. Hi, Buck. One of you boys get over to the West Coulee and drive those H2 cars back across the creek. They coming over again? Oh, just a few strays, but the first one you know, they'll have their whole herd over on us. That new owner don't seem to be very clear on where his range ends and ours begins. Maybe we'd better put him straight. All it needs is just a few words of explaining between him and me. Well, in the meantime, I'll chase those doggies back home. Scrappy young rooster. <laughs> I'll bet my saddle blanket he's in a mix-up before sundown. Careful now, son. Don't get into any fights. <laughs> you spoiled this whole day. Oh, we don't want no trouble. I'll still let my bet ride as she lays. Put up that pop gun, miss. It might go off. How dare you stampede our cattle? Well, I'm just shooting them back where they belong. I reckon you must be Miss Meeker. I am? I'm Johnny Nelson, for the Bar 20. I don't care who you are. You let our cattle alone. But ma'am, this is Bar 20 rain. That's what you think. Our cattle have as much right to it as yours. Oh, you're wrong, ma'am. Each outfit has just so much water and good grazing range. And besides, there's lines. But that... this is public land. And if my father... You'd better tell him to learn where his range ends. My father knows how to mind his own business. That's more than you do. <laughs> I do, all right. <laughs> hey, you! Get out of there! Don't get mad, please. Will you let go? Drop that gun. Get him up. Cut a of that shooting iron, ain't you, mister? You're mighty lucky it was only your horse. Next time you pester Miss Meeker, it'll be a different story. Miss Meeker don't need any sneaking pot shooters to protect her from me. You better start walking home, Mr. Bar 20. I'll see you on your way. You ain't giving me no orders. Up high. Thanks, stranger. What's the play? This don't concern you. I don't like to see human beings getting tramped by a horse. It upsets my peace of mind. Pardon me, miss. 
Which side are you on? It's just a misunderstanding. Mr. Anthony, my father's foreman, thought that Mr. Nelson was annoying me. He's a sneaker. What right have you... Wait a minute. Appears to me that you two boys had better kiss and make up. Been no harm done. I don't reckon the young lady want to see you throwing lead at each other anyway. The skunk creased my horse. Well, in that case, I reckon this gent be glad to lend you his. Get off, hombre. Walking's good. You have no right to steal Mr. Anthony's horse. Ain't stealing, miss. Just a fair exchange. Then you can ride home with me on mine. That's what I'd call a privilege, ma'am. Ah, uh, keep the cayuse. But next time you walk. I wouldn't be hasty. Put it away. And in case you want to take this up later, you'll find me at the bar 20. Cassidy's the name. I'll remember. So you're Bill Cassidy. Yep. Came just in the nick of time, didn't you, Mr. Cassidy? Cassidy, Cassidy, that's all I've been hearing ever since I joined the bar 20. <laughs> it's all right, son. No thanks needed. Maybe someday you can back up my play. And I'll be looking for that chance. Want to lift over to the ranch house? Come on. Salem! Yes, boss. You got any cold milk? Yes, sir. Well, go and get some. You want milk? Yes. Him too? <laughs> Yes, him too. <laughs> oh, this creek marks the north limit of the H2 grazing land. Well, there's no talk about boundaries when I bought this place, Peter. My cows need water, they're going to get it. Dad, those bar 20 men are driving our cattle back from the water. That's our water, miss. And you'll find my men plumb touchy about strange cows grazing our range. Dad will run his cattle where the grazing's good. And if you don't like it, just try stopping him. <laughs> my feelings exactly, Peters. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. But when you buck that line, you come ready for plenty of trouble. Yes, we know what to expect. Miss Mary and I just had a sample of it from Cassidy and Nelson. Oh, Cassidy, eh? Well, I'm back in Bill Cassidy's play now or any time. He'll need your backing. You're a stranger in these parts, Mr. Anthony, so let me give you a little hint. If you want to go on enjoying our fine climate, you better stay on your own range. Peters! My foreman takes his orders from me and from nobody else. Make it easy on yourself, neighbor. Shoot first and argue afterward. That's my advice. They're a bad lot, that Bar 20 outfit. Now you tell the boys I don't want them to start anything. If trouble comes, they can count on me. That's the stuff, Dad. Has a milk, boys. Oh, I don't want to know. Ain't it going to look kind of funny, you riding in double? Pull up. I'm getting off here. Yeah? Why, you old horn toad, I thought you never was going to get here. <laughs> well, Red Connors, you Why, old horse thief. You mangy old coyote, you. It's good to see you. Now I know I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill, how did you happen to meet up with the kids? Oh, oh, he was the kind of a ruckus and I happened to be riding by. Yeah, I reckon it was a good thing for him you were riding by. <laughs> Say, there ain't no call for you spouting off about what you done for me. I thanked you, didn't I? Young fella, somebody needs to teach you some manners. Well, whenever you feel lucky, you can try. Oh, he's a good kid, Bill. A little mite hasty. Same as you when you was his age. <laughs> I reckon me and the young hothead will get along. Sure. <laughs> Come here, I got something for you. What is it, Freudy water? No. 
music box? No. What is it? Well, take a look at her. You like it, Uncle Ben? Like it? It's a lot of blues. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Here you are, Ed. Thanks, Uncle Ben. Been wanting to pipe for a long time. Third thing ain't drawed in five years. There, <laughs> 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 Ed, will you take my horse over for me? Sure thing. Okay. Buck will sure be glad to see you. Yeah, I'll be glad to see him. Bill, there's trouble brewing. Yeah, I know. I smell it. Let's see how she looks. How is she? Slicker than a brook trout. <laughs> Good! Let's <laughs> load her up and see if she draws all right. I'm strong in the sky Through the tumble wind and cold I'm following the storm And let me go that bridle for 25 years. Seems how it's you, I'm going to give it to you for your new outfit. Oh, thanks, Uncle Ben. I sure won't lose this one. <laughs> I keep singing the song while the stars are alive. I guess I'll have to stay. Hey, Buck, come here. Till my rounds of days are over. That new kid of yours is just full of tricks, ain't he? Oh, he's all right. Kind of hot-tempered, though. Yeah, I noticed that. How's it going, Buck? Well, last month we sent off a road herd of 2,000 head, and at top prices, too. You've done a great job with the old bar, 20. I hope that uh, syndicate back in Kansas City appreciates it. The profit's all they care about. If anything goes wrong, they'd fire me as quick as they would a green hand. We used to do a lot of talking about owning a place of our own, you remember? Yeah, but that's still just a dream, Bill. Meanwhile, I'm needing a good line foreman. You want to take on the job? What are you asking fool questions for? I'm here, ain't I? <laughs> yeah, you're here. <laughs> oh, I'm getting tired waiting for that hombre. When's he coming? All I know is that Pecos Jack said for us to meet him here on Thunder Mesa. Well, what's the proposition this time? That's what he's coming to tell us. I don't like him. He's too polite. And I'm might too quick with that sharp's rifle of his. Well, he's got a deal for us. And I'm open for anything. Somebody coming. That's all right. It's only Pecos Jack. Climb down. Show him up. I don't like tangling with that Bar 20 outfit. Yes, sir. They're a hard bunch to meet up with. I know. Well, if you're yellow, I'll do my talking somewhere else. Well, how do you figure getting rid of the cows? I've got connections with a railroad construction camp. They'll buy, and no questions asked. We can herd them up Barks Canyon. Put a road brand on them. I've even got a good brand figured out. You've got some right smart ideas, Jack. What do you think Meeker and Peters are going to do while we're rustling their cattle? Yeah, how about uh, that? I'll take care of that. They've had one run in over water rights. It's easy to keep the pot boiling once it's started. All you've got to do is to take orders. I'll do the rest. You need any help? I'll handle it myself until the fireworks start. Now tonight, we'll take a bunch of the boys and... <laughs>
Somebody shot Riley. Well, get water and bandages. Well, how did it happen? Somebody stampeded the new herd over the cliff. Fifty head. Who did it? I didn't see. I, I was hit from behind and didn't know anything until Anthony picked me up and near the trail. It's my guess that the Bar 20 is trying to bluff you off the range. Well, it won't work. I don't scare easy. I'll give them all the fight they want. That ain't no way to treat a poor little calf. What'll its mama say? Its mama was one of the herd your gunmen sent over the cliff last night. Cliff? I don't know what you're talking about. Somebody at the Bar 20 knows. Cross my heart, ma'am. None of our outfit was out riding last night. Oh, I wish I knew what to think. Whatever you've been thinking up to now, ma'am, there's one thing I want you to know for certain. We're a pretty rough outfit over at the Bar 20. Have to be in a new country like this. But whatever fighting is done, is done out in the open. And nobody can say any different. Somehow I'm beginning to believe you, Mr. Nelson. Not Mr. Nelson. Johnny. Johnny. You're sure sweet, miss. Maybe if I was to ride over tonight... Oh, no, I... please don't. Dad and Mr. Anthony are all upset about last night. I can soon put them straight. No, you mustn't. Besides, we're going to have a party. Well, I sure like parties. I can bring some posies from our West Meadow. They're mighty pretty now. Do you like this kind? Please, you must listen to me. If you come, there may be trouble. Oh, now, maybe that's right. Well, I'll see you again soon, Miss Meeker. Be nice to that poor little orphan. Cassidy. You say that, honey? All right. Are you responsible for that man's death? Talk yourself out of that, Mr. Cassidy. I didn't kill your puncher, Meeker. I heard a shot and come to see. I don't believe you. Crowd me, Meeker. You bar 20 gunmen have been looking for trouble, and now you've got it. Point that gun, and one of you is a dead man. I'm following the storm through the town, the weed and clover. I'm following the storm, and my kid all follows me. <laughs> Well, I'm waiting. You and your skulking ambushers. You got a lot of wrong ideas, Meeker. What are you doing up here? Oh, I heard a shot and I and thought... And smelled a fight. As lucky for you, I did. I guess that just about makes us even, Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> You're all right, kid. Say, I've got an idea there's something funny going on around here. You better steer wine to that Meeker outfit from now on. No, and them giving a nice party tonight, too. You stay away from there. They'll shoot you on sight. I'm following the stars through the tumbleweeds and clover. I'm following the stars and my pinto follows me. All right. All right. How are you, Doc? Powerful thirsty. <laughs> we'll soon take care of that. That'll be fine. It's only that, I hope. I hope not. 
Hello, Mr. Laird. Oh, hello. Happy birthday. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Laird. Here you are, Salem. Take good care of it. Give me a gun. I'll lie. Out and out murder, that's all. Poor old Curly. You know, I had the drop on Cassidy for that singing pot shooter poked his nose in. What happened to Curly? Shot. This afternoon. Oh, how awful. Who did it? One of the Bar 20 gunmen. But we're leaving it up. Dance, Miss Mary. Excuse me, please. I want to see Dad. Dad. Isn't there some way you can end your quarrel with the Bar 20 before someone else is killed? No, oh dear, I'm sorry. They're the ones who declared war. I'm going to see it through to a finish. Using my Florida water again, eh? Young fella, that cost me 48 cents in El Paso over a year ago. <laughs> hey, that's my boots. <laughs> oh, I won't hurt them. Mine are so old. I'm just going dancing. Dancing? Get them all scuffed up. I'll slick them up when I get home. Well, don't forget to slick the heels up, too. Where's the kid off to? Dancing. Dancing? Yeah. Oh, you darned old fool. Why didn't you stop him? He's going to Makers. What? Come on, Red. Let's get him. Sing your mother's old favorite for your daddy, will you? I'd love to. Folks, I have a surprise for you. Mary's going to sing. Ben Bolt. I thought I recognized that voice. What do you want? I invited Mr. Nelson, Dad. You're not welcome, but... Uh... Let me have your hat. You won't need your gun, Mr. Nelson. He's looking for trouble. Oh, you shouldn't have come. I brought you them flowers from our west meadow. They're mighty pretty, ain't they? Don't see why we had to follow the brat. Sounds like he's doing all right. All right, go on home. Me, I'm staying till the party's over. Losing good sleep for no reason. Well, you were doing all right. Wish I had a drink. Why don't you go in and get one? 
Because I ain't no lunatic. Mary, Mary. Oh, Salem, it's lovely. Thank you, thank you. Mary, make a wish and try to blow it up. <laughs> 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 You came here looking for trouble. You're going to get more than you bargained for. Ah, uh, you're local. Folks, I haven't told you. Curly was killed this afternoon by some prowling gunmen. It's more than a mere guess. It was Nelson who did it. Dad, you're not sure. Either him or Cassidy. Wait. It's a lie. We don't fight that way. Anybody got a rope? Let's drag him up. Come on. Come on. We mustn't let this happen. There's nothing we can do about it now. It's the kid. Go around this way and start shooting. Right. Tumbleweeds and clover. I'm following the stars. And Why, you I darn fool. Might have known that'd be a ruckus. Ah, uh, that was nothing to worry about. We should have let him stretch your neck. Nah, I'd have got away. I got a good mind to go back and slap that foreman down again. Keep following your nose. Now, don't go giving me no orders. You heard me. Keep headed for the ranch house. I'm doing as I please. I can take care of myself. I proved that, didn't I? Oh. Hey, Bill, you're hurt. What's the matter, Bill? You darn fool, it's all your fault. Oh, it's Bill, just I, a scratch. I'm I'm sorry. I'm a blame troublemaking fool. Oh, you're all right, kid. Just a scratch. Keep going. What are you doing, old lady? Hey, what are you doing out of bed? I'll tell you when you can get up. Now, if it hadn't been for your care, old timer, I mightn't have ever got up. Oh, here, let me help you. Well, I can hop along by myself. Oh, hop along, Cassidy, that's me. You're a better man with one leg than the whole outfit put together. Red took the words right out of my mouth. Ah. Uh... Hey, somebody busted our dam, flooded the lower pasture, and drowned ten of our calves. That's a low-down trick. What are we going to do about it? Well, let's go to Meeker's and give him a little gun medicine. That'll cure him. Ah, uh, you better be sure first. Meeker's hasty and he's stubborn. But I don't see him sneaking around drowning cattle. But somebody did it. Yeah, maybe somebody promoting trouble. Might be the same hombre that shot Meeker's puncher. Hey, maybe you're right at that. We got to be ready for anything now. Say, Buck, is that old cabin still standing up on number three line? Oh, I reckon so. Why? I was just thinking. A man in that shack, if he was a good shot, could take care of the whole end of that valley. Fred, saddle up my horse, will you? I'm gonna mose up there and take a look around. Hey, are you sure you ought to be riding? Oh, I'm all right, barn a little hop. Oh, there ain't no sense you taking them chances. I'll take care for you. Go ahead, Red. Get his horse. Ah, that kid. Ow! Hi, Cassidy. What are you doing up here? I just kind of figured that a man, if he was a good shot, could hold the line from this cabin. You're all right, kid. How do you feel? Oh, a little limpy, but just as spry as ever. <sighs> Oh, it's all my doing, Bill. If I'd had any sense, I'd have... Oh, forget it, kid. Forget it. I can hop along with the best of them. 
Somebody just wrecked the dam. Well, that's why I hightailed it up here. You got any ideas about who done it? Sure. I found this shovel up there with a meager brand on it. H2. I'd like to get a shot at that skunk. I'm just wondering if this wasn't planted for us to find. But it must have been one of the meager outfit that used it. Maybe. And maybe not. Might have been somebody who wants to keep us and Meeker fighting. Let's give him a hint. We ain't too busy to watch the line. Now take it easy, kid. We're just warning him. like they took the hint. You stay here and watch the shack and don't leave it for anything. I won't. I know you're man enough to take care of the job. Leave it to me. We've got them dead to rights this time, Mr. Meeker. They tried to kill us. I recognize Nelson and Cassidy. Take a look at this hat. I've got to have that valley. Our trick is dry. As long as they have a man in that line cabin, the valley is there. Well, drive them out. Take half a dozen men. A dose of dynamite would do the trick easier. You can't do that, Dad. It would be murder. They've earned it. Dad, this can't go on. Why can't you buy the water rights from Mr. Peters? Because they're not his. He's not going to keep me from that water. Get that dynamite. I know how to get the cabin without hurting anyone. Please, Dad, I... Following the stars through the tumbleweeds and clover. I'm following the stars and my pinnow follows me. I roam the wild prairie cause I was born a rover. I live a life at sea. While I'm following the stars, I always cut them. Johnny! Johnny Nelson! Better stay where you are, Miss Mary. I want to speak to you. You better go back. Come here. I've got something to tell you. I can't do it. Got orders not to. Mary. You hurt? Mary, Mary! I'll oh, kill that ornery horse! Run along home, Romeo. Before we start shooting. Kind of tricky, ain't you? Let me go! Let me go! Get on! There was 300 head here yesterday. And not one today. Look at here. Dead calf. A meeker brand and a bar 20 year notch. Well, this is beginning to make sense. You reckon Meeker's the one that's been... No, Meeker ain't no rustler. Oh, you mean there's someone else lifting the cattle and trying to throw the blame on Meeker? Did you figure that out all by yourself? Well, I'll be hanged for a horse thief. <laughs> no doubt about that, but the meanwhile, skin this critter, will you? I want to take a look around. Oh.
I thought I could trust you, kid. Why aren't you up in that shack? Because she's a blasted, tricky little coyote. Oh, now wait a minute, kid. That's pretty wild talk about a lady. I'm talking truth. She came up there and tricked me out of the line cabin so her pa's men could grab it. I'm sorry I didn't let them blow you out of there. Say, you're liable to get spanked if you keep on. You shouldn't be plumb grateful, miss. Nah, somebody's always keeping me from being killed. Where you headed? I'm taking her back to the bar 20. I figure her pa would be mighty happy to trade the shack for her. We don't make war on women, Johnny. Let her go. This is my play. She goes with me. Let go of them reins. You keep out of this, Bill. Let go of them reins, Johnny. You keep out of this. Come on, Bill, shoot. I got it coming. Shoot. You better go home, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Gee, Bill, I I'm a plumb fool. I never will learn. The line shack don't matter now, Johnny. We got something more important to worry over. If, if I'd have been in your shoes, I'd have taken a shot. I wonder who did put Meeker's outfit up to taking that cabin. I I guess you're right, Bill, about needing to t someone to teach me manners. Oh, you're all right, kid. Gee, Bill, I I'll try to make it up to you. A rustler's got our whole West Canyon herd last night. You sure it wasn't Meeker done it? No. Nope. The gent that's been pot shooting Digging at the dam and getting playful in general is in cahoots with an organized band of cow thieves. Well, who do you reckon it is? I ain't right sure yet, Johnny. But I aim to do some trailing. Pronto. There's plenty of time to argue over the line with Meeker. Our play is to track down them rustlers. I bet old Uncle Ben's got something for us. Hi, boy. Oh, Ben. I was poking around among them hides at the railroad camp, Hoppy. Most of them's carrying a brand I never see you for. It's a uh, HQQ. Phew! You sure been among them. Too bad the kid done took all your Florida water. Yeah. Little dash of it wouldn't hurt you any. Buck, I think I got the answer. Take a look at this. Now look. Bar. Two. Oh, now that's our brand. Now here's what they done. Made an H out of the bar, a Q out of the two, and a Q out of the O. Now here's Meeker's. H, two. H, two, they made a Q out of the two and added a Q. Hoppy, you're right. You better have a little peaceable powwow with him. Right off. Red, you come with me and we'll pick Johnny up at number five. Oh, wait a minute, Hoppy. If there's trouble brewing, I'm going. Ah, uh, you better rest up and take care of things here. Oh, that ain't no way to treat me. Darn it, it's, oh. it's a darn shame, that's what it is. Anybody think I was a baby? Ah, listen, Uncle Ben, there ain't anybody I'd rather have along in a good stiff fight, but this is just trailing. Besides, uh... Buck will need you to back his play with Meeker. Hoppy's right, then. Well, in that case, so long, Hoppy. Oh, I... oh. Oh. Huh. Oh. 215 stairs at $12 a head. 215 stairs at $12 a head. <laughs> what kind of a fit is Salem throwing now? I'm the Jimmy Hunt! 
Jack Lance, I'm going to see me again. Put that in the No, no, no. I warned you, Peters, to keep off my land. I got something very important to show you. Don't lose that firecracker and hand me that hide. Get out of here. 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 Did you ever see that before? HQQ. No, where'd you get it? At a railroad construction camp. Did you ever sell them any cattle for food? Never. Neither did I. Let me show you something. H2, that's your brand. Four, 20, that's my brand. Yeah. Now look. Well, I'll be... Not our doing. I'd have thought so, we'd have come here shooting. Do you mean to say why we've been arguing and scrapping over water rights, a gang of cattle thieves and making fools out of both of us? That's right, Dad. Yeah. The rustlers have been playing both ends against the middle. Peters, it's time you and I got together and started a little cleaning up. You're all right. I'll get back to the ranch and get my men together. Hey, how about me finding Happy and tell him that Meeker's coming in with us? Oh, where do you expect to find him? When there's trouble brewing, Happy and me always find each other. Why, you darn fool, didn't I learn you and Hoppy all you know about trading? All right. I reckon Hoppy can take care of you. You ain't never heard me bawling for help yet, have you? Here, say no. This here calf's carrying the rustler brand in your earmark. What? Yeah, they must pass this way. Thunder Macy. By cracky, why didn't I think of that afore? That's where them rustlers is hanging out. Gosh, you're right. You better ride back to bar 20 and get Peters. We'll smoke those rustlers out right now. That's a ticket. And will I have the laugh on hopping the boys? <laughs> Them looking for the wrestlers hide out for a week, and me finding it fussed off. <laughs> sure. Look out. They'll get you, too. I guess you won't do any more talking about Thunder Mesa. Hey, Red, that grub ready yet? Any minute now. I didn't hear nothing. I could have swore I heard Uncle Ben call my name. Where's he going? <laughs> From Loco, I guess.
Cassidy. Have a chance, did you, old timer? your stars and peace, old timer. It's too late for that, Jack. Looks like they know what they're doing. Besides, we'd never make it to our horses in time. That's a big bunch to try to hold off. Well, what are you worrying about? There's only one way up here, and we've got that well covered. I thought you were supposed to be smart. You sure must have left a plain trail. The old man didn't talk. I wouldn't be in your boots and Cassidy catches up with you. Why, that old man? He was just like a father to him. Well, ain't that too bad? Yeah, for you. Come on, come on. We've got no time for arguing. Have you got the trail up well covered? They ain't getting up here unless they got wings. Hey, get in There go our horses. Get that red-headed umbrey. Anthony, 
Tony, I ain't seen him. I've been wondering about him. Any sign of another trail to the top? No, nope, the opposite side of the rock cliff, straight up 100 feet. I was sure that was the only way up. Can we rush him? No, then pick us off one at a time. Tell the boys to concentrate their fire at the top of the trail. Right. Got Uncle Ben is up on that mesa, and I'm going after him. Whatever you're cooking up, I'm with you, Bill. Good boy. Wilson, go tell Nico to charge a foot of the trail. Let's ground the other side where the rocks go straight up. A fella might get a toehold with a rope, and we got plenty of rope. Let's go. Fight. They're coming up the trail. Ah, uh, he's afraid Cassidy will get him. Yeah. Shut up, Crystal. Get over there and fight, both of you. Go on. Find that skunk? I will. I'm going in there now. They'll drop you. Keep drawing their fire here. I'll go around behind them. carries a shark's rifle. Try and find out. Fresco. Take these two outside and get three ropes ready. Get along. Move along, you two. Bill. Don't let him find me. Which one of this outfit carries a shark's rifle? Pico's Jack. Who? Mika's foreman. says in the book, whatever measure you give out, that same measure shall be given out to you. Johnny, have you
have you made any plans? I mean, you don't want to go on just being a cowpuncher, do you? Of course not. I'm going to have my own place someday. A fella can do a lot of things with... Dad needs a new foreman, Johnny. I thought maybe you... I'll talk to him, Mary. Fast and hard. I'm sorry we ain't going to be neighbors much longer, Mika. But I'm buying a ranch up in Wyoming. Red and Cassidy are on their way up there to look it over now. Oh, you don't have to talk to Dad right now, Johnny. Wait until later. Red and Hoppy never told me they was going away. Well, Cassidy asked us not to. He said where he was going, there might be a lot of trouble, and he'd be too busy with that to take care of you. Oh, he did, did he? Johnny! Look, Miss Mary, I gotta hurry. Johnny! Johnny! I'll be seeing you! Kinda hated to dig out without telling the kid goodbye. Oh, he'll get along all right. Yippee! Where are you headed? So you thought you'd leave me behind, eh? What about the Meeker gal? Uh, I'll be riding back this way someday. Meantime, we have to play nursemaid. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. I'm following the stars through the cold winds and over. I'm following the stars and my pillow follows me. I roll. I do for you bandits. <laughs> you got any mail today for the bar 20? There it is. I hope your gal forgot to write to you this week, Mr. Nelson. If she did, I'm holding you responsible. I've got something else inside for the bar 20. Put your hands, young men. Which is what I was talking about. 
You wouldn't really shoot a couple of innocent young cow nurses, now would you, ma'am? Did I hear you say bar 20? That's where I'm going. I'm Clarissa Peters. Buck sister? Gee, I'm sure happy to meet you, ma'am. I'm Johnny Nelson, and this is Red Connors. How do you do? And we're sure sorry we scared you, ma'am. Yes. Scared? Me? <laughs> You're lucky I didn't kill you both. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may bring down my trunk. It's up here. Where's the carriage? Carriage, ma'am? Certainly. Do you think I intend to walk? Where is this ranch? Five miles on, ma'am. I'm certain your brother had the carriage waiting at the crossroads for you. <laughs> I'll see you two later. Yeah. You'll see us later. Johnny, I'm scared she means it. There must be one in there for me, Buck. Don't seem to be, Johnny. <laughs> she done forgot you, kid. I reckon not. Well, here's one from Wyoming after all. But not for you. It's for Bill Cassidy. Cassidy. Maybe she ain't so dumb as we thought, hey, Buck? It ain't from Margaret. It's from a pa. Hope old man Arnold ain't in trouble. Well, if he is, me and Bill can take care of it. <laughs> A lot of help you'll be to Bill Cassidy. Why, yes. you! <laughs> Stop that! Stop it! Now, you red-headed galoot! <laughs> The boys are only skylarking, Clary. Funny way to skylark. They're always at it. Uh, this is Johnny and Red. Boys, this is my sister. We've met before. Welcome to bar 20, ma'am. Perhaps you can work off some of your high spirits carrying in my trunk. Orders, Johnny. Hop to it, kid. I gotta take this to Bill Cassidy. Well, I never. Young man, you may bring in my trunk. Well, I, uh, but, uh... Yes? Steady, boy. Oh, boy. Teach you some manners. I want to play, huh? Come on. Come on now, steady. Over. Oh. 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 Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, now. Jimmy! I got something to give you. I got something I'd like to give you, too. You know in one second you just ruined four months' work with that horse? 
Gee, I'm sorry I yelled, but I brought you this. Flag. It's from Margaret's pa, Hoppy. Did you get one from Margaret? Nah, I didn't hear from her. Ah, uh, maybe there's one in here for you. Maybe so. Nope. What's the matter? What's he say? Something wrong? Well, uh, not exactly, but... Johnny, I think you better call off that trip you're planning to the Arnold. So that's it. He don't want me. Well, Margaret will be glad to see me anyway. Well, that's... that's just it. Uh, she's, uh... She's kind of changed her mind. There's somebody else. I don't believe it. Well, that's what it says right here in the letter, Johnny. Well, it's all right with me. There's lots of other girls. What you need is a little fun. Why don't you come and help me with this horse? I'll see you later. I see Buck, we'll, uh... And I want every carpet in the house taken up and beaten. And Red Collins can do that. Oh, lady. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, there you are. Uh, Clarissa, this is Bill Cassidy, my foreman. Glad to know you. How do you do? You may help Mr. Connors with the carpets. I'm sure sorry, ma'am, but Red and me is picking on leaving for Wyoming, right off. Anything to get out of working. Going up to Johnny's wedding? Johnny's, Johnny's wedding? Mm -hmm. Johnny left for Wyoming three hours ago to marry Margaret Arnold. Well, if that ain't just like him, heading right smack into trouble. What's wrong? Arnold's having wrestler trouble. Red and me's going up to help him out. Good for you. Your jobs will be waiting for you. That's fine. Thanks, Buck. Take care of yourself. Nevada. In there. Hey, you better not go in there now. Since when do you come in here without knocking? But, but boss, this is important. I'll tell you whether it's important or not. 
Now, what is it? I just saw somebody headed toward the Arnold Ranch. You rode up here 20 miles just to tell me that. Truly, your devotion is touching. But, boss, you ain't heard who he is. It's that Johnny Nelson from the Bar 20 outfit. The hombre who was up here last year to see the Arnold gal. Miss Arnold Healer. You may have two drinks out of my private bottle. Two, mind you, no more. Napoleon. I find his theories on warfare invaluable, Healer. Although I fear he lacked a finesse in dealing with the fairer sex. Of course, such matters might be beyond your comprehension. I said to. Have my horse saddled. I'm going down to the Valley Ranch. And then I believe I'll ride over and visit the Arnolds. Margaret, you ready? Well, are you not going riding in bed? Daddy, I don't want to ride. You don't mind, do you? Honey, sometimes I'm almost sorry I sent you away to school at Boston. Why, Daddy, I loved every minute of it. Yeah, that's just it. You loved it. Now you don't like the ranch anymore. No, I did hope that you and young Johnny Nelson would... Uh... It's Mr. Perdue. Hey, darling, be real sure before you make any promises. He hasn't asked me yet. Each time I see you, you're more charming. <laughs> Won't you come in out of the wind? Yes, do. It's a long ride over from your place. All that's forgotten in the pleasure of being here. I'll bring in some tea. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Have you thought of my offer for this ranch? You must admit it's reasonable. Yes, it's more than that. It's generous. For a ranch that's been raided and burned over. Well, then why not sell? Yeah. Let me take on the fight against these mysterious raiders. I have every weapon you lack. Men, Money. But do this ranch is my home and Margaret's. I'm not selling. And even Nevada and all his outlaws can't drive me off it. My friend, your very life is in danger. This man, Nevada, seems to stop at nothing. I'll take my chances on that. There won't be much to worry about when the Twitchell Road herd comes through. How many steers are you shipping with them? Five hundred. That's just about all I've got left. I suppose that doesn't seem very many to you with your big outfit. Big, yes. But nothing to what I will have someday. I intend to be the biggest cattleman in this state. Dad, there's a new colt in the summer barn. That's old Blackie's baby. Tea? No, thank you. But I would like to see the colt. Let's. Isn't he, darling? Thoroughbred. Oh, how lovely. N. What does that stand for? Napoleon. It was his favorite snuff box. Lovely. I have something to say to you. <laughs> Johnny Nelson. 
soon. <laughs> Need any good cow hands, ma'am? This is Johnny Nelson, Mr. Perdue. Our neighbor, Johnny. Howdy, sir. Pleasure is mine. Oh, well, that's right nice of you. Well, I'm sure glad to get here. You'll excuse me. Oh, don't go. Hey, nice old fella. Friend of your pa's? A very good friend. Well, here we are. I don't know why you're always talking about Boston. It's just a city, ain't it? It's a wonderful city where you don't have to worry about cattle rustlers and outlaws and washing dishes. What do they do in Boston? Throw them away? They have servants. Well, anybody I marry is going to do the dishes. And my shirts, too. I am very particular about my shirts. You needn't bother to explain. Just take those out in the kitchen and wash them. Hey, Margaret. Have you told him yet about liking Purdue better? Not yet. I don't want to hurt him. You being mighty unfair to Johnny. I, uh... I dropped a saucer. Now you stay out of there, young man. Ah, oh, well, I never was much good in the kitchen anyway. I've got the 500 head bunched up in the coolie with two men on them. Yes, I'll be mighty glad when they're shipped away. Nah, you don't think Nevada would try anything with me around, do you? Well, maybe he don't know you here. Here's where we use a little of Napoleon's strategy. A divided attack to conceal our main objective. On with you. Let's go! Who do you want to have your share? I... I ain't gonna die. Did you expect to live forever, my friend? We all have to die sooner or later. Better get to work. There's plenty to do around here. Gee, I hope breakfast is ready. Wait a minute, Red. 
I've got an idea I'll be more help to Arnold if I keep undercover a while. Ain't you gonna let him know that you're here? You're riding in and tell Arnold I want to have a private talk with him out here without anybody listening. Johnny will be glad to know that you're... You're gonna tell Johnny you're alone. A kid trusts too many people. Be kind of careful, will you, Hoppy? Why, you rusty-headed, bull-legged cow rascal, you're trying to scare me? Go on, them eggs are calling you. Will you, Margaret? Johnny Nelson! <laughs> and to think I was worried about you. Howdy, Margaret. Thought I'd better speak up before you drop them eggs. Why, you old groundhog, where'd you jump up from? Hiya, Johnny. Where's Hoppy? Just where I left him, I suppose. Didn't he come with you? Margaret? You think I can speak to your pa about a job? Why, yes. You come at a good time, Red. Yeah? A couple of the boys got shot last night. Johnny, no. take those eggs. Sure. Come on, Red, I'll show you where to hang up your hat. Good. It's no use, Bill. I'm licked. And after me coming all this way just to set in on the game. Well, we don't even know who this Nevada is. Why don't we go in there and smoke him out with 45? Well, that's been tried. But there's 20 or more canyons crisscrossing and twisting and turning up there. And we never get very far in before they ambush us and chase us back. So you see... I'm going in there, Jim. Oh, they'll get you the first 50 feet with a bullet. I don't reckon so. I'm going in kind of peaceful-like. From the north. Bill, if you could just locate those skunks... <laughs> I got a powerful keen nose, Jim. thing I'm going to do when I strike it rich? I'm going to buy you a porterhouse steak bigger than a blacksmith's apron. Yes, sir. More bacon and beans for us. Why, if it hadn't been for that big snowstorm in Colorado back a couple of years ago, you and me'd be living in the Waldorf Astoria right now. Don't you worry. <laughs> we'll get there yet. Yes, sir. I got an idea we're going to turn up a few nuggets today. Certainly is a fine day for digging. It sure is, boss. I say it's a good day for digging. Good morning. Pretty fresh, ain't she? Who are you, anyhow? Name's Riley. Tex Riley. A peaceful pilgrim. Eh? Them guns don't look so all fired peaceful to me. Why, well, I just wear them to keep my legs warm. Why, they're plumb rusty. I do all my fighting with a deck of cards. Gambler, eh? Plum rusty, eh? Yeah, so is Grease Lightning. The only other fella I ever see could draw guns that fast was Hop Along Cassidy. You ever hear of him? Seems to me I have somewhere. You stranger in these mountains? I've headed south through the buttes. Kind of lost my way. My advice is uh, turn back and go around. Buttes ain't healthy. 
Oh, shucks. I was counting on you showing me the way. Me? No siree, Bob. Well, of course, if you're scared. I ain't scared of nothing. Why, me and Hopalong Cassidy and rest of Bar 20 outfit, we cleaned up the worst gang of rustlers in the state of Texas. You don't say. Why, me and Cassidy say... I'd like to hear about it, but I reckon I'd better be on my way. Well, you might stop and have a bite of breakfast for us. I better keep going, since I had to find my own way. Now, hold on. Wait a minute. I ain't said they ain't going. Well, in that case... As I was saying, me and Cassidy say we was just like that. What you getting ready for? I aim to do some trailing up in the buttes. Who's been scaring you? When we had rustlers at the bar 20, we went looking for them. I like your spunk, Johnny. But you'd spoil any chance we have of carrying out our plans. Then why ain't I been told about them? Son, there's times when cool-headed thinking can do a lot more than fighting spirit. Meaning I don't use my head. Just an animated massacre in pants. That's you. Why now, you? When the time comes, we're counting on that gun of yours, Johnny. And counting big. Yeah. Well, we seem to be getting near a ranch. Yeah. Too dirty near. Well, I think from here on I can make it alone. The last time I'm warning you, turn back. Now, why? First thing you know, you'll be meeting up with some of them bad hombres of Nevada's. I'd sure be glad. I'm getting kind of rusty on my poker playing, too. Brave some action. Well, if that's the case, better take this rabbit's foot for luck. <laughs> Thanks, old-timer. Hop along, Cassidy, yourself shot that rabbit. You don't say. Yes, sir. Well, go on, Tex. Play him close to the chest. You bet. Just like your friend Cassidy. That's a ticket you can't lose. Goodbye. <laughs> lucky pair a melody comes from out the sky there's one place to be when the moon hangs high how can you help but find love with the moon to light your way. Two happy hearts behind love can face another day so where we part. Neath the moonlit spark, open up your heart. the moon hangs high. You still thinking about going back to Boston? Oh, Johnny, I don't know. Well, now listen. We gotta talk this over. Careful. It's quite a close call. I wish you'd change your mind about selling out. Oh, not now. Looks like we're about to have a reckoning with this skunk in Nevada. Good. I can't explain now, but when the time comes... You'll find me more than willing to do my part. Oh, Johnny, I'm so confused. I can't like it here. You're gonna like it here. Just wait and see. I'm here now. Is that Margaret? I was under the impression that Miss Arnold and I had reached an understanding. Oh, Johnny, I wanted to explain. But of course, if she prefers the attentions of a common cowhand... Why, you? ...and a gunman, too. Well, why not shoot? 
The only way your kind can speak for itself. I'd advise you to send him back where he came from. But you? You're forgetting one thing. This is still my ranch. Where'd you come from? Well, it's about time somebody showed up. I was getting powerful hungry. Who are you and what are you doing here? Name's Tex Riley. Just now I'm hanging around hoping for an invite to grab a tin plate and a bucket of coffee. You ain't a parson? <laughs> no, hardly. But I can preach a sermon and have. You're off the trail. Where you headed for? South. I was told to ride around these buttes, but I reckon I knowed better and could find a shortcut. Well, here I am. And I'm darned if I know where that is. This is the AAA. We graze herds from a lot of different outfits here. Oh. First place I run on two and three days ride. And I was figuring on a little easy pickings on the way. Three card? Most anything. Three card, three shell, draw, or stud horse. Well, if you expect to win any sizable amount, hombre, you better be pretty good at dealing. Some of us know a few things, too. Anytime you crave action, I'm ready. Stow your roll inside. We'll wait to see what the boss has to say when he gets here. Thanks. I reckon you got cards in that pack. Sure. Any kind you want. I got a deck of my own. Who do you think he really is? I don't know yet. But he better be what he says he is. A uh, nice little straight you got started there. I can read them myself. Uh, no harm meant. Four to you. Nine to you. Jack. Pair of jacks. Pair of queens bet. I'll bet 50 on these two ladies. Well, it's too late to drop out now. I'll ride along. Deal me out. Where did that white horse come from? I was just going to tell you, boss. Nine to you. Possible straight. Ace of spades to you, Layton. That's a bad card. Deal me out. Jackson five. Well, elbows, it looks like it's you and me. I'll check to that four card straight. Five card straight, Mr. Riley. It cost you plenty to see it. You better save your money, elbows. I got you beat. You think so? I'll cover that bet. Six, seven, eight, nine. That three you got in the hole don't fit in so good. Those cards are marked. That pack was marked before we started to play. And you all knew it. How do you know they were marked? Because I got a deck of my own outfit just like I didn't know they were marked. I got a magnifying glass in my pocket if you want to take a look at him. He don't have to look. He'll take my word for it. When do you say we start all over again with a new pack? Nice and clean. That suits me. Sure. Riley, you want it inside.
I understand you play poker, Mr. Riley. So I've been told. I find chess more to my liking. Are you familiar with the game? Don't look lively enough for me. The great Napoleon knew most of its principles and used them in his campaigns. I reckon I'd better stick to a game I know, Mr... They usually call me boss. It does very well. What brought you here? Good luck. Leastwise, I hope so. Them canyons play funny tricks with a stranger. Let me see those guns. They're resting right easy where they are. I ain't fool enough to start any gunplay with that rifle point at my back. This is private, Jack. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Riley? Thanks. I hope you don't mind my staying over tonight. I'll be on my way the first thing in the morning. If somebody will show me the way out of these darn buttes. Friends waiting? No, no friends. Just a man I got a little score to settle with. Who might that be? Nelson's his name. He's up here up in the bar 20 to get married. I see, Nelson. Yeah, accused me of cheating him up in Eagle. Got his bar 20 friends together, cleaned out my layout, burned down the saloon and drove me out of town. I swore I'd get even with him if it took me 10 years. And when I heard he was up here, I come a-running. I have an idea, Mr. Riley. That you might be of great assistance to me. Have a drink. All right, boys. Arnold's heard. Well, it's hardly worth going after that few. We came here for other reasons, Mr. Riley. and cows again. <laughs> Suits me fine. It's all nice and quiet. That's young Nelson. Well? Uh, my guns ain't so good from this distance. Take this. This is Mr. Nelson. You're a very good shot, Mr. Riley. So I've been told. Sure. Hey, Red, look! That's Hobby's horse. Don't be an idiot. I tell you, it is. I, you're crazy. Hey, Red. Good heart. 
No. Lay low, kid. Let them think they got us. the old buzzard messing around here, gold digging. I guess I can go where, please. So Arnold sent you up here spying, did he? Didn't I? I ain't been down that way in six weeks. How about it, boss? Well, if it ain't the old windbag himself. Last time I seen him, he was hightailing it to get out of these buttes. Trying to get me to do the same thing. Reckon they had you wrong. Start using an honest gambler. Go on. Go on, shoot me, you uh, bandits. What'll you do? Haunt us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a harmless old coot. Hey, he can sure cook a tasty bean, too. Might put him to work, boss. I ain't cooking for nobody. Put an apron on him. <laughs> Much obliged for the chance to square accounts with that Nelson hombre. Oh, that, my friend, is merely a side issue. My quarrel is with Arnold. I reckon he's licked. By this time tomorrow, there won't be a building standing on his ranch. Ow! Oh, hey! Remember, I'm an invalid. Ah, uh, just trying to get out of work, that's oh, all. Yeah. I sure wish Hoppy was here. So I can't understand why he hasn't signaled. Then he is here. Why wasn't I told? Because he's playing a lone hand, that's why. Then that was his horse, and that means something's happened to him. Looks that way. If I could find my way, I'd get in there and keep shooting till they got me. Well, let's go. We can make it. It's no use, kid. Cassidy was to send up a smoke fire to show us which canyon to head for. We've got to wait. Wait? Something's happened to Cassidy. If we don't see that signal by sundown, we'll ride in anyway. You tell the laser J and circle star to get ready. That's the stuff. Hi, Frank. Ooh. Hello, Black Blackie. Well, well, there ain't old Pete. Hello. What are they doing in off the range? The boss just called in the whole outfit. Hello. 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 Hey, biscuit shooter. Hi, Cinderella. Put on some more beans. There'll be 15 extra for dinner tonight. I wish I had some rough on rats. What are you poking around back here for? Wendy, cooking ain't so bad as getting shot. We're in a tight spot. I might want to get out of here fast. And you ain't no friend of Nevada? Anything but. Son, I'm with you till Gabriel blows his horn. I'll keep my eye on him. Here, take this. I ain't no engine giver. Besides, you might need it. You know, you ain't out of here yet. Where 
Where's Nevada? In his study, playing out his campaign like a little general. <laughs> Hey, look! It's a fire! Get the hey, fire, boys, and put it in! Shovels and sacks, fellas! Oh, All right! Who's got that fire? How do I know? We're right in. Where's Johnny? Go find him. <laughs> Margaret, where's Johnny? I never want to see him again. We quarreled. I'm going back to Boston. Ma'am, go anywhere you like, but first tell me, where's Johnny? What makes him so stubborn? He started for the Buttes an hour ago to find Cassidy. Why, the darn fool! Where'd you get that iron? Stole it from Rivetti. All right, get her hot. Say, that's fancy shooting, partner. Hey, it's getting hot here. Come out in the open and fight like men. There's the umbra Nevada figured was shot by the gambler yesterday. Napoleon slipped up on that one. Somebody else taking a hand. 
<laughs> Here I am, right on time as usual. Well, who invited you? Come on. That's a friend of Bill Cassidy's. Maybe we got them all. Stick him up. Come on, get around here. Give me that gun. Wait a minute. We're taking him back to Nevada. Get going. They got Johnny. Come on, let's go. kid? Why, sure. That was a fine trick. You might have broke my neck. If you don't learn to do what you're told, someday I'm gonna have to. Here comes a bunch of riders. It's old man Arnold. Come on. Hey, wait till I get my gun. Here. 
What's in there? Careful, kid. He's tricky. <clears throat> Gentlemen, at your sir. What do? Searching, Johnny. Oh, no need of that, gentlemen. I'll be glad to go with you peaceably. I feel sure of fair treatment at your hands. I know we can come to some equitable arrangement satisfactory to us all. Remember what you said to Cinco, boss? <laughs> we all have to die sometime. Did you think you'd live forever? Ah, <laughs> oh, uh, too bad. He sure could talk pretty. Yeah, he had me fooled. We owe you a lot, Cassidy. Cassidy? Jim, there's a lot of fine cattle around here. I reckon we better get them back where they belong. I'll be heading back here one of these days, if I'm invited. She'll be waiting for you, Johnny. Well, I kind of figured she would be. Where are you going? Oh, no wonder they call me an old windbag. All that talk I'd done about knowing you. <laughs> Forget about it. How about riding back to the bar 20 with her? Son? I'm with you till she blows up. Let's go. Comes from out the sky. There's one place to be when the moon hangs high. Oh, oh, oh. Celebrating about Peg Leg? Oh, you'd be celebrating too if you just found what you've been looking for all your life. <laughs> hey, take a look at this. <laughs> ah, Peg, you old buzzard, what's all the shooting about? <laughs> hey, take a look at this, or you guess. <laughs> hey, that's about the richest rock I've ever seen. Well, that's real high grade. Look here. 
Well, I guess that shooting didn't mean much. Everything seems to be quiet. I thought it was somebody looking for trouble. <laughs> Shakes, honors. Well, sir, I finally located a claim that's going to make me a millionaire. What do you think of that? Congratulations. <laughs> this means that your days of worry are over. Yep, yeah, and yours, too. We're partners in this deal, you and me, share and share alike. I couldn't let you do that. Not after you worked so hard for Hey, listen, where would I have been all this time if you hadn't a grub stick me? No, sir, we're partners, and that goes. You call that good over? Yeah, if you was better rock than that to throw it in my burrows. Well, if it ain't old Windy Holiday. Say, how come a top cow hand like you's riding herd on a printing press? Hmm. Why, uh, you see, uh, or none of your darn business. Wendy was unfortunate enough to have his outfit stolen. He's just helping me out until he gets another one together. Yeah. Mr. Saunders needs a bodyguard in this town. Where did you locate this claim? I ain't telling nobody. Leastwise, not till I go to the county seat and file on the claim proper. I don't want the whereabouts spread around. You know, uh, claims has been jumped before. Are you trying to send away that I'm a claim jumper? Why, for two cents I... Uh, uh, uh. Pegleg wasn't insinuating. I wouldn't linger in town too long if I were you. Better protect your claim right away. That's just what I'm aiming to do. Well, see you in a couple of days, partner. Wendy, don't let that printing press throw you. If he wasn't a friend of yours, I'd pin his ears back. Wendy? You displayed unusual forbearance. Yeah. You're darn tootin'. No, I ain't going to. Oh. So you want a drink, huh? Now, that's fine now, ain't it? Here I am exercising all my willpower and fortitude, and what do you do? <laughs> you go and stop right in front of a place like this. It's disgusting, that's what it is. Fine partners you turned out to be. Go ahead and drink. See if I kill. Stick your ears in it. You can drink all your mind of it. You ain't gonna force me to do none. Oh, excuse me. I'll buy just one more drink, then I'm gone. Oh, you said that for the last three hours. I'd like to have a look at your claim, Pegleg. I might buy in with you. Oh, you want to see it? Mm-hmm. Well, I ain't telling nobody where it is until I've filed on it. Not even my mother. Turn him up again. No use, Lily. I can't find out a thing. The old mule's too stubborn to talk. Sometimes a mule can be coaxed when he can't be driven. Hello, Pegley. What'd you say? Well, I didn't say anything, Pegley. There goes Lily going to work. Oh, hello, Miss Lily. I'm awfully happy to hear of your good luck, Pigleg. <laughs> huh? Oh, just have a drink on. Not unless I can buy you one first. Sandy, bring out my private bottle. Yeah, get that private bottle. Well, he might just as well give up his mind right now and get it over with. <laughs> I hope you've been smart enough to protect your claim in every way, Pegley. You bet your life I have. 
Are you sure the location papers are made out properly? You know, the description and all? Everything is read out right and proper, all ready to find. I always had an idea you could look out for yourself. <laughs> I sure can. But you must be careful. Don't let anyone know where your mine is located until after you file. Don't worry, Miss Lily. The location papers are staying right here until after I get to the county seat. Here's to your mine, Peg Leg. Here's to yours. He's carrying his location map and his money belt. Wouldn't be too bad if he had an accident and lost those papers before he'd had a chance to file them. Yes, wouldn't it? I'll tell Blackie. Well, Bob, there wasn't no sign of his location map on him when they found the body. And it's my guess he didn't die accidental, neither. I'm betting he was hit from behind. I'm sure it was no accident. Poor Peg Leg was murdered in cold blood. I'm going to write an editorial right now that'll rouse this town to action. It's time someone did something. Until now, the time has come when a decent citizen of the town of Mesa Grande must band together to stamp out the vicious, lawless element that's a blot on our community. And so says the editor. <laughs> that, ain't all he says. Now, that ain't all he says. Never mind what else he says, Blackie. If he's so keen on putting law and order into effect, why not elect him town marshal? You've had the job long enough. <laughs> what Lily said? You all heard what Lily said. All those in favor, say aye. aye. The election is unanimous. <laughs> Let's go and pin a badge on the new marshal. <laughs> What is it, Wendy? It's a bunch of my silver slipper. They're coming this way. They must have objected to my last editorial. Oh, eh? Well, if it's gunplay they're looking for, they're sure going to get it. Put up your gun, Wendy. They'd better let me handle this situation. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? Mr. Saunders? Since you appointed yourself chief spokesman for law and order in our fair community, we decided to let you be the law, if any. You are hereby appointed the town marshal. This wasn't your idea, was it, Clavering? And what if it wasn't? I thought not. It's far too subtle for your intelligence. Very well. Since you've given me the authority, you can tell your boss... Well, man. Well, man. Wait a minute. You keep Lily's name out of this. <laughs> As I was saying, you tell your boss that law and order shall be brought to Mesa Grande. If you're figuring on importing outside help, you better tell them to bring their own funeral expenses. We're getting kind of tired of taking up collections to bury deputies. <laughs> I have work to do, gentlemen. Good day. And so are we. <laughs> Good day, so Mr. We. Marshall. Good day, sir. <laughs> Good day. Well, boys, we got a new marshal. Let's celebrate. You won't let him.
Blucky. Deputize me and I'll clean them up for you. No, Wendy. We must wait. We must have help. Someone with brains as well as courage. Uh, you go bringing in some outsider and it'll be a plain case of suicide. Why, they wouldn't have a chance. I feel sure the man I have in mind can take care of himself. And who might this one man army be? A gentleman by the name of Hopalong Cassidy. The Hoppy! Holy smoke, why didn't I think of him before? What? Do you know him? Know him? Why, I read heard with him for years. Learned him everything he knows. Ask him, he'll tell you. But I'm wondering whether he'd be willing to leave his home range. I think he will, if I ask. I feel sure that I won't have to ask him twice. Hop. <laughs> You getting tired, tenderfoot? Oh, it's not my feet. <laughs> Seems like we've been riding for a week. I'm beginning to wonder if there is such a place as Mesa Grande. Well, I didn't want you tagging along in the first place. You think I'm going to let the oldest member of the Cassidy family have all the fun and excitement? After spending all that money on you, putting you through a good school, you wind up acting like an ordinary cowhand. Not that I, I don't appreciate what you've done, Bill, but before I settle down, I want to see a little excitement. I was told I'd get plenty of it stringing along with you. Never mind that soft soap. Come on. <laughs> hey, ten miles more to go. My stomach's beginning to wonder if I haven't got a grudge against it. I'm going to stop and rest. All right. was a bad one. I'm all right now. Thanks to you, Mr. Cassidy's the name. No thanks necessary. I'll try to even things up some way if I can, Mr. Cassidy. Are you headed for Mesa Grande? I aim to stay there for a spell. Look me up. Just ask for Lily Marsh at the Crystal Slipper. Thanks. Think you can handle him all right now, ma'am? I'm sure I can. There you are. I hope to see a lot of you, Mr. Cassidy. You can't tell. Maybe you will. Goodbye. Bye. Trying to hog everything for yourself? Why didn't you keep her here long enough to introduce me? I figure I'll have enough trouble looking after you without you getting mixed up with ladies that wear diamonds as big as spur buckles. <laughs> I'm beginning to see where I might like Mesa Grandy after all. <laughs>
Want help back in? Yeah, she's up the ranch. Look! What, what a nerve and a dirty seeming rougher. I'll fill himself full of holes you could use him for a gravel screen. What in the world's got into you? Uh, that's my saddle. That's the one that was stole the first night I got in town. Get away from that horse. Not till I get my saddle I want. Mine, I can prove it. You ain't gonna prove nothing. I don't allow nobody fingering my things. Move. Go on! Wendy, go on back to the office. Well, it's only because you're asking. But when Cassidy comes, I'll get that dirty saddle stealing polecat. So you're bringing in some sucker from the outside. Think it'll do any good? I'm sure he will. Going to clean us out, huh? Is that what you mean? Exactly. We're going to put a stop to the robbing and murdering. We're going to find out why it is that every prospector who makes a gold strike either loses his mind in a crooked gambling game or accidentally dies before he can file on his claim. Bear that in mind, gentlemen, and act accordingly. I don't like those last remarks. Sounds like he's getting personal. Think I better teach him a little lesson? Yeah. He's talking altogether too much. Saunders, the newspaper man, got hurt. Saunders? Yes. <laughs> Cassidy. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. I guess you got here just in time. Bob. I knew you'd come, Hoppy. Thanks. Buddy, get our saddle blankets. We'll carry them home. <laughs> no use. I think they've finished me. <laughs> what do you mean? Who did it? I couldn't see. They came up and back on me. I don't think I'd be far wrong in saying it was the same ones who killed Peg Leg. I want you to do one thing for me. Anything you ask, Bob. I want you to help make this part of the country a fit place for people to live. 
I'll do my best, Bob. <laughs> Look after Mary. <laughs> I can't help it, Hoppy. He, he gave me a lift when I... I needed it the most. I know how you feel, old timer. Yeah. He did about the same for me. Can't you uh, think of anyone that might have had a personal grudge against your father? Might have been any one of the crowd at the Crystal Slipper. They all disliked him. Did your father ever make a point of mentioning names lately? Yes. Yes, the time he wrote about Peg Lake Holden's death. He said it was strange that Lily Marsh should suddenly discover a rich gold mine the very next day. Who was this Peg Lake Holden? An old prospect whom Dad had grub staked for years. I suppose your father had an interest in anything that Holden might find. I believe they had some sort of an agreement to that effect. By cracky hoppy I see what you're driving at. Pegleg Holden showed up at the Crystal Slipper one night, roaring drunk. He was tossing a high grade ore around like he had all the gold in the world. Next day he was found dead. His neck broke. There you are, Hoppy. Old Hawkshaw, the detective's got it all figured out for you. Ah, show up your lip, you young squirt. Or I'd take a couple of stitches in it for you. <laughs> oh, calm down, you old windbag, before you blow up. Buddy, that's enough. I guess that's all you can tell us, Miss Mary. Thanks for coming over. Buddy, see that Miss Mary gets home safe. Glad to. Maybe I'd better go along with him, Hoppy. See, you don't get lost in the dark. <laughs> don't worry about me, Father Time. If I ever need a nursemaid, I won't go to the old people's home to find one. Come on. Brother or no brother, sooner or later, I'm going to pin that young whippersnapper's ears back for him. Oh, take it easy, old timer. He ain't like you and me. He's young. He's got a lot to learn. Maybe he will if we have a little patience with him. Come on, I want to go over to the Crystal Slipper and have a look at those guys. Hey! The new marshal's headed this way. Go on with your play. Keep up that music. Eddie, bring us another drink. I smell something. Do you? Yeah. Must be a polecat. Or the law. Give me a drink, Sam. Well, Mr. Newtown Marshal, I suppose you're here for the purpose of making Mesa Grande a decent place to live in, huh? That's a rough idea what I'm here for. Gonna make a Sunday school picnic grounds out of the place, ain't you? Mightn't be a bad idea at that. Thanks for suggesting it.
Go ahead and make your speech, mister, and get it over with. I ain't making no speeches, but I'm telling you something. From now on, this town ain't gonna be a healthy spot for them that don't watch their steps. Is that clear? Say, what's going on here? Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Howdy, ma'am. I was hoping you'd show up. Sandy, bring out a bottle of your best wine. This is the man who saved my life today. Here you are, the best in the house. I'm sorry to refuse, ma'am, but I'm not drinking. You didn't have that bad, John, when I saw you today. I didn't own it then. You're not going to let that piece of tin keep us from being friends, are you? That's entirely up to you. Then come on and drink with me. I said I wasn't drinking. If Lily says you're drinking, you're drinking. <laughs> All right, mister. But so long as I'm drinking, I'd rather have something I like. Give him whatever he wants, Sandy. Give me a tumbler of straight whiskey. You must have a cast iron stomach. Here's how. Folks that get careless with guns ain't got no right carrying them. Wendy, put that in the jail safe. And the next time you or anybody else starts any gun play in this town, you'll find yourselves cooling off in jail. I figure you all know how I stand on things by now. If anybody's got any objections, they can take it up with me personally. I aim to be around for some time. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Say, look at Lily. She don't know whether to kiss the new marshal or kill him. I wish I had my choice. Put it away. Hey, what's come over you anyhow? Why, there used to be a time when both of your guns would be out talking before you'd been in a place like that two minutes. <laughs> I wasn't wearing a badge then. Now things have got to be done legal-like. I ain't doing no shooting unless I have to. Hey, where you headed, kid? Came to have some fun. That's one place you stand out of. Oh, Hop, are you going to begrudge me a little excitement? I got an idea you'll find plenty of it around here without even looking for it. Come on. So the tough boy's going out to get the marshal. Is that the idea? Since when have you started doing things without being told? Better walk softly, Bob. I couldn't afford to lose anybody as valuable as you are. I'll take care of Mr. Cassidy myself. I'm not blind. I know what's happened. You've gone soft on this Cassidy because he saved your life. My, but you're smart. Did you figure that out all by yourself? Yes. And what's more, That's enough I... out of you. You were nothing but a cheap tin horn till I brought you here from Chicago and made something out of you. And remember this. I'm still boss. Yes, I know, Lily. But if we don't get this, Cassidy, he'll get us. It means our necks or his. And remember, you're in just as deep as the rest of us. Do you have to tell me all that? Don't you worry. I've kept this out of hot water so far, and Mr. Cassidy, or no Mr. Cassidy, I'll go right on doing it. 
if he gets in our way. We heard about you, Mr. Cassidy, and we're willing to do anything you ask. Thanks. I just wanted to know if the decent folks in the neighborhood of Mesa Grande is willing to back me up. Anything you say. Say, how about starting right now? I'll let you know when we're ready. Might not be so long coming at that. Meanwhile, spread the news around the rest of your friends, will you? Sure will, Marshal. So me and Cassidy's trying to find out if you decent folks is with us and cleaning up Macy Grandy. Well, I don't know if we've got any right mingling in town affairs. All right. If you want to go on tolerating tin horn gamblers that carry six aces in their decks, that's your business. Tell the Marshal I'll back him up. He ain't going to ring in no codex on me. Leastwise, not anymore. Darn <laughs> tootin'. Get on your feet. Leave it alone. You're under arrest. What for? You guess. I got a right to shoot at anybody that comes around that crystal slip of mine. And I got a right to arrest anybody that shoots from ambush. You ain't got no jurisdiction outside of the city limits of Mesa Grande. There ain't nothing to keep me from hurting you into the city limits and arresting you there. Get on your horse. Shooting at you or me? Looked to me like it was you. Tag nab his ornery hide. I got a half a notion to take the law in my own hands, in spite of my uh, official position. Well, I can't say it. I'm more than half flame you, Wendy. But we better keep him alive. We might learn something about that mine of lilies. Cassidy's arrested Dugan. He's got him locked up in the jail. What do you arrest him for? For taking a shot at Wendy. The old fool was riding near the mine. Dugan's none too bright. If he were questioned about the mine, he might accidentally let something drop. Wouldn't it be too bad if something happened to him before he had a chance to talk? Yeah, wouldn't it? I'll tell Blackie. Gosh, Hoppy, I thought somebody took a shot at you. How did it happen? Looks like somebody didn't want him to do any talking. How much longer are you going to let this drag on, Lily? Now Cassidy's getting the ranchers lined up against us. Are you just finding that out? I knew it yesterday. Well, what are you going to do about it? Sit back and wait until we've all got ropes around our necks? 
Are you ready to go out and meet Mr. Cassidy face to face with a gun in your hand? Why, it would be easy if you just got him up here. He's too smart to walk into anything like that. But if he ever gets careless... Who's there? Me, ma'am. Cassidy. Get out. I'll take care of this. Come in, Mr. Cassidy. I'll see you later, Bob. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Right. Nice place you got here, ma'am. I'm glad you like it. Is this a business call, Mr. Cassidy, or social? Well, it happens to be business. See, a prisoner of mine was killed yesterday, and I figured you might be able to help me find out who did it. Now, how would I be able to help you, Mr. Cassidy? Well, since he was working for you, I thought you might know somebody that held a grudge against him. Sorry, Mr. Cassidy. I don't know any more about it than you do. There's no harm in asking. It's all right with me. Nice piece of rock. From your mind? That's some of the first ore we took out of the crystal slipper. There's a lot of gold in that mine, Mr. Cassidy. More than enough for one. You're lucky. If I could find someone I like, someone who had brains and nerve to run that mine for me, He'd be lucky, too. I'd make him rich in no time. You mean, uh... I couldn't have made it much plainer, could I? Sorry, ma'am, I'm not interested. I kind of like my present job. You don't like me, do you? Well, I can't say I exactly dislike you. It's just the business you're in. And the folks you string along with. I suppose you think I should give everything up, run away from it all. Never thought of it. But it mightn't be a bad idea at that. And if I don't run away? I don't like making war on women. But I got a job to do. It seems that you and me are lined up on opposite sides. Then I'm afraid it is war between us, Mr. Cassidy. I hope it can be a fair fight. Good luck, Mr. Cassidy. May the best man win. Thanks. I, um, we should think things over, ma'am. Just for your own sake. right when I figured you'd gone soft on him. What are you talking about? Cassidy. I just saw him walking out. You see everything, don't you, Bob? Well, why didn't you get him while you had the chance? You wouldn't understand if I told you. Then why not? Because you're not a woman. Yes, I get it. You're letting Cassidy make suckers out of all of us because you've fallen for him. Even if I have, I'm no more anxious than you are to spend the rest of my life in jail. We'll get rid of Mr. Cassidy. We'll have to. Somehow I'm full enough to almost wish it could be a fair fight. Hey, Benson. Yes, Marshal. Here's a piece of ore from the Crystal Slipper Mine. I want you to compare it with that ore peg leg holdings you got in there. I'll check up on it right away. Keep it quiet. Well, hello. I thought you and Buddy were going riding. And I'm afraid Buddy feels there are other things more important than going riding. Why, if I was Buddy's age, I couldn't think of anything more important than going riding with you. 
Did he say what this business was that took him away so sudden? He didn't have to say. I've been looking for you, Mr. Cassidy. Please don't think I'm a tattletale, but I'm afraid Buddy's going to get into trouble. Well, where is he? What's he doing? Gambling. In there? Now, don't you worry about it. We'll soon put a stop to that. Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Lily or no Lily? We're going to take matters into our own hands. You lay for Cassidy. And the first chance you get, let him have it. Can't happen too soon to suit me. All right, we're all set. And all, all right, sooner are yours. Here he comes. Come on. Seven left. That's two and a one. You lose. How about taking my IOU for some more chips? Never mind the IOU. Come on, buddy. We're getting out of here. Oh, Hoppy, I'm just getting lucky. A little while longer and I'll be even. I told you I wanted you to stay out of here and it still goes. What's for your chance, Blackie? I'm going to start things moving. You better run on, son. Your nursemaid's liable to get mad and spank you if you don't. <laughs> no one's playing nursemaid to me. I'm over 21 and you and no one else is going to treat me like a baby. Give me some more chips and I'll give you an I.O.U. Come on, get going. Keep your hands off me. You've got no right coming in this way, starting trouble. Don't you start anything unless you can back it up. I'm backing him up, Mr. Marshall. I'll give you ten minutes to get out of town and stay out. Come on. You're not going to get away with humiliating me in front of all these people, Mr. Cassidy. You and I are quits. Where are you going? None of your business. Oh, yes, it is. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to let you cool off in jail for a while. Well, I guess there's no use resisting, Mr. Marshall, as long as you're wearing that tin badge. When they get Buddy's things together, I'm shipping him home. Oh, go easy on him, Hoppy. He ain't like you and me, just a kid. He'll be all right if we have a little patience with him. I don't know. He might be pretty hard to handle. Well, so was you when you was his age. Times when I felt like taking a poke at you myself. You just leave him to me, I'll bring him around all right. Kind of like him a little bit yourself, don't you? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> He's Cassidy, ain't he? <laughs> uh, you better leave him in there. Might do him good. And if he's hungry, get him something to eat. <laughs> That's got you. Right twitch the eyes. Oh, Wendy, may I come in? Oh, yeah, yeah, come right in, come right in. For me? Oh, no, that's for Buddy. I've just heard he's been locked up. Well, too bad, Miss Mary, but ain't nobody allowed to see the prisoner. But I'll give it to him. Thanks, Wendy. Try squaring yourself with Hoppy. Huh? What for? It was he who humiliated me? Certainly he humiliated... Well, it's your own fault, is it? Brother or no brother, you learn it ain't in the cards to shoot off your lip to hop along Cassidy. Well, he did it just to show off. Why, you had dag nabbed ignorant yearling. He done it to keep you out of trouble. Why, if anything had happened to you, he'd never forgive himself. He's got a mighty funny way of showing his affection. 
Well, maybe he has, according to your light. But if you live long enough, you learn that he thinks more of you than anything in the whole world. Why, I guess maybe I was a little out of line with him, Wendy. Yeah. I'm beginning to see things more clearly. <laughs> maybe that humility... Who, well, maybe done you some good after all. <laughs> <laughs> Marshal. Yeah? I checked on these two pieces of ore, and I say they both came from the same vein. Would you be willing to swear to that in the court of law? Why, of course. And if need be, I could find ten other assayers that would back up my statement. I expect to be needing your testimony right soon. Thanks. Good night, Marshal. Hey, that reminds me. How about feeding the horses? Oh, forgot all about it. Take care of it right away, Huffy. Hey, Wendy, come here, will you? What do you want? I wanted a drink of water, but never mind bothering. Get it yourself. Wendy just told me a couple of things I never learned in school, Hoppy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, forget about it, kid. <laughs> What's the idea? Evidence. Them two little pieces of rock might turn the trick for us, son. Looks like you're going to have a wholesale lot of lynchings on your hands. Oh, no, we're not. Any prisoners we get are going to be taken right over to the county seat and get a fair trial by an honest jury. Hey, Wendy, better get them guns clean, too. Hey, Pete. Think you can put some links in these for me? Sure can. Expect to be using them soon, Marshal? Before that day is over. Fix it right away for you, Marshal. Safe and ready, Pete? Yeah. That shoe will stay on this time, I think. Thanks. If you weren't so busy enforcing law and order here in town, Mr. Cassidy, I'd invite you to ride out to my ranch with me. As long as you're headed out of town, it might be wise to keep right on going. Are you advising or ordering? Advising? I told you I didn't like the idea of making war on women. Help me up, please. I'm not interested in either your advice or your orders. Lily Marsh never runs away from anything. Or anybody. Besides, if I were to leave, who'd look after you? Buck, I'm taking things over. What's the idea? Well, since Blackie's run out on us, it looks like Billy's getting ready to double-cross us with the marshal. Are you going to back me up? I never liked the idea of taking orders from women. That's all I wanted to know. Take your hands off those chips. I won't. I saw you get from the bottom. What's the matter, you? Can't you stand losing a little money without crying about it? Yes, but I won't stand for having it stolen. You can't get away with that kind of talking here. Well, you cut those chips get Come away with it. This town's going to wake up someday, and you tin horns are going to find yourselves with ropes around your necks. Well, it won't be you who does it. Dark, dark, Clavin. Come here.
told you the next time a man got careless handling a firearm, he'd be thrown in jail. Move. Come on. Cassidy's got Claiborne. I've been waiting for this chance for a long time. Me too. Try to get her over. Boys, this is only the start. Boy, let's take this job off the marshal's hand. I knew they'd get it made if we waited long enough. Uh, 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 what do you aim to do with that? Go on and string him up. The skunk shot my son in the back. If you want to file any charges against him, he'll be held for trial. We ain't going to wait for no trial. We're taking matters into our own hands. This rat killed my buddy. Listen, men. You wanted law and order in this town, and you're going to get it. Now go on about your business. We don't like going against you, Marshal, but we're taking care of this little matter. If you won't give up your prisoner, we'll have to take him. Hanging's too good for him. Come on, let's take him. I'm warning you. If you try to take this prisoner, you're going to have to get me first. Don't be a fool, Cassidy. You can't stand off the whole town alone. Who says he has to do it alone? Come on there. Open up. He said open up, didn't he? Hey, Hoppy. Yeah? Where do you keep the shells of these guns? You mean you was running a bluff? Well, I had to. Couldn't find the shells. <laughs> You'll do all right. You're just plain yellow. Cassidy told you to run, and you ran. Yeah, he had to drop on me. I can't use anybody who lets himself be run out. We're through. Oh, no. No, we're not. What about my share in the mine and everything else? Looks like the marshal's going to keep you from collecting. That's what you think. What are you going to do about it? I'm coming in tonight. Cassidy or nobody else is going to run me out of town. I wish I could believe you had the nerve. Watch and see. Too bad they put a wind in a jail like that. I guess you'll be safe, though. I don't reckon they'll try to stop you from talking like they did Dugan. Cassidy! Don't leave me here! They'll... They'll what? Nothing. If you got something to say, go on and say it. I've got nothing to say. Too bad Lily Marsh didn't feel the same way about things. What did that dirty double cross I tell you? I kind of gathered that you were on the killing of Peg Leg Holden and Bob Saunders. She's lying. She's just trying to get rid of me. Maybe so. Well, I hope the news don't get around. The town might decide to go on with that necktie party. She's lying, I tell you. It wasn't me who killed Saunders and Holden. It was Blackie. You promise you wouldn't let him string me up. Don't let him get me, Cassidy. Too bad we don't know where Big Blackie's hiding out. If they had him to chase after, they might forget about you. I tell you. I'll tell you where he is. The hideouts. I bet the crystal slip of mine. Hey, Wendy, you missed all the fun. Eh? Huh? What happened? Well, we're ready to start the roundup. Wendy, you'd better spread the word around to the ranchers to head for town. You're darn tootin'. <laughs> Hit the trail to town, man. Cassidy's ready to smoke out that silver slipper outfit. Hit the town as fast as you can, boys. Cassidy's starting the roundup. Ready for you fellas. Head for town. All right, boys, get your horses. Let's get going.
work, wouldn't they? Oh, yes. Always depend on me. We're ready for your orders, Marshal. Thanks. I need uh, four men to stay here and guard the jail. Tex, that's your job. Looks like poison to me. Me too. Six men ought to be enough to take care of them rustlers out of Lily Marshall's ranch. I'll have to take over that job, Marshal. Come on, boys. Let's head to the mine. If they follow us up there, we'll give them some of their own poison. The rest of us will ride out the Crystal Slipper mine. Better get some shells. Get going. Hey, put that gun up, kid. You don't belong in this kind of a ruckus. You're gonna do just what I tell you. You're sticking right here. <laughs> That's right. Think we're gonna have time to ride a herd on a fat-headed yearling like you? <laughs> Since it's you who's giving orders, Methuselah, guess I'll have to obey. <laughs> Cassidy and we'll rush them. Oh, it'll cost us too many men to go in head on. You stay down here. Wendy and me will do a little scouting around. We might be able to get in from the back. Come on. Buddy! Take him out there and tie him up. Get the rope. Get on his arm. What do you aim to do with me? Make that brother of yours come to time. Come on, get going. Get down in there. Are you surrendering? Surrendering nothing. Tell Cassidy to call off his men and give us 24 hours start, or he can kiss his baby brother goodbye. 
Tell Hoppy for me that if he backs out now, he's no Cassidy. You better do what Buck says, Hoppy. I got to do what the kid says. Even if we pulled out now, I wouldn't trust Buck. You better get back. I'm going up alone. Hmm. Not as long as I can crawl after you, I want. We can't let him get away with that. Tell Cassidy has got just two minutes left to decide. Give me a knife. Well, there goes one Cassidy we don't have to worry about. Take him up. All right, get the guns, Wendy. Give me that gun. Come on, Willie. Come on, get over here. All of you. Keep them covered, Wendy. Look, Cassidy's got him. You all right, kid? Yeah, I <laughs> guess so. All right, Wendy, cut him loose. Yeah, maybe we better keep the young squirt tied up. Might keep him out of trouble. Heh, <laughs> leastwise we get back to town. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want some of the boys to stand by, Marshal? No, thanks. We can take care of hurting the prisoners over the county seat in the morning. Yeah, you're darn tootin'. Well, good night, Marshal. Good night, Davis, and thanks. Come on, fella. cleaned out, Claiborne's in jail. Cassidy's holding all the aces. All of the aces, and the Joker, Claiborne. With Cassidy out of the way, we won't have to worry about anybody else, will we? No. No, we never had to before, did we? Hey, Jack. Hmm? You tell Cassidy from me that if he's half the man he thinks he is, I'll be here. Wait. I didn't think you had it in you. kind of saved each other's necks today, didn't we, kid? Marshal, I've got a message for you. Go ahead. Blackie's back in town. Where is he? Said he'd be at the Crystal Slipper for you to come a-gun him if you felt lucky. Well, tell him I feel lucky. I'm going with you, Hoppy. I want to have a little talk with Blackie myself about my saddle. 
Nobody's going with me. This business I got with Blackie Felton is personal. What's the matter, you? Backing down? I thought you'd be out in the street gunning for Cassidy by this time. Yeah. There's more than one way of skinning a cat. Why, you yell it. I knew you didn't have the nerve to meet him face to face. Keep your mouth shut. This time, it's my play. Take it easy, ma'am. I'll get the doctor. Uh, don't leave me. Doctor can't do any good. No. Sure he can. You'll be all right. Too late. I've been wanting to even my score with you, Mr. Cassidy. I guess I have, haven't I? You've more than evened it. Somehow you... You make me wish I'd met you ten years sooner. Just knowing you's... Made me want to do so many things I... I'd forgotten how to do. I knew you had a decent streak in you somewhere. I wanted to give you a chance. I don't suppose I'll have much use for anything where I'm going. Least of all a gold mine. See that Mary Saunders gets the crystal slipper. It's hers by rights anyway. Strange. Strange we... We, we never do the right things until... until it's too late. Something I've been wanting you to do, Mr. Cassidy. More than anything else in the world. Would it be asking too much if... if I asked you to kiss me? figured the kid had wanted to be trailing back home with us. I guess it was Mary that changed his mind. Huh? Some women folks have a way of changing a man's mind without him even knowing it. Funny, ain't it? Yeah. Ain't it?
هرش هر It's always upsetting things. Oh, that darn bouquet of flowers is under. <laughs> Hoppy, my hay fever's got me down again. Spring fever, he means. Look at that sign. Doing a good job, I call it. Eh? Looks like something the cat dragged in. Oh, what do you mean? That's a, that's a, uh, <coughs> hey, you better take something for that. You're gonna drown somebody. Yeah, I aim to. <laughs> Are you hurt much? Well, what do you think? Where? Well, now, well, that's kind of a personal question. Well, I reckon he's hurt the most where he hit the hardest. Yeah, right where he fits in the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fellas ain't got no delicacy at all. Hey, look out for them big words, Lucky. If you don't, they'll snap right back and throw you. <laughs> Windy? What's in that jug? Why... It's medicine. Yeah, that's what it is, spring medicine. You see, every spring I get a powerful itch in the feet. For some reason or other, I just got to go somewhere. So I, uh, I kind of take a little of this, you know, to get it out of my system. You know what happens to anybody Uncle Buck catches with liquor on this ranch. Boy, that ain't liquor. Here, smell it. Here, you taste it. Sulfur and molasses. He? So you told the truth for once. Why, well, I never told a lie in my whole life. Did hop it? Yeah. Well, maybe once. Come on, Lucky. I'll give you some arnica to rub on you where you fell. Looks to me like Buck's niece has got a rope on Lucky he ain't gonna be able to get rid of. Hand <laughs> it over. Oh, Hoppy, there's a little mite of goat's milk in it to make the medicine work. I just wanted to see if Lucky would lie to save your hide. <laughs> oh, you great kid. <laughs> yeah. I still remember a night in September when I first kissed you, sweetheart. Too happy? Got what? Spring fever? No. I was just thinking about what happened over back of them black buttes last spring. About this time. Remember? I ain't lucky to forget that stampede. Two hundred head of Bar 20 cattle lost in them blind canyons. Yeah, and three of the Bar 20's best riders trampled into something that didn't even look human. Yeah. That stampede wasn't an accident. It was murder, Wendy. Plenty back of them black buttes of the stand looking into. Yeah, but you got something else on your mind. Ain't you thinking of that good-looking Nori Blake? That lady that homesteaded over in Grass Valley a couple of years ago? Eh? Well, maybe a little. And it's your age, too. It's just that I don't like to think of any lady living in a place where there's nothing but rattlesnakes and rustlers. Say, you got it bad. You better take a swig of this. Come on. Hoppy, I've got a tough job. 
All right, name it. I got an order for a thousand head of stock. <laughs> What's so tough about that? The herd's got to be delivered at Fort Hastings within ten days. I don't think it can be done, Buck. It's got to be done. I need the cash. Now, you can cut out the fat stock in two days. But that won't it? give us time to make the ride to Fort Hastings. You'll have to take the shortcut over the Black Butte Trail. Those buttes are a rustler's nest. Remember that last trip over there? The Black Butte Trail? Yeah, that means trouble. Why can't we take him a southern route? You've got to make the contract date. Railroad won't hold the cars. Now, Hoppy, I don't like this any more than you do. But I'm up again a brick wall. I reckon that's going to put you up again the buttes. I need that chunk of dinero. Well, we'll make it somehow, Buck. All right, boys, come on. We got some wrangling to do. Can I go, Uncle Buck? Can you go where, Artie? I've never ridden herd on trail. Certainly not. I came all the way here from Kansas City for my vacation, and you and everybody else treat me like I was a kid. You don't think you're a man yet, do you, Archibald? Oh, shut up, sis. Just because you got a man, you're lucky. You think he's the only one around here can do anything. You ride trail? Why, if one of those rustlers laid an eye on you, he'd skin you alive. Is that so? Just show me one of them. I'll give him this. Well, sure as shooting, you'll be the death of me yet, Archibald. How can a fella get any played in this world with a name like Archibald? <laughs> hey, Wendy, how do you do that? Do what? Oh, that, that spinning with your gun. No, go away. You don't bother me. Oh, come on. Everybody's teasing me. Oh, you're the dirtiest pest I ever seen in all my life. Now keep your eyes open. There. Now go ahead and do it. So you've been hitting the old red eye again. Oh, uh, what's it to you, handsome? Hoppy wants to see you pronto. Mr. Cassidy wants to see me so bad, why don't he come after me himself? Well, I'm just telling you what he said. I suppose you're going back and tell him what you just saw. I'm no stool pigeon, Kino. You're always snooping around trying to find out something so you can carry it back to that slave driver. You're getting yourself set pretty, ain't you, Lucky? Playing up to Buck Peters' needs. Singing her love song. You'd better pull in your horns. Why don't you make me? I would, except Hoppy needs every man he's got. I didn't join up the bar 20 to fight no wars for 40 pesos a month. And I don't ride herd on the Black Butte Trail. Kino, you came here with a pretty tough breath. You asked Hoppy for a chance and he gave it to you. Now you show your stuff while laying down on him. You're just plum yellow, Kino. I should have really let you have a Kino. I ain't got no fight with you, Cassidy. You got no fight with anybody, so long as you can hit like a sidewinder. When you're talking to a guy like this, never turn your back, Lucky. Go on back to your work. You go to Buck Peters and get your time. If I catch you on the Bar 20 Ranch an hour from an hour, I'll come after you smoking. 
And Kino. If I was you, I'd ride east. Did you hear me? Yeah. You said ride east. see the chief. What for? Him and me's got a deal on. The chief ain't in the buttes. Who winged you? Oh, had a run in with the foreman of the bar 20. You had a fracas with Hopalong Cassidy? Yeah. And you're here to tell it? Yeah. <laughs> Loose talk. Well, being the chief ain't in these parts, I'll get to ride. Not that away. Head your keys into that draw. We aim to be right hospitable like and entertain you till the chief gets back. As long as you got a deal on with him, he wouldn't like it if we let you go. Savvy? Yeah. Come on. cattle you have there. Yeah, the bar 20 raises nothing but the best. Taking them to market? Breaking trail at dawn tomorrow. Uh, one of my horses cast a shoe. Oh, that's too bad. Say, drive up to the ranch here and ask for Wendy. He'll be glad to put it on for you. Thanks very much. I think you got something there, Artie. <laughs> Say, Wendy, how about you asking Hoppy to ask Uncle Buck if I can go on that trail drive tomorrow? Oh, you better stay home. You know, we got to have somebody take care of the ranch. Oh. Where can I find Wendy? What's well, trouble? My arm passed through this shoe. Can you fix it for me? Of course, I'll be glad to pay you for it. Oh, sure. <laughs> Bar 20 never charges a stranger anything for a little thing like that. Wait till I get some nails. Been driving long? Yes. Where are you going? Oh, west. And you don't even carry a gun? <laughs> no. Say, mister, you're sure not liable to live long. Dear me, why? Well, those buttes are just full of bad hombres, and they just as soon as you two as look at you. Oh, you alarm me. We're riding that way tomorrow, and you bet your boots that we'll be armed to the teeth. We'll be ready for them if they make one false move. Oh, heck. A noble effort, my little man. Only you seem to be as awkward with firearms as I'm afraid of them. Yeah. What are you doing? You mind if I ask you the same question, mister? This gentleman has an insatiable curiosity regarding my property. I thought I'd teach him a little lesson. Oh, I'm Professor Hepburn. I'm visiting my sister, Nora Blake, over in Grass Valley. Oh, Nora Blake. Oh, I'm Cassidy, Hopalong Cassidy. Glad to know you, Professor. Uh, she's spoken of you often. 
Well, it must be kind of lonesome over there around the buttes, ain't it? On the contrary. You see, I'm a paleontologist. A, a what? A scientist, a naturalist, an explorer. In other words, I'm a bone digger. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing some research for a Eastern Museum. I hope to prove to the scientific world the buttes, the natural habitat of the extinct dinosaur, another prehistoric fauna. You don't say. Yes, indeed. I'm finding quite a boneyard, a place of desolation, where any creature might die and remain undisturbed, undiscovered for a million years. A perfect paradise for my purpose. Uh, well, I, I guess the buttes is a kind of a boneyard, all right. And say, if you find any bones or hides with a bar 20 stock, I wish you'd let me know. <laughs> All right, here, Professor. Thanks. I, I hope you'll forgive any embarrassment I caused. Eh, uh, maybe, but I won't forget it. <laughs> I aim to ride over to Grass Valley and see how Nora's getting on. You know, homesteading's quite a job for a lady to take on. My sister'll be glad to know what an interest you've taken in welfare. Well, goodbye. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. I never saw none of them dinosaur snorters as he's aiming to hunt. He sure goes after him with heavy caliber ammunition. What do you mean? You see what he's got in the wagon? What? Dynamite. Oh, well, folks uh, homesteading, you know, they, they need dynamite. They might want to blow up some uh, stumps or something. Happy, I never thought I'd see the day that you'd let a good-looking woman come. Uh, uh, just a minute. Now, I hope his horses run away with him and blow him up. <laughs> Dinah snorter. Oh. <laughs> Chief says he's got some kind of a deal on with you. What do you want, Kino? The bar 20 is pushing a big herd by here tomorrow. And I'm here to collect that money as you promised me if I tipped you off. You're late with the news. I found out for myself. Listen, I kept my part of the deal and I want my money. You got nothing coming to you. After me quitting my job and taking a chance of coming here? That's your misfortune. Then I'll show you. I'll meet Cassidy and tell him what he's up against. Hold on. Give me your rifle. Nice shot, Chief. Hmm. A trifle heavy for sport shooting. All right, boys, get the top off. And then carry it all up the hill. Say, what about Kino? No, leave him there. Cassidy will find him. And if he does, what then? Always get your opponent in the jumpy frame of mind, you have a psychological advantage over him. You know, Blackie, nature has a peculiar way of preserving a biological balance. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Chief. Ornithology is a most interesting study. Take that buzzard, for instance. There's a useful institution. What better coffin could any man desire than one which flies? Blackie, did you ever wish you had wings? Say, I ain't aiming to ride no clouds nor, nor twang no harp. Don't worry, Blackie, you never will. Clem, try this wagon over to Grass Valley. All right. And explain to my sister that I've gone around hunting some fossil specimens. And hurry up back here. Get out of here. Hey, fellas, 
You all know what happened on the Blackview Trail last year. So if any of you fellas want to back out, now's the time to do it. What do you think we are, Lucky? We'll take care of it. We're all with Hoppy. Hoppy says be sure that all your guns are in working condition, just in case we need them. Here's an order in the Cattlemen's Association for that cash. Buck, that's quite a piece of change. Think I better put the money in the bank and bring back a check? To my local. After that fly-by-night bank folded up with me last year? I reckon, though, you better come back by the southern route. All right. So long, Buck. Good luck, Hoppy. Bye, kid. Try and get the herd past the buttes before dark. All right. Can I go, Uncle Buck? Haven't I got enough to worry me? Go away. Let's go, Lucky. The buttes have always been bad luck to the bar 20. Be careful, won't you, Lucky? All right, boys, get started. Come on, Lucky! You wanted to go so badly. Must be for sundown. Stop planning it there. Come on, boys, hurry up. When it goes off, it'll stampede that herd and we'll be able to rustle them. We'll give Mr. Casty a welcome to Black Butte that'll justify his nickname of Top Along. Cowboy deck? Well, I'd let you go, son, but there's too much danger. Danger? That's why I want to go. You didn't think of danger when you came out here 50 years ago. Why couldn't I have been born then? You had all the fun. So you think it was fun? If you had it all to do over again, what would you do? <laughs> well, I reckon you got me there, Addy. Oh, it's too late. I got my pony already in saddle. I can catch a mile before they reach the butte. Now, listen here. If you're going to take a man's place, you're going to have to do a man's work. I will. Well, your gun, your belt and holster are lying right where you left them. Oh, boy. Well, I guess he had to learn sometime. I reckon it's in his blood.
pushing them steers pretty hard, ain't he? Yeah, but I hope they don't take a notion to turn them into one of them canyons for water. Poppy, something's happened. Come on. East. Plugged hmm. right through the back. Probably never known what happened. Maybe he did. One of you boys take care of him. The rest of you better get started. It's gonna be dark soon. Now keep your eyes peeled on them buttes and don't let the hurt break that way. Poppy! Look! Here I am! Get off of that horse. Uncle Buck said I could come. Did you hear what I said? Get off of that horse. Now get in the chuck wagon here with Wendy. Wendy, pull in the foot of that cliff. We'll chow there tonight. Ah, uh, get out. We'll have you out in just a minute. Get his feet, Lucky.
See if there's some water in the lake. Still out there grazing. Hoppy! Hoppy, come here! find out. Come on. There we go. Where's the herd? The boys are holding them about six miles south of the Buse. That is what's left of them. How many missing? About 200 head near as we could tally. How about the men? Oh, a few sprained wishbones. We didn't have no chance to make our fight. Ride back and get the herd moving south. But, Hoppy, aren't you gonna fight and get our stolen cattle back? No. Say, it ain't like you, Hoppy. Just like what happened last year, Hoppy. Only it'll never happen again. Oh, Lucky! You know, Arthur can't be moved. So you make a camp and look out for him here. Yeah? Lucky, from now on you're in charge of the herd. I want you to roll them into Fort Hastings. Here's the cash order. You'll be paid for the number of steers you deliver. I want you to listen close. I want you to get the cash and ride back this way. It's exactly 12 noon, eight days from now. No sooner and no later. Now, you got that? It's a week from tomorrow. That's right. You won't let me down, will you, kid? If I ever? No. So long. Bye, Hoppy. Very much, huh? Any of my business, what are you aiming to do? One day when you go after big fish, you've got to use live bait. I'm going fishing. And lucky is my bait. That's just as plain as a Chinese laundry ticket. You can just get them rustlers down out of the buttes. Out here into the open, that's all I want. I think I've figured out a way to do it. You better throw up a few rocks there for protection. I got you. And if you're right about Nora Blake, a woman that plays a man's game has to take a man's chances. So long. So long, Harvey. Whoa there, Archie Ball. You're supposed to be sick. I'm hungry. Hungry? <laughs> Don't go on to find you trees, you're going to get well.
hop along, Cassidy. Say, who's your boyfriend there in the window? Boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Horace has the funniest sense of humor. You see, that's my brother's laboratory now. Oh. <laughs> Come on inside. Fine. I must have known you were coming. Yeah? Look. Oh, donuts. My favorite dish. I'm good, too. <laughs> so, you know, that thing out there kind of scared me. Well, when you meet Horace, you'll understand. I have met him. Oh, he didn't tell me. But then he's so absent-minded sometimes. But I'd like to know him better. Well, come on, then. Just a minute. All right. <laughs> Horace. Horace. What? Huh? Oh, hello. Mr. Cassidy is interested in your work, Horace. I just made the most astounding anthropological discovery, Mr. Casty. You see, there's a missing link in the human group between the Paleolithic and Neolithic ages, the intermediary between the flat skull and the round type. You don't tell me. We have here the cornered cranial structure, so long sought by science. Oh, you mean uh, kind of a square head, huh? Yeah, I think I know this fella. Well, now, careful. You're liable to destroy a priceless specimen. Yes, sir, that's him, all right. A fella named Anthony. He was a rustler. The boys from the bar 20 captured him red-handed up on Thunder Mesa. See, that's where they parted his hair with a 45. No, you must be mistaken. Oh, no, I'm not. Just a minute here. There's the slug. Say, when you get ready to put this fellow in the museum, just label him as a sample of what happens to people that can't keep their running irons off a of bar 20 stock. I should have made such a mistake. Oh, we all make mistakes. But some of us don't make them twice. I can't understand it. Say, did you come here to visit me or Horace? <laughs> He's always at your heels. Oh, Wendy. Oh, he's got hay fever. I left him over at the bar 20. Man, Artie, how you feeling? Pretty good. <laughs> You get take it easy and I'll go get a little fresh water. No, thanks. Oh, have another. Oh, all right. You haven't your usual appetite. No. <laughs> And how's Lucky? Oh, I was going to tell you about Lucky. We were all... What's that? My brand. I just had it registered with the Cattlemen's Association. The triangle is the shape of my little valley. The double B is for the black buttes that surround it. But you were going to tell me about Lucky. Why, what's the matter, Huffy? Nora, I sent Lucky to Fort Hastings with a big bunch of stock. I'm going to meet him at the Buttes when he rides back with the money. That will be several thousand dollars. Yeah. But do you think it's safe to allow Lucky? I trust Lucky. Well, then I'm to have your company until Lucky returns? Well, unless you throw me out. Mr. Cassidy, consider yourself my prisoner. And I couldn't ask for a prettier jailer. <laughs> <laughs>
pass for Fort Hastings. Check on a man named Lucky. Find him be riding back this way with money and when. Burn another back and report. We done a good job of blocking, Chief. In two weeks, you never know, but Bar 20 had always been triangle double B. Got them steers bottled up in Satan's Canyon. They're blocking the Bar 20 brand to Triangle BD. Sent a fella to Fort Hastings to check on Lucky. Just what I figured. Now we can get that gang down out of the Buttes into the open here and have an open fight. Now, one heart is well enough to be left alone. You hot foot it back to the Bar 20. Have Buck and the boys back here when Lucky makes his ride by. Oh, Beat him. Keep under cover and don't let anybody see you. Get up. lied to me, Hopalong. Why did you tell me Wendy was back at Bar 20? Because rustlers are raiding the Bar 20 stock. They're using your brand to cover their tracks. Then I'm under suspicion? I'm an abuse to find the guilty parties. I'm afraid you'll have to prove what you say, Mr. Cassidy. I aim to. And Wendy is part of my plan. Can't leave you now, son. But it sure knocks Hoppy's plan higher in the kite. You know, you've been here a week today and you haven't proven anything to me yet. There's one now. the old Bar 20 brand. You see how they've changed it over to the Triangle Double B? I'm sorry I doubted you, Hoppy. It's all right, Nora. My men must have known about this. I'll fire every last one of them. Oh, no, don't do that. Lucky and Wendy carried out my orders. I'm going to make my play today. I've been a lot of bother to you, haven't I? Bother? Sure. That's all right. Just as long as you're still in the ring. <laughs> Who 
looks like trouble, and the odds are again us. Now listen, Sonny. You and me have got to make just the best fight we can. Gosh, I kept you from going after Uncle Buck, didn't I? Why, you couldn't help it. Just same, I wish Hoppy was here. Lucky to be riding along here any minute. Get me a drink, will you? Sure. some specimens east of the museum, uh, taking them to the railroad at Fort Hastings. Oh. There's an interesting one. Well, better be going. Well, take care of yourself, Horace. Now, if I'm not back in a few days, don't you worry about me. Bye. Bye. You certainly had me worried. I mean about Horace. I was afraid you suspected him. Him? Your brother's a big man. He has more important things to think about in the world than rustling cattle. Here comes Dirk. Far 20 fellas coming to the money. You can catch him when he rides by the buttes. Knock your rifle. Give me a rifle. Mr. Cassidy. Nora, look up toward the pass. See anything? No. Whoever took that pot shot at me wasn't fooling. I didn't miss far. Now's the time for me to make my play. Goodbye, Nora. Did you mean it just now when you kissed me? Come back sometime in South. I aim to. Goodbye, Hoppy. Goodbye, Nora. The rest of you come with me. Yeah.
Shorty. Where's Hoppy? Well, Hoppy stopped over at the Buttes. What for? We don't know. Where's the money? Lucky's got it. Where's Lucky? Where's Artie? Sorry, Buck. We got in a little trouble over at the Buttes. And Artie got mussed up a little. Uncle Buck, look! Uncle Buck, it, it, trouble at the Buttes. Gotta ride fast. I'll be needless. Get my horse. Saddle up, boys. Boys, if Hoppy's got that Black Butte gang in the open, we've a long score to settle. We'll never call you Archibald again, Artie. All right, boys. Let's go. Come on. me bust my hair loom. Your what? My grandpa's watch. You better save your breath. You might need it later. Uh... Why didn't you shoot Cassidy when you had a chance? I couldn't plug him in the back. All right, get down there and charge that ball. Here they come.
Well, Buck, looks like the trouble with the Black Buttes is finished. I reckon so. Poor devil. I hope Nora never finds out. Pony happy you're in love. Maybe you're right. Me too. Yeah, I guess it must be springtime. You know, fellas, I'm to get that way when the posies begin to bloom. Unless we take some of them with us. You know, Hoppy, I sometimes wish I was a cow. Why? Well, they always seem to be standing knee-deep in something to eat. Ha! <laughs> I don't get it. No? You don't get it. <laughs> Come on. if it hadn't been for those strangers. Everybody all right? Well, I guess 
I guess so. All right. We certainly want to thank you. My name's Mark Jackson. Glad to know you. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. How do you do? This is Lynn Bradley in yeah. California, really? Carlson. It's a pleasure. Carlson, this is Mrs. Stevenson, her daughter. How, How do you do? do? We're very grateful to you. Oh, I was very glad. Oh, oh my other eye. Oh, oh, my other eye. Oh. oh, Tom. Tom, you're hurt. Oh, yes, ma'am. The gun got me. Those outlaws. Yeah. Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, this gun here got me when I was ducking down away from him, you see. Like this. Oh, oh, Tom. <laughs> Did you lose anything of value? Just about $10,000 worth of jewels. And my wedding dress. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the wedding. Oh, well, if every couple had to wait for jewels and wedding gowns, there wouldn't be many marriages. Oh, you're mistaken. I'm not the bridegroom. Oh. He's waiting at the mission. I'm just the best man, and my best hasn't been good enough. I better ride over at the mission and tell Richard. All right. And, Mark, we'd better go back to the ranch. Sure. Glad to have met you. All right. May we see you back home? Well, that's awfully kind of you. All right. <laughs> Tom, will you turn around, please? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see the jewels that stopped my wedding to a girl like that. Well, you don't know, Richard. No, but if I did, I'd tell him the same thing. See, the land was all he had left except the jewels. They were a heritage from his mother. He could have sold them for a lot of money. Well, she doesn't look like the type of girl that money would make any difference to. But a will to Richard. He's proud, very proud. In fact, I'm not so sure that he'd ask Marie to start life on a shoestring, knowing what she's had before. I'm sure of one thing, though. I don't relish telling him what's happened. Well, see you later. Bye. <laughs> Land of sunshine. Oranges as big as your head. It never rains, and yet the grass grows taller in the corn in Iowa. <laughs> Without rain? Sure, in the nighttime. Why, the water just pops right up out of the ground. Every blade of grass is its own little fountain. You can see a chimney, kind of, huh, kind of flickery dickery in the moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know much about the fountains, but you certainly have built a beautiful place here. No, I do hope you'll stay to enjoy it. Well, you're very kind. But as a matter of fact, our running into you the way we did was quite a coincidence. Oh, really? Yes, we were on our way here to your ranch to see if we could buy some of your prized cattle. Oh, that's a difficult request to grant, Mr. Cassidy. We've never sold any of the cattle. The herd is all that Marie can call her own. And now that the jewels, uh, Richard's wedding present to Marie, are stolen... Well, maybe we can help you get the jewels back. Oh, what do you mean? Well, from what you've told us of this outlaw, Quirt, he seems to confine his raids pretty much to this valley. That's true. His gang has a hideout in the mountains east of here. But no one's ever been able to run him down. But he'll have a hard time getting rid of jewels. I should imagine he'd rather have cash. But we couldn't raise enough cash to buy them back. But that's where we come in. I'll give you $4,000 for a hundred head of your cattle. Oh, I don't think my future son-in-law would like that idea. But, uh, if you're right about Quirt, we may consider your offer. Well, I hope we're right. I got the first bride ever to leave me waiting on the church steps. They took everything. Your mother's pearls and her brooch and everything. Yes, I know. But they didn't get this. And that's all that matters. Oh, Richard. Marie, aren't you going to introduce your guests? Oh, excuse me. Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Carlson, Mr. Bradley. My fiancé, Mr. Adams. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Jackson? Well, I'm glad someone gave Court an argument. Richard was robbed this morning, too. You were robbed? Yes, on the way to the mission. There were three of them. It was the jewels they wanted, and they were pretty sure they'd get them, too. Why do you say that? Because there was a ransom note waiting for me at the mission when I got there. Quirt must have known that uh, either Marie or I would be carrying the jewels. A ransom note? Well, Mr. Cassidy was just saying that... Yes? What was he saying? Well, I merely said that they'd probably rather have cash than jewels they couldn't dispose of. How much do they want? $3,000 to be delivered to the Castle Rocks by the day after tomorrow. Richard, we can raise the money. Mr. Cassidy has offered us $4,000 for a hundred head of our cattle. Well, that's very kind of Mr. Cassidy, but I don't want you to sell your cattle, Marie. I'll raise the money. But, Richard, listen. I'd like to talk to you alone. If you'll excuse us. Surely. Excuse me. Well, I didn't mean to start a quarrel. 
Oh, nonsense. Richard has too much pride for his own good. He doesn't want to accept financial aid from a woman. But I think we can win him over. And now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, please. Certainly. Yes, ma'am. I've got to ride into town, Mr. Casty, but I'd like you to see my ranch before you go. Any time you say. Fine, I'll come and get you tomorrow morning, early, right? Well... What made that Cassidy so certain about the ransom? Perhaps he's had experience with outlaws. Yes, it looks that way. First he predicts a ransom note, and then he tries to buy your cattle so as you can pay off. I don't believe Mr. Cassidy is an agent for Quirt. Oh, no, the facts fit together much too neatly. You're wrong, Richard. Well, maybe I am, but I'm not going to let you sell any of your cattle. The jewels were mine, and I'll find the money to get them back. How? I'll sell some of my land. Don't do that, please. We'll get a hundred cattle back in a year's time, but land doesn't multiply. I'll handle this matter. Please don't be so stubborn, Richard. Dog on it. <laughs> it's extra life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Say, looks like she's telling him off. Well, is that anything to grin about? Oh, oh, no, Hoppy. I wouldn't wish him any hard luck for the world. No. Listen, Sonny. We came here to buy cattle, not to break up a romance. <laughs> Strong. Well, there you are. Certainly a lot of land. Man needs breathing space to raise cattle in this country. Oh, by the way, I've been trying to buy some of those Stevens purebreds for a long time. If by any chance they sell you any, I'd give you a good profit for about 50 head of them. Well, they won't be mine to sell. Why not? They belong to the Bar 20. That's the outfit we ride for in Arizona. Oh. Well, the Stevens need money badly, so I hope it works out. But even if it does, I guess that won't solve Marie's problem. I think Richard would rather rob a bank than to ask her for any money. Really? <laughs> Gun. I'm sorry, but I forgot to bring my family jewels with me. No, but you brought your wallet with you. Hand it over. Relieve that gent of his watch. Get down off your horse. Hold it, Lynn. Can you imagine us walking into a trap like that? Hey, come back here and I'll orphan your children and widow your wives. Did you lose much? Four thousand dollars. I'm afraid it was my fault for bringing you up here. Ah, oh, those things happen. We don't think much of our guns. Their own either. Wait a minute. What are these initials? R.A. That's Adam's gun. You mean Richard Adams? Was he with him? Of course not. Well, you said yourself you'd rather rob a bank. Well, he must have sold the gun and lost it. I was only joking. Four thousand dollars is no joke. Let's get back to the ranch. I want to see his face when we show him that gun. Now, please don't fly off the handle. Wait until you know the facts before you condemn him. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Mr. Casty. Say, I'll run to San Bernardino and tell the sheriff you've been robbed. Right. Their horses. Well, everything's settled, Marie. I'll have the money tomorrow morning. Richard, I wish you wouldn't sell your land. Oh, well, the deal's all made. And don't you worry. I'll have your jewels and your wedding dress back. We didn't mean to intrude. Don't be silly, you're not intruding. How was your ride? A little expensive, I'm afraid. We were held up. By Quirt. He picked us cleaner than a hound's tooth. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. We lost all our cattle money. The money I hoped you could use for the ransom. I've made arrangements for that ransom money already, Mr. Cassidy. You don't say. I thought I made myself clear. Let's see you make yourself clear about that gun we found. Yeah. 
Why, Richard, that's yours. Yes, the outlaws took that from me when they robbed me yesterday. Thanks. I don't remember you saying anything about losing a gun. I didn't think it important enough to mention till now. Maybe from now on you better carry a gun without your initials on it. Excuse it. Of course. Well, they're actually trying to pin something on me. But why should they? To cover their own tracks. After all, they rescued Mother and me. Yes, after the holdup. Why not if they can get a hundred head of your prize cattle for it? They offered a generous price for the cattle, Richard. And then were robbed so that they couldn't meet the offer. You don't think they just happened to find this gun, do you? I suppose you think you just happened to lose that gun. Yeah, and Quirt just happened to find it, then happened to lose it again, where we happened to find it. I just said maybe Jackson's right. Maybe it's too early to condemn Richard. Jackson. No wonder he sticks up for Adams. He was going to be the best man at the wedding. Yeah. Who else knew you were carrying that money, Humpy? Nobody. Except the best man. Yeah, my jaw's still sore from where you boys clipped me, you know. You don't have to overplay your parts. Give me back my watch. Well, we only took it to make the holdup look good. I know. And now the cash. All of it? All of it. All $4,000 of it. Hold on, Chief. Maybe we can't get rid of these things. Yeah, so we'll just take our share out of this. You'll get the cash. But you'll get it from Richard Adams. My Adams ain't got a red cent. He will have. Because I'm going to give him this for a slice of his best land. And he'll simply give the money back to you as a ransom for those little trinkets. You'll get the cash, I'll have the land, and Adams will get his jewels back. Fair enough. Yeah, nice little wedding present for the boy. Whenever a man's land poor, I'm always willing to take the burden off his hands. What's the matter with you? Well, I was just trying to figure who's the loser in the deal. Cassidy. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be seeing you. Yep. Bye, boys. Uh -huh. idea. <laughs> Molly just likes my music, that's all. Sure, she likes anything that ain't work. Come on, let's go. Think you're smart, eh? Just take her easy. 
Hey, doggone it, California. This is getting too hard. I, I got to get somebody to come and help me. You wait till I get back. Now stay there. No, don't go away, Al. Don't go away. The damn idiot. Hi, Molly. Hey, Molly, just give me a... No. I'll get out of this thing if it takes me a week. Animals. Oh, what a jumper. <laughs> what have I got to laugh at? Look, Richard. Why do you have to put it on a business basis? Why won't you just accept the money as a sort of a friendly loan, huh? No, you know I don't do business that way. I won't accept the money without giving you security. All right. As long as you insist. Here. Here's the grant deed to 600 acres. Thank you. There's your 3,000. Thanks, Mark. When I get the jewels, I'll sell them and use part of the money to buy back this land. You know, it's the best acreage I have on the ranch. You can have it back any time you want it. You know that. Sure you don't want me to go along? No, no. Quirt said that the deal would be off if I brought anyone with me. All right. Good luck to you. Anytime I can do anything else for you, don't you hesitate to call on me. Thank you. Hey, quit talking and pull me up. What? Hundred dollars. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Silly old buzzard. I've seen kids throw themselves down the well, but never a grown up man. We got you darn it out there. Hang on, that's the stuff. Uh oh, I'm wildly digging. Here's Tom! Tom! Woo! I'm getting digging. Tom! Oh, oh, Tom! Look at me! Tom! Oh. <laughs> you like California? Yeah, hopefully. Well, I knew there were frogs in this well, but I never expected to find one as big as you. Now, I never expected to see a fellow throw $100 bills down a well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, Come on, Tom, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure, sure. Do you notice that yellowback? That was one of Hoppy's bills. It was. I'm sure of it. It was crisp and new, and you don't see yellowbacks like that around very often. Why, the honorary thief. Come on, let's stand him in his head and shake them bills out of his pants. Not yet. We better get Hoppy. Yeah, we better. Now, you find him. I want to talk to Marie. Yeah. Hello there. Oh, hello, Marie. Have some? Yes, thanks. Marie. Yes? Do you mind if I ask you a question? It's kind of a personal one. Not if you don't mind my not answering it. If it's too personal. Well, how long have you known Richard Adams? Oh, Ever since I was so high. Oh, you know him pretty well then. Very well. Why? Well, have you been in love with him ever since? Since I was so high. Oh. Only I didn't know him so very well then. Well, I've got something pretty terrible to tell you. Something terrible? Yes, I thought it'd only be fair to warn you. Warn me? Against what? Against Richard. I'm convinced he's connected with Quirt. Well, perhaps I should warn you that Richard is convinced you're an outlaw. He thinks I'm an outlaw. Could you tell who was with Adam? No, I couldn't tell who it was, Hoppy. Man's voice sounds mighty queer from the bottom of a well. <laughs> I imagine it would. It did. What makes you so sure it was my money, though? Well, people don't use folding money in this part of the country, Hoppy. You know that. Yeah. They use hard money, gold and silver. Besides, Lynn recognized them yellow backs. That's right, Hoppy. We got them red-handed. Yeah? Well, what are you aiming to do about it? Oh, shake him down and turn him in. He's the brains behind Quirk's gang. Wait a minute. Looks like the brains was in a hurry to join the body. Well, I'm trailing him. Me too. Wait a minute. Have you any objections to my coming along? Uh.
I'm wasting any time. No, neither am I. Even if he is, it's your money. It was. Oh, no, I won't. You'll get the money when I get the jewels. All right. Wait here. Let's see where he's going. Me. I've got a date with that two-faced bridegroom. All right, but don't start any fireworks. You come with me. in the open, have you? Don't mind about that. Just give me the $4,000. You'll get $3,000 when you complete your part of the bargain. Bargain? I don't know what you're talking about. Just give me that money. On your feet. Then you get up on that horse. Thanks, Mr. Bradley. Well, thank me. If it wasn't for Marie, I wouldn't be such a chump. Get going. Adams is here with the cash to pay off. What about the stuff in that trunk? I'll keep that for your hotel. Take this for mine. I'll take a souvenir. Wait job. a minute, wait a minute. Now there's enough for all of us. Relax, yeah. gentlemen. Get the guns, California. I'll take care of that. Get over there. California. Get that trunk out here and see if there's anything left in it. Ha! 
I tell you, eh? Just when I was getting all warmed up. Will I go after him, Hoppy? No, let him go. We got this one. He's the one we want. Hey, Hoppy, I got the jewels and I got the money, too. The money? You mean you took the money from Adams? Yep, and I sent him home a flying. Now, how come you let him go? Marie loves him. If you want to send him to jail, go ahead. I'm afraid you pulled a boner this time, Lynn. I just wanted to have a talk with him. Mm. What about it, Quirt? Is Jackson back of this? You won't live long enough to find out. If we didn't outnumber you three to one, I'd knock out your teeth and hammer them back into your head. Uh, bloodthirsty pair, aren't they? All right, we'll take him back to the ranch. He'll talk before he gets a rope around his neck. Horse blood, oh, she said. Pretty. Because of the wedding, the jewels was lost. Because of the jewels, the money was lost. Because of the money, the romance was lost. It's all gone with a mess. They've got quit. What are we going to do? Plenty. You all take the cut off and pick up some guns. I'll meet you at the lookout rocks. What about the chief? He'll be there. Get moving. Tom, I told you to follow them if they trailed me. Oh, well, shucks, I ain't got four hands. I can't steer if I play the music, and if I don't play the music, she won't move. Now, never mind that. Those Arizona bandits double-crossed me. They took the money and kept the jewels. Oh, my goodness. You mean Lynn in California? Yes, they're the brains behind Quirt's gang. Well, I'll be doggone. Now, look, you ride over to the West Range, pick up Jim and Lefty, and meet me at the ranch. We're going hunting. Now, yeah. hurry. Oh, my goodness. Poor little Molly. A mule with a heart of gold. And such a black-hearted boss. Well, Molly, come on. Let's go. Hmm? Oh, well... Try that again, you'll be able to get hurt. You know, it might be better for you later on oh. if you turn to state's evidence now. You robbed us of $4,000. Adams only had $3,000. What'd you do with the rest of it? I don't know. What'd you do with the other thousand? I never kept a red cent of that money. Oh, well, if Adams only had $3,000, Jackson certainly gave you a jibbing. Why that dirty then double cut? hand my money over to Jackson to give to Adams, huh? I didn't say that. You didn't need to. It's written all over you. Come on, get out of here. Everything. What's wrong? Cassidy and his men stormed us. They got Quirt and the jewels, but the rest of our men got away. Our boys will be here in a minute with some guns. Where's Adams? He took no part in it. Adams brought the ransom money wanted to pay off, but Cassidy broke up the deal. Well, things could be worse. They haven't got any real evidence against me. And Adams and Cassidy suspect each other. Yeah, but they still got Quirt. And you know he can't keep his mouth shut. He'll talk if they ask any questions. You know, Slash, I don't think Quirt's of much use to us anymore. No. I've been thinking the same thing. Take. You think you can hit him from here? He won't even yell. Keep quiet. Get out. All right, slide. Hold your lid. Quick, they want. Make a break for it. He only winged him. Ah, I hit him twice, solid. He never fell. He must be tied to that saddle. I know when I hit a man. Ten to one, he's dead already. He better be. I've got to make sure. I'll ride over to Stevens Ranch. You wait here. If he's still alive, I'll come back and give you a signal. And it'll be up to you to finish him. We'll be watching for you. Hey, Richard! Hey, Richard, wait a minute. Hey, they're coming. I just seen Ken. 
Patrick and his partner's coming down the road there with Quirt, and they're headed right straight for this ranch. Well, we'll give them a warm reception. And you leave that musical mule here. Yes, yeah, uh, come on. Uh, okay, come on. Give me a hand here. Get him off. Here, give him some water. No, it's no use. I'm finished. Get the chief. Who is it? Jackson's behind the whole thing. Was Adams in cahoots with Jackson? No. It's all Jackson. Double-crossed everybody. And he had me shot. I hope you get him, Cassidy. We'll do our best, Quirt. Good enough for me. You can put your gun away. Or it can't hurt you anymore. Yeah, so I see. Thanks for saving us a long ride. Too bad you didn't get here sooner. Court just made a very interesting confession. I'm sure he did. Now that you've shot him, why, he can't squeal on you, can he? What are you talking about? We didn't kill him. But he was ambushed by his own gang. Yeah, and you told us your friend Jackson was the head man. Uh, now you'll have to reach further and do better than that for an alibi. Why don't you grow up? Any five-year-old can tell he's the guilty one. Now a child could see that your mistake was in killing Quirk. You were only thieves before, and I have a murder charge and a noose hanging over your heads. In a little time, we can prove we had nothing to do with this man's death. You'll get plenty of time. In jail. Come on, get on your horses. All right, get down. Tom, search the saddlebags. Yes, sir. Come on in the house. Hi, hey, Richard. What has happened? These men killed Quirk. Oh. Why, it's unbelievable. Well, they did it to save their own faces. Yes, yeah, hey, wait a minute. Here's the jewels, all right. They seem to be all here, but what's happened to the trunk with my wedding dress? That must have been the trunk at Quirk's hideout. There was some, uh, uh, fluffy, lacy things there. In fact, I brought these for you. The rest of the things are left there. Now, Mr. Adams, so long as you still think we're guilty, I wish you'd answer one question. Sure, why not? We had the jewels and the money. Now, if we were guilty, why do you think we rode back here and gave ourselves up without a fight? The bolder the outlaw, the more brazen his actions. You probably thought there was something else you could get. You might have had many reasons for coming back. We came back to give the jewels to Marie, and that's all. And no doubt to return the money you went to such trouble in stealing from me. No, only to ask you where you got the money. Where do you think he'd get it? He sold some of his land for half what it's worth. Then you robbed him of the ransom money. And may I ask who he sold the land to? Mark Jackson. Don't you see what he's trying to do? He's using us one against the other to get more land, along with your jewels and my money. Oh, no. Quirt got the jewels and Bradley got the money. Hey, here's the money, and by golly, it's all there. $3,000. Well, it's not all there, Hoppy. What Just about... Just a minute, then. Well, Mr. Cassidy, any more theories? This is not theory, Mrs. Stevens. It's, it's facts. Before we left Arizona, I went to the bank in Flagstaff and got $4,000 in gold back notes. They were all new bills. I recorded all the serial numbers. These are the same bills stolen from me and given to you by Jackson. That proves nothing. You could have had those serial numbers recorded today. Yes, but Jackson still has $1,000 of the money. Now, how would we know the serial numbers on his bills? Well, Mark will be here in a few minutes. I'm sure he'll be amused to be searched for his own money. I hardly think he'd be stupid enough to carry the money around with him. Besides, I don't want him to know that anyone suspects him. Why? Because he had Quirt killed before he could tell what he knew about him. Well, unfortunately, Quirt's not alive to bear you out. But if Jackson thought Quirt was still alive, he'd try to kill him again. What are you getting at? Suppose you tell Jackson that Quirt is still alive but unconscious, and that he's sworn to turn state's evidence. You're out of your mind. Jackson knows a dead man when he sees one. Maybe so. But suppose you put me in a cart and tell him it's Quirt, and that you're taking him into town for confession. Well, you can't do that, Hoppy. They'll kill you. Well, they'll probably try to. But I'm willing to take that chance to prove that Jackson is guilty. Well, I see no reason for deceiving the man who's proved himself to be my best friend. What can you lose by giving them a chance? If nothing happens, you can turn us over to the sheriff in San Bartolino. 
Well, it seems a pretty gruesome kind of a joke. It's not much of a joke for three men to have ropes put around their necks for something they didn't do. Please, Richard. I think you ought to let them try it. Well, all right, Marie, but I'll have no part in setting this trap. I believe in Mark Jackson. What do you want me to do? Well, when Jackson does get here, tell him that you captured the three of us, but that I got away. All right, boys, tie yourselves up. Mark will never forgive me for this kind of a trick. You'll never forgive yourself if you send innocent men to the gallows. I'm worried. What are you worried about? What chance have we got when the shooting starts? We'll have as good a chance as Quirt had. Sure. Look what happened to him. A man that would get himself killed to prove a point with a mule beat for stubborn. Uh, uh, say, listen, California, talking about mules, uh, what about Molly? What about her? Well, you ain't gonna have any use for her where you're going. I'd like to buy her from you. <laughs> You'll get her over my dead body. Oh, well, that's awful nice of you, California. Thanks. I'll take good care of her, too. All right. Huh? Get down, Hoppy. Here comes Jackson. Won't be long now. Hello, Richard, Marie. What is it? What's happening? Richard caught these outlaws. They had the money and the jewels on them. Hope she's giving him the right line. Go on it no matter what line she gives him. We're still the bait. Yeah. Well, where's Cassidy? He escaped, but we got his partners. And Quirt, too. Quirt? Yes, Rich is taking him into town. He wants to make a statement to the sheriff there. Why? Well, it seems as though someone tried to kill him. Probably Cassidy. Yes, that's my theory. Anyway, Quirt wants to get even. Is he badly wounded? He's unconscious from loss of blood, but he'll recover. He wants revenge too much to die now. And to think I trusted them. I think it might be better if we try... Why, you're so gloomy. You're sitting pretty. You've got the money and Quirt, too. Well, I'm a little worried about Cassidy. Oh. You think he might try to kill Quirt before you get him in town, huh? Well, yes. There's something to that. I'll ride on ahead and look for signs of ambush. Oh, that's a good idea. Hoppy! Jackson's riding away. How could you tell him such lies, Marie? Because I'm sure now that Mark Jackson's been lying to us all along. And I'm just as certain that Mr. Cassidy, who saved our lives and property, is our best friend. Uh, well, I'm still not so sure. But, Marie, there might be a little trouble up ahead. I think you'd better ride back to the ranch. No, I want to go with you. No, you'd better go back now, please. All right. All right, let's go. Hey, Adam. How about giving us back our gun? You'll get your guns back if there's any trouble. Come on. You think Jackson will be back? Yeah, with his gang. You don't expect him to shoot Hoppy himself, do you? Hey, what are you two fellas trying to do? Hurry me out of this world?
Boss. What's he waving about? Something must be wrong. He's pointing to Rock Canyon. He wants us to go there. Maybe Bert's still alive. Finish. Go in there and keep them busy, but be careful of the boss.
San Bernardino will be glad to see you. And I'm glad to see this. Come on. Goodbye, Marie. Goodbye, Lynn. So long, Richard. Goodbye. Congratulations. Thank you. I know you're going to be very happy. We'll never be able to thank you for all you've done for us, Mr. Cassidy. That's quite all right, Mrs. Adams. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, the men are holding the cattle for you at the Stevens Rocks. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. 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 Be right with you. Sure. Well, Chuck ain't got enough heft, you know, California. You ain't no bigger than the bar of soap after a hard day's washing. Uh, I'll try that. <laughs> now, wait a minute here. I've got an idea. Now, never mind that. You get back on your horse here, California. Now, hand this here banjo up to you. And I'll show you a way to get him out of here. Now, just do a little strumming on that, will you? Be done, mister. <laughs> She's chained on. Climb down and get your horses out of here. Climb up here, mister. Climb down. Yeah.
Where's Hoppy? He's out looking for stolen horses. <laughs> you lost your stage. You don't have to tell me I was held up back down the road, dog. Darn it. I'll handle it. Steve, Mike, Shorty, in your saddle. Give me a gun, somebody. George, my hat, my hat, whoa. <laughs> Gone. You didn't expect them to wait around, did you? Well, I thought... Uh, the tracks lead up that way. Come on! Come on! Come on! Well, Smarty, where's your tracks now? Oh, I guess I lost them. <laughs> Over in the brush, man. <laughs> Hoppy's been looking for. Why, well, these are the ones the outlaws was riding. They must have switched them to throw us off the trail. Uh, and you was the one that was going to show us how to track outlaws. Huh? We'll have to double back again and pick up the trail. Go. Go. <laughs> This river is the Texas state line long through here. Over there is Oklahoma Territory, and there ain't enough law in it to put under your hat. That isn't stopping me. You know that territory you're riding into, don't you? I can't help that. The stage has been held up, and there's only one way they could have gone. Sure there is. Outlaws have a habit of jumping back across the state line. But a badge over in that country is not much good, except as a target for gunmen. Think of my reputation. First time I had a loss since I've been driving the wrong. Did you get a look at any of them? Well, there were three of them. The only one saw real plain was a fellow with a scar. I see they were riding stolen horses, too. Yep. And I had to go and follow the wrong trail. Johnny, you've got to learn not to play the other man's game. Even if you caught up with those men, you couldn't do anything about it. But we could have done something. Yeah, you could have stirred up a legal mess between Oklahoma and Texas by going into that territory. Now, let's get started back. I'm sorry I made a mess of things. Don't worry about it. We'll find some way to catch up with them. If it weren't bad enough getting held up, I'd go to have that thing staring me right in the eye like a mocking bird. Ain't never gonna catch them fellas. One bill turns up in South Dakota and another in St. Joe. There, there just ain't no way you can trail them. Hey, wait. Hoppy wants to keep that. What for? Don't ask me. Just wants it, that's all. Oh. What can I do for you? Nothing. Where's the sheriff? Cassidy's not in right now. Well, why not? He's being paid to look out after the interests of the taxpayers. No wonder my cattle have been disappearing with the law and out on the job. I wouldn't say that. No, wait a minute, mister. Hobby's a friend of mine. I ain't gonna stand for no insulting remarks. You keep out of this. I'll let... I'm here to find out why the law doesn't do something about those rustlers. You haven't filed any report. It's his business to know what's going on in this county. I wouldn't be surprised but what he's mixed up with those cattle thieves and getting a cut of it. Hey, hey, hey. Oh! Okay. Hey! Take it easy. Somebody's liable to get hurt. What's all the fuss about? Well, this young maverick is a little too oh. handy with his fists. Oh, Lee must have had a reason. Help me! Help me! What are you doing in there? 
Now, what did you want to talk about? Well, I'm Todd Colby, T.C. Ranch, up near the state line. I've been riding for two days to report my herd being rustled. Yeah, but he wasn't very polite about it. I'll take care of this. When did the raid take place? Well, we've been losing them regular. The last time was about a week ago. One of my boys is pretty badly shot up. I'd like to have a talk with that man. I can tell you everything he saw. One of the rustlers had a scar, and he was riding a TSJ brand horse. Did you see a fellow with a scar? Yeah, across his left cheek. I know about where your ranch is, but you better give me the exact location. Well, I'll draw it out for you. There you are, right here. Now, this is my place here. It's on the East Trail right after you pass Morton Springs. I'm just a few miles from the state line. Right here is my ranch, and this river is the Oklahoma boundary. We trailed the stolen cattle, but we lost them when they crossed into Oklahoma Territory. Hmm. Well, that TSJ brand will help a little. I'll be riding up that way to do some investigating. I'll be obliged to you, Sheriff, if you can stop them rustlers. We'll do our best. Well, when are we leaving? I'm going alone. Oh, Hoppy, the rain estate's coming through for a couple of weeks. Why can't we go with you? I'm sorry, California, but this is a one-man job. I can't tell people you've gone into the territory. Well, you can tell them I've gone hunting. Hunting? For $500 bills and a horse for the TSJ brand, huh? Ah, uh, you're too smart. <laughs> I lost my way. I was looking for a town called Mesa City. This looked to you like a town? Oh, not exactly. What are you doing I'm... in this part of the country? Looking for cattle. That is, I'm buying beef from the market. Thinking on making up a trail herd. Got none for sale. Oh, it's too bad. Nice looking horse you got there. Ain't mine. It's Steve's. He's just calling. Oh. Well, so long as you live around here, maybe you've got some cattle you'd like to... No? Well, I guess I can't do any business here. If I was you, mister, I'd go right back where I came from. Well, you just keep on the same trail you rode in on and you'll find Mesa City. You won't buy any cattle there. It ain't that kind of a town. Thanks. But so long as I've come this far, it won't do any harm to try. Goodbye. Talk to him like that, Steve. We just can't take chances with strangers. He's right. The territory being filled with outlaws and gunmen, no one knows who anybody is.
Give him his gun. Come on. Well, give it to him. You're kind of careless with that thing. You're liable to hurt somebody. I hope we meet again sometime. We will. And we might take this up where we left off. Any time you say. I'll be around. Say, you don't scare easy. Should I have been? Oh, that Tom Jordan is an awful mean man to tangle with. Hmm. Yeah. He's the fastest man around here on the draw. Got an awful bad temper to go with it. Is that so? Oh, yeah. Just who is he? Well, he owns a ranch, him and his brothers. Likes to think of himself as a cattleman. Say, between you and me, I don't think none of them ever saw a cattle ranch until they come out here. Really? Oh, it's a fact. <laughs> That stranger looks to me like he might be a professional gambler. Well, if he is, he sure knows how to sling a gun. Beats me how they smell out where the money is. Traveling man? Oh, yes, I do a lot of traveling. Cattle buyer. Ca oh, say, hey, that's bad business around this town. Is that so? Yo. Say, Jones can be a mighty handy name sometimes. We're a big family. Oh, oh I've had some of your relatives stay with us. Uh, them and their wives. Say, now, I'll just put you in number eight. That's uh, right up at the head of the stairs. Uh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be here very long? Oh, that all depends. Mm. Uh, by the way, would you uh, get my saddlebags and see that my horse is fed? Oh, sure. Thanks. Oh, I uh, say, uh, there's another thing. Uh, we'll take that up later. Uh, oh. We're in the right road. We gotta be catching up with Hoppy pretty soon. Yeah, he ain't gonna like this. Us following him into territory. But he may be in trouble. Let's go. Come on. I'll race you to the ranch house. All right, this time I'll beat you. Let's go. Just fainted. Huh. Whoa. Hey, hurry up with that water.
only trying to help. You didn't have to drown me. Now, ain't that gratitude for you? After Johnny just saved your life. So that's what you were doing. I was getting along fine until you came along. I guess I did spill you kind of hard. <laughs> What's the idea? It was nothing, Steve. I fell off my horse. I guess I fainted. You're the second strangers we found on this range in less than a week. Why don't you pull stakes and move on if this range is getting too crowded for you? Steve, please take me home. All right. Say, do you see the brand on his horse? That doesn't prove anything yet. Maybe not, but we better tell Hoppy. He's sure gonna thank us for this. Oh, hello there, Mr. Jones. Good morning. Good morning. What's the damage for last night? Well, let's see. Supper, stall, breakfast. Uh, stall was the horse. Yeah. Oh, well, shucks. Two dollars? Two dollars. Oh, is that too much? Well, it's quite a bargain. Oh. There you are. Oh, thank you. So you haven't any uh, paper money, have you? Big bills? Kind of loaded down with hard cash. Oh, gold, huh? Yep. Well, shucks, I don't know. Paper money is pretty scarce in this part of the country. Yeah, I've noticed that. Say, I've got five twenties now. Will that be any good? Well, that'll help if you have any big ones. There you are. Mm -hmm. well, I think I'll play a little poker. Oh, I thought you'd come to that. Uh, you know, you're just wasting your time because that's it's a friendly game. Oh, that's the kind I like. Oh, well, good luck. Thanks. Mind if I sit in, gentlemen? Glad to have you. But that's uh, Tom Jordan's chair. Well, he's not here. I'm sure he won't mind. Have some chips. Did anybody tell you that was my chair? Yeah, but I'm not particular. Don't bother to move. I don't like doors and windows back of me when I'm in a strange town. Get out. Give me some chips. Say, Jordan, you and Jones ought to get together. He's starting a big cattle drive. I do my own driving. What's the matter with you? Open. That's a big bet for this game. Anybody that's afraid to gamble for big stakes, I better get out. I'm out. It's got me beat. I fall. I'll call. And raise. Maybe you're bumping into more than you're able to handle. Bet them if you've got them. When I make a play, I'm ready to back it up. I'll remember that. Two cards. I'll take three. Much? 500, that's easy.
I changed my mind. Take it, it's all yours. But I would like to see what beat me. A pair of deuces. Why, you... Why don't you show the boys what you can do without a gun? Might be a good idea. that old buzzard before. You mean the one that took our guns? Yeah, but I can't remember where. My name is Jones. Uh, thanks for the help. No trouble, mister. I'd just like to see a fight kept fair, that's all. Uh, you fellas just riding through, are you? Well, I guess you'd call it that. We're looking for work. Punching cows are specialty. That is, providing the don't punch back. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's none of my business, but it seems to me you made a mistake coming here. Uh, say, you boys like to have a drink? Yes, yeah, sarsaparilla. Milk. Are you sure you haven't any money? Not a dime. We've got to eat. Couldn't spare a couple of dollars, could you? I'm so hungry I could eat a steer. Orange and all. I don't believe in giving money to strangers. Encourages them to hang around. Strange. Then I told you two to stay in Twin Rocks. This is out of your jurisdiction. You can't give us orders here. Never does any good in any place. Gold. You know, he don't have... Huh. Well, we got a dollar anyhow. Two dollars. Two? Sure, I'll double it at some gambling hall. You better be right. Right? I got a system. Can't lose. Where's the there's a place? <laughs> Too high. Howdy, Mr. Danvers. Oh, howdy, Mr. Jones. What can I do for you today? I'd like some saddle soap. Saddle soap? Yeah, there you are. Anything else? No, thanks. Oh, ain't you got anything smaller than that? What's the matter? Too big for you? No, it ain't that. It's just I hate to run short of change. 
Oh, uh, by the way, you are uh, still looking for some big bills for your heavy money? Yes, but I'm afraid I want bigger ones than you have. Oh, is that so? Now, a fellow was in this morning, paid his bill, and gave me an order that would choke a horse. Now, do you reckon that's big enough for you? I'm afraid that's too big. How do I know it isn't counterfeit? I wouldn't have took it if it wasn't good. But how would you know a counterfeit if you saw one? That's my business. I trust the fellow who gave it to me. Now, do you want it or don't you? No, I'm afraid not. I'm not carrying that much. I uh, heard that Hollister won some money like that in a poker game. You heard wrong, then. He got it for selling a batch of yearling calves. Fact is, he was the one who... Um, there's your saddle soap, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Danvers. I don't know. I thought you had a system. Uh, I'll bet that wheel was crooked. Johnny. I just saw him talking to old man Danvers. Did he find out about that bill we gave Hollister? Yeah. I'll bet he's a U.S. Marshal. If he is, he ain't working alone. We better fix Hollister so he can't tell where he got that bill. What's Steve gonna say? He's figuring on marrying Jean. Yeah, and if anything happens to her father... Steve ain't gonna know who did it. Now get going. you paid Danvers with. It was good currency, wasn't it? Yes, but it was stolen. I don't believe it. You will when those men get here to shut your father up so he can't tell where he got it. Well, come on, let's get busy.
Just graze me. It must hurt something awful. It'll be all right. I'll fix it for you. Sorry I didn't believe you. Now I can tell you where I got that bill. Tom Jordan gave it to me for some calves. Jordan? You better stay out of sight till we get this thing straightened out. Well, that's just it. How can it be settled with no law on the territory? I'll take care of that. Meanwhile, you better stay away from windows, and if you go outside, be sure you're armed. Oh. <laughs> Did you see him hightailing it? Why, Johnny, are you hurt? He's in terrible pain. Ah, uh, shucks. Ain't no more than a scratch. Why, I've seen steers hit worse and flick it off with their tails. Is there anything I can do to repay you for helping us? Maybe there is. Seems to me I heard these two men say they were looking for work. Well, I can certainly use them. But we're really not looking for a job. Wouldn't you like to work here? Well, of course. No, you, you see, ma'am, uh, work don't agree with us. We're two of the laziest cowpokes you ever laid eyes on. Why, the last job we had, we was almost arrested for taking money under false pretenses. They're just being bashful. That settles it. They're both hired. Fine. Well, I guess I'll be riding along. So glad you boys found work. Goodbye. You see what he done? Get us roped and hogtied to keep us from... From what? Uh, from fribbling our money away in gambling halls. Excuse us. Hey, you can't get rid of us that easy. We came up here to help you hunt outlaws, didn't we? Sure. But you wouldn't want anything to happen to Hollister, would you? Or to his daughter. Well, well of course not. Then you two boys had better stay here and protect them. Otherwise, I wouldn't give them much chance. So long, boys. Ah, but Hoppy. Jones is the name. Jones. Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man, was he with large and sinewy hands. Uh. Blacksmiths. That's what we are. If anybody had told me a week ago that I'd be shooting horses in an Oklahoma homestead, I'd have said it was crazy. Now I'm wondering if I ain't. Oh, it isn't so bad. No, not for you it ain't. You got a gal to stare at, all calfy-eyed. Once more. Just do that once more and... Doggone it, I'm through! <laughs> ah, ooh! Oh! Uh, ah, ooh! Uh, <laughs> Uh-uh. Here comes trouble looking for a place to happen. You're on the wrong range this time. You better get back on that horse. You're doing a lot of talking. If you didn't have that arm tied... Don't let not... that stop you. Steve! Johnny! You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Please go inside. I want to talk to Steve. Steve. He mustn't see me anymore. At least not for a while. You mean you're turning me down for him? No, it's not that. My father's forbidden me to see you. But why? I can't explain it to you, but something's happened. Now, please go. All right, if, if that's the way you want it. I can't even be seen talking to you. You mustn't come back till I send word. Thank you. 
called up the wrong man, boy. I just gambled away my last dollar. <laughs> You're going with us. Uh, guess I will. Away. Yeah, sure would if it hadn't been for that tree, huh? Where'd you get this? There. Can't see a thing without my specs. I know where we saw him before. Yeah. Driving a stagecoach, wasn't it? Stagecoach? Now let me think. You're gone at my memory so bad sometimes I can't remember nothing. You know, sir. I... Sit down. Who are you working with? Who sent you out here? You're barking up the wrong tree, mister. I know you're not working alone. I want you to tell me who came with you and how much you found out. Oh, wish I had her again. It'll get worse if you don't tell me. Yeah, and I'll get killed if I do tell you. Get killed if I don't. something about it when your time out California was gone. I figured he was out doing some investigating on his own. Uh, you might have figured wrong. Wait a minute. Now well, these are Californias. He must have been traveling too. Look at these hoof marks. Just about done for, Tom. I got ways of making him talk. First, we better take a look at that new herd we just brought over. Let's go up the canyon, change those brands. You two stay here.
ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕੀਵਨ ਬਰ ਸ਼ਰ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਸਟਾਪ ਐਨ ਓਲ ਪ੍ਰੈਰੀ ਡੌਗ ਲਾਈਕ ਮੀ ਹਾਪੀ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਨੋ ਦੈਟ ਹਾ ਸ਼ੀ ਡੌਗ ਗੋਨ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਟੂ ਟੈਲ ਯੂ I heard him talking about changing brands up here in the canyon somewhere. You think of the same bunch has been taking cold these cattle? I'm dead sure. Only thing I can't figure out is this. How can they change his brand into their own? I'll show you. This is Todd Colby's mark. I looked it up in the brand book before I left. Yeah, but how could you minute. They bring the P down like this. Then they make an S out of the C. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. They put a J here for Jordan. just how i had it figured out hobby you did huh eh uh, well almost <laughs> <laughs> that means we're going to have to find that canyon you were talking about and start looking for some steers with oversized brands you feel up to going with us try and stop me <laughs> 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 your camp wherever that is. Johnny, put him on your horse. Come on. What are you doing with my horse? I trust his sense of direction more than I do yours. <laughs> $500 bills we might find them. You can't search a man's house without a warrant. That's funny. I thought this was the only law in the territory. Oh! 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 You know you could save us a lot of time if you tell us where that money is hidden. Go ahead and look. You're not going to find anything. Hoppy. Hoppy. 
mouse traps. Fly paper. It's money we're looking for. Look at that can. See if the rest of Johnny, come here. Come on. That's the right number? I still don't see why I let him go. I don't want just one, I want all of them. You can't arrest anybody in territory, you said so yourself. I know that, but I've got an idea that might work. We're gonna do a little cattle rustling. Oh! Cattle rustling? Yeah. Say, do you feel good? I'm just beginning to. Sheriff Cassidy, cattle rustler. But Johnny, it's the only way we can get the outlaws back across the state line. Let's get started. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> you boys might be able to help us round up some outlaws if we can get them across that creek. Get ready. Here they come. 
Well, I hope they keep on coming. Look, Tom, it's taking an awful chance. I'm giving the orders, and I say we're going after that herd. I rode into the territory. And me, sir, but Hoppy. It's in my pocket. Ha, 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 Get in there. 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 Get in there.
Thanks again, Mr. Cassidy, for helping me and cleaning out the territory. Quite all right. I'm sorry you can't stay on here working for us. Well, I'll be dropping back sometime. Can I believe that? On my honor, as a cattle thief. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Gentlemen, there's what you've been waiting to see. What's the matter? You're disappointed? So that's romantic Mexico. Where's the wine, women, and the song, huh? <laughs> I told you not to expect too much. No border towns, no fiestas, and no senoritas. There must be a hacienda over there someplace. Come on, Hoppy, can't we cross the border just this once? Now, wait a minute. If you wanted society, you should have gotten yourself a job as ambassador. Not as a Texas Ranger. Hoppy, we haven't seen a human face on this side of the border in over a week. Not even a cow. The only faces we're going to see on this job are the ones that don't want to see us. Where there's rifle fire, there must be people. Come on. trying to get across the border before he gets shot. Well, whose side do we on, Hoppy? Don't know yet. Let's go. Did you make out anything, Hoppy? Just a couple of names. Sounded like Don Enrique and Senorita Inez.
Why did they shoot you? Quite a saddle for a poor man. Suppose he stole it? Well, if he did, whoever shot him didn't seem to want it back very bad. Well, he can't have gone very far. Uh, we'll go after him. Look out for an ambush. Bring this horse to him. Say, who said there wouldn't be any senoritas? Uh, hello, senorita. Put up your hands. Is this a holdup? You want to know? Where is Don Enrique? We don't know any Don Enrique. Don't lie to me. The man you just murdered worked on my rancho. And that horse belongs to Don Enrique Perez. You mean you think we killed this man? Wait a minute, Johnny. You must be Senorita Inez. See. Si. Your man here had a message for you from Don Enrique. Well? I'm sorry he died before he could give us the message. You made sure of that, didn't you? The men that killed him made sure of that. And while you're holding us here, they're making a getaway into the hills. Do you think I am stupid enough to believe that? Do you think I'm going to let you go free because you are on Texas soil? No, senores. You are coming back to Mexico with me. I'm afraid you can't force us to cross the border, senorita. That would be illegal. It is also illegal to steal horses and murder my people. Now look here, lady. I can prove we didn't kill this man. So? Sure. We couldn't have done it, because our guns ain't been fired. I'll show you. The next time you touch your gun, the hole will be in your head. Like you're gonna get to visit Mexico after all. Even though it is at the point of a gun. Yeah, they'll probably have a necktie party in our honor. I just as soon not do my dancing at the end of a rope. All right. Let us go. Just a minute. ¿Quiénes son esos? ¿Bandidos? Sí, outlaws and murderers. Tell the comandante that I have three prisoners. Disarm them. Take charge of Don Enrique's horse. And now you may repeat your lies to the comandante of our border patrol. Go on in. Go on. Senorita, who are these men? The Comandante, I have the honor to present three outlaws. Howdy. Pleasure, senor. Uh, outlaws? What have they done? Nothing much. They murdered Ramon and stole Don Enrique's horse, that is all. Don Enrique? Where is Don Enrique? We don't know where he is or who he is. We might have known a lot more if she hadn't persuaded us to cross the border. Why don't you search them? You might find some interesting evidence. I'm sure you will if you start with me. My credentials. This is to certify that the bearer, Hopalong Cassidy, is a Texas Ranger assigned to the Border Patrol in the Ohinaga District. United States Border Patrol? That's right. And these two gentlemen are my deputies. Ay, senorita, what have you done? These men are Texas Rangers. Are you going to take their word against mine? 
She kidnaps the border patrol. Senor, for this violation of international law, a thousand apologies. That's quite all right. Apologies? But I saw them with my own eyes. Did you really see her shoot that man? No. But I saw you standing over him and with a stolen horse. And why not? Senor Cassidy's job is to guard his side of the river and my job is to guard mine. No? A fine job you do, sitting behind your desk making apologies. But, senorita, these rangers can help us. We're anxious to cooperate. If horses and cattle are disappearing from Mexican ranges, we'll do everything we can to get them back. It is not our cattle that disappear. It is our people. Your people? And they never come back. They cross the river and poof, the mountains swallow them up. But I don't understand. I... We'll talk about that later. First, let us dine, eh? Dine? Uh, you mean eat? See, si, say, si, that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing you captured us. Senorita, you will be hostess to our guests. Perhaps I had better stay since you trust them so completely. Just in case they try to steal your silverware. I beg you, do not judge the women of my country by what you see today. Oh, that's all right. We have something like that in Texas, too. I spared it, Philly, ain't she? Well, did you ever see a thoroughbred that wasn't? I wonder why she's so dead set against us. Outlaws killed her father and her brother. So she works like a vaquero to keep her rancho going. Now that Don Enrique has disappeared, she tries to fight back like a man. Oh. Well, who is this Don Enrique anyway? Don Enrique? He's a lieutenant in the Mexican Border Patrol. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, well, what is it a Senorita Inez? Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> he is the Senorita's novio. This way, Signoris. I'll show you to your quarters. Thank you. Hey, what does the word novio mean? Novio? Yeah. Why, uh, novio, uh, uh, that's Spanish for uncle. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. But what difference does it make? She ain't no mood for romance. How would you know? Well, I ought to know. I've had... Uh. You do not like wine, Senor Cassidy? Only to toast your health and our lasting friendship. Gracias. Senorita, would you join us in this toast? To friendship between honest men. Salud. 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 What are you looking at? Why, well, nothing. I mean... Yeah, what are you looking at? At uh, me? Uh, I was looking at those, uh, I was looking at her. It's a long while since we saw such a pretty gal. Yes, but you happen to be looking at my food. Oh, you'll please excuse California. It's also been a long time since he's seen a full meal. Yeah, that's it. So, it is our food that brings the love light to your eyes, eh, senor? Well, <laughs> the way I figure a man can't get into no trouble flirting with food. <laughs> You want to know, you've eaten all yours and half mine. Uh, where I come from, it ain't polite to waste food. You're quite right, senor. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may hang. Here, take mine. Oh, no, man. Go ahead, it's a peace offering. Well, <laughs> if it's going to restore diplomatic relations. <laughs> Salute. Salute. You never can eat a bite. Good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the matter? All right now. again, senorita. At least you can now say the feeling is mutual. Before dinner, I was going to tell you about my people. Yes? You have heard of Silver Bullet Mine? I've heard of the place, but it's the one town in our district that I haven't visited. 
Silver Bullet has many ghosts, my friend, and an evil history. So I've been told. Is it true that the conquistadors had to use Indian slaves to work the mine? See, si. and when Mexico won her independence, the Indians destroyed the mine and run away. The Silver Bullet was deserted till some of your people reopened. Well, our miners didn't do so well with it either, from what I've heard. Ore was low grade and railroad was quite a ways off. Just another case of too much work for too little silver. If that is true, senor, then why did the owner of this mine send to Mexico for workers? You mean the mine owner promised jobs to anyone who'd go there? Si, senor, and at high wages too. Twenty-five of our people crossed the border to work in this mine. But that's not unusual. A lot of your people have gone to work in the States. Ah, yes. But they always come back or send for their families. But these men that went to Silver Bullet, they vanish and we never hear from them again. A lot of Americans have vanished too. But they're usually hiding from the law. But our people are not criminals. I realize that, senorita. By the way, what about Don Enrique? Where does he fit into this? Until you came, Senor Cassidy, there were no Texas Rangers here. I could not send my patrol across the border, so Don Enrique volunteered to go. As a private citizen, he took with him only one man. Don Enrique did not return. But his horse returned with that vaquero. Yes, he was murdered before he could tell you his secret. Now I'm beginning to understand why you don't trust us. I can't say that I blame you much. I guess the only way we can change your opinion is to help solve this mystery. We'll leave for Silver Bullet the first thing in the morning. I'm on your debt, senor. But there is so little I can do to help you. There is one thing you can do. See? Si. Let us take Don Enrique's horse. He may remember the trail. Bueno. But you cannot let them go alone. Suppose your newfound friends do find our missing people. How do you know they will bring them back? But, senorita, I cannot send our soldiers across the border. But you can send me. I'm not one of your soldiers. Say, but... Hoppy, that's a swell idea. Yeah, there's only one thing wrong with it, though. The senorita is contraband. Contraband? Being a Texas Ranger, you should know you can't take an unattached young lady across the border. That's right. Of course, she wouldn't be unattached if you could persuade her to marry you before we left. That's right. You may enjoy that brand of humor, but I don't. Senorita, one moment. If you must leave, let me give you an escort to your hacienda. Oh, I'd be glad to see you home. No, thanks. I'll feel safer, alone. Hoppy, you shouldn't have said that. Just when she's beginning to warm up to us. I didn't notice that she had. But maybe you'd better run along and apologize for me. Right. And you'd better stop dreaming about romantic moonlight rides with the senorita. <laughs> <laughs> What about those outlaws? Comandante has set them free. They claim to be rangers and promised to search for Don Enrique and the others. But I still think they are lying and I'm going to follow them myself. But, senorita, it is a man's job. Hey, have you seen her? Hey, have you seen her? Don't bump me, I'm full of TNT. Where'd she go? Maybe she went to poison her grandmother. And all the little grandsons, and the granddaughters. Senorita, Hoppy was only joking about our getting married. I wouldn't ask you to marry me. That is, I mean, well, I would. Oh, you know what I mean. Perfectly. It's as clear as most of your explanations. Oh, you've got to trust us. We'll find Don Enrique if anyone can, and we won't disappear like the rest of them. That remains to be seen. There they are, las montañas de los perdidos. The mountains of missing men, huh? We'll see if we can't change the name of those before we get through. Thanks for your hospitality, senor. You are welcome. And if you are successful, senores, my people will be grateful to you forever. Good luck. Thank you. Adios.
the matter? I'm quitting the Texas Rangers right now. You're quitting? Yeah. I was hired to patrol the Mexican border, wasn't I? Yeah. Not the Canadian. No. No. We must be near the North Pole. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I think we've got ourselves lost. Yeah, but we haven't lost whoever's trailing us. I'll bet ten to one it's that female poisoner. Maybe so, but look what's up ahead. Plum into a foreign country. Uh, the kingdom of Silver Bullet, huh? Well, let's see if we can get a passport. Hold it. This is the only kind of passport we issue. Now turn around and get out. We're Texas Rangers and we have authority to enter any town in the state. Nobody enters Silver Bullet without a warrant from Sheriff Krebs. Does he give you a warrant to shoot a Mexican in the back? There's your answer. his gun. First, you can answer a couple of questions. You shot that Mexican down the river, didn't you? You can't make me talk. California, take in some slack. No, no. I shot him. Why? I had a warrant for him. He was an escaped criminal. It's the truth. You, you can ask Krebs. We intend to. Hang on to him. <laughs> Give me a little slack. Come on up, puppy. And, and, up, and, puppy, easy.
Where does this road lead to? Kansas City, as straight as the crow flies. Is there silver ore in those wagons? No, that's a Sunday school class on a picnic. We'd finished you off back there. You wouldn't be so smart. How many Mexicans work in that mine? Ask Krebs. All right, we will. Get going. Sure is a ghost town, all right. Yeah, even a ghost would die of lonesomeness up here. The rest of Scrubs ain't no ghost. He's mayor, sheriff, and owner of Silver Bullet. Are you a rest of Scrubs? They blasted their way in, Mr. Krebs. They tried to kill me and Quinn. Sometimes we have to blast our way in. I'm Cassidy of the Texas Rangers. You are trespassing, Mr. Cassidy. Not according to the laws of Texas. I don't recognize the laws of Texas, Mr. Cassidy. I am the law here. Oh. Then maybe you can explain what law your two gunmen invoked when they killed an unarmed Mexican down at the border. I'd rather have you explain why one of your men has a stolen horse. That's one of the reasons we came here, to find out what happened to the owner of that horse and a number of other Mexicans. I haven't seen any Mexicans since you killed Don Enrique Perez. Since we killed? You must be insane. If you have evidence that I'm insane, you can produce it at the trial. At what trial? Yours, naturally. You and your friends are under arrest, Mr. Cassidy. Ah, that's ridiculous. You can't arrest us. Can't arrest you? I already have. Look around. Keep your hands away from your guns, gentlemen, and climb down. Here we go again. Would you mind telling me what we're charged with? Trespassing, horse rustling. Assault with deadly intent upon two officers of the law, robbery and murder. Hmm. That seems to be sufficient. Yeah, that's plenty. But you'll have to prove those charges in a regular court of law. Why, we have a court of law here. Just because we're a long ways from civilization doesn't mean that we don't act legal. Now, don't tell me who the judge is. Let me guess, huh? Uh, could it be, uh, arrest or scrabs? Correct. Well, John God. I figure that when the law is centralized, there's less red tape. Well, you seem to have eliminated all of it. This way into the courthouse, gentlemen. Come on, get over there. Sam. We ain't arrested nobody since we joined the Rangers, but somebody's always arresting us. Listen, is this Krebs' idea of a joke, or does he really think we're guilty? Well, if it is a joke, he's not figuring on us laughing at all. of Mr. Cassidy and his fellow horse thieves versus the people of Silver Bullet is hereby declared in session. Guilty or not guilty? Since you've already made up your mind, what's the difference? Save a lot of time. You plead guilty. We don't want to be here all day. Now, wait a minute. Since you're so gall darned legal, we demand a trial by jury. Well, I calculate you've got a right to a jury trial. But we've only got 12 men here all together, and two of them are bailiffs. So you'll have to get along without a full panel. All right, Jory. Take your places.
It might interest the court to know that at least half of those jurymen are known criminals. Is that so? That man Quinn is wanted for robbery in three states. The man next to him is Pete Turner. I've seen that face plastered on sheriff's posters all over the state of Texas. The fourth man is a notorious cattle rustler. I must remind you, Mr. Cassidy, that the state of Texas and the Commonwealth of Silver Bullet have two different codes. As long as a man's a law-abiding citizen here, I don't bother much about his past. How about a drink for the jury, Your Honor? Absolutely not. Gotta have a clear head to reach a fair decision. Proceed! Any witnesses for the prosecution? Well, I'm a witness, Your Honor. Since when can jurymen testify? Uh, now, let me see. There's a, there's a ruling on that somewhere in the code. Oh, here it is, Article 7. No citizen shall be denied the right to act as witness by virtue of jury duty. Who wrote that code? Why, well, I did, naturally. I object! Objection overruled. Hey, Mr. Krebs, there's a female riding down the street. A female? Hey, here I are. I'm mayor here. I handle visitors. Court's adjourned for ten minutes. You men keep your eye on the prisoners. Judge Krebs. Arrest us, Krebs. That's your servant. I'm Ines Lavarca. Ines, you're the first lady to honor Silver Bullet with a visit in the past ten years. You are alone? Si, senor. You came here unescorted all the way from the border? I followed your three other visitors. But for what purpose, senorita? I'm looking for some of my countrymen who came to work here. Well, there are no Mexicans here, senorita. What about the owner of that horse, Don Enrique Perez? Don Enrique? Then you knew him. My child, I must talk with you. No, not that door. There's a trial going on in there. A trial? You don't mean the three rangers? Not rangers, my dear. Horse thieves. They stole Don Enrique's horse. What does she look like, Lauren? All right. If you suppose she's the one that Mexican had a picture of? Shut up. If that's an ass, what's Krebs going to do now? The judge only wants to hang us, but she'll demand death by slow torture. Oh, you're full of hops. She'll testify for us. Don't be too sure, Johnny. If she trusted us, she wouldn't be here. And I was sure they were guilty, too, when I saw them at the river, standing over Ramon's body. But the commandante said they were rangers. And they had papers to prove it. Oh, papers can be stolen. But your eyes did not deceive you. We have witnesses who saw them murder someone else. Someone else? You don't mean... You don't mean... What happened to Don Enrique? You must prepare yourself for a shock, senorita. These men killed him. They killed him and then they trailed his companion to the border and shot him too, so there'd be no evidence. But you saw them. Enrique. Poor child, I share your sorrow, and I need your help. The murderers have been caught, but it's my duty to see that they get a fair trial. Your testimony must be given in court. I couldn't talk to them now. I can't face them. But, senorita, do you want them to go free to murder again? No. I will testify. Sit down. Take your hats off in the courtroom. Do you 
swear the testimony you're about to give be the truth, plain truth, and nothing else? Do you identify the defendants as the men you saw with the stolen horse of Don Enrique Perez? I do. You heard two shots, and then you saw them beside the body of a dead man. Is that correct? Yes. Where were they going when you stopped them? Back into the mountains. Did they attempt to resist you? One of them? Thank you, young lady. That is all. But that's not all. You're just using this girl to pile up false evidence. Mr. Cassidy, you're in contempt of court. Contempt is all I have for this court. Don't you see what he's trying to do, senorita? He's framing us because he has something to hide. Order in the court! You may be seated, senorita. Barton, proceed with your testimony. Well, this Don Enrique and another Mexican came here looking for some missing men. They didn't find any, so they headed back to the border. Me and Quinn followed them away. What happened then? Well, they were ambushed about a mile the other side of the big rocks. I saw it all from the lookout. Don Enrique was killed and the other one got away. They chased him. Can you identify the men who ambushed Don Enrique? Sure, they're sitting right over there. I object. This witness has already confessed to us that he committed the murder. Objection overruled. That's all. Well, I calculate we've heard enough evidence to hang them three times over. Does the jury have to leave the room to reach a verdict? Guilty. Hmm. And I might as well pronounce sentence. It's too blamed hot for a hanging now. Besides, we never hang criminals here on an empty stomach. And so I hereby condemn you three to hang by the neck till dead, after dinner. Well, Krebs, that's a very nice bit of framing. Take them away. Don't trust him, senorita. Get Krebs to show you the mine. All right, clear out. You must be very tired. I'll have a room prepared for you. Later, when you have rested, I'll have my men escort you back to the border. It's all so confusing. Now that it's over, I don't know what to believe. Oh, senorita, it was your testimony that helped convict them. Hanging them won't bring Enrique back. Hanging them doesn't solve the mystery. And what reason would they have for killing him? Why, that's simple enough. They thought Don Enrique was carrying silver from the mine, so they shot him. Then why did they return to Silver Bullet? To rob the mine itself. They didn't know how well it was guarded. Other bandits have tried to rob me. That's why I allow no strangers to enter Silver Bullet. But you sent word to Mexico that workers were needed at the Silver Bullet mine. Oh, that's just a rumor. I have more than enough men at the mine as it is. I want to see your mind with my own eyes. Don't you trust me, child? Right now, I don't trust anyone. Very well, my dear. As a special favor to a gallant lady, I shall take you to see the mine this afternoon. time I find an honest man, I don't want one. <laughs> well, if I have to hang, I'd at least like to know why. Yeah, it looks like Martin. 
Unless the boss is bringing a sights here out the mine, he doesn't want her to get the wrong impression. Her? Yes, a senorita. Hide mm. those men in the shaft. Okay. Get easy, Don. Give his head in this. Shut up! Get back in the mine. Oh, no, senor. This visitor wants to see us, and she shot. Back to the second stove. Get him inside. Right, get going. Come on. Let's go. Hurry. Grab a shovel. Let's try to look like miners. Well, here it is. Not much to look at, though. The boys bring the ore out of the mine, load it on wagons, and haul it to the railroad. And that's all? All there is to it? That's all. We don't have any modern equipment up here. We mine our silver with sweat and calluses. But so few men are working. Well, most of the boys are in town today for the hanging. But perhaps you'd like to question these men regarding your missing Mexican. Si, senor. I would. Howdy, Mr. Crabb. Howdy. Howdy, miss. Boys, this young lady is searching for some countrymen of hers who crossed the border south of here and then disappeared. Have any of you men heard tell of them? No. Where does that tunnel lead to? That's just an old deserted mine shaft. Hasn't been worked for years. Do you mind if I take a look at it? Why, not at all, senorita. But be careful, it's half flooded. Let's ride back to town. Oh. Inez, What was that? What do you mean? Inez! That, that sound. Uh, oh, that. Oh, why, why, that's not just an old blind donkey that used to work in the mine. We call him the ghost. He still lives in there and prays to keep himself company. I can't blame you for being suspicious after what you've been through. Fact is, I'd forgotten how pleasant a lady's company can be. Nothing silver bullet needs more than a woman's touch. And uh, her cooking? Oh, if you only knew. We haven't had a decent meal around here for years. Then, then perhaps I should cook you a dinner before I return to Mexico. Well, that's mighty kind of you, miss, but it's too much work. Oh, no, senor. A special one, just for you and the three prisoners. You? Cook for those cutthroats after what they've done to you? Senor, you don't know how a senorita's mind works. I would like to give them something to remember me by. Now, all right. As long as you don't poison them. You've got to die legal. Very clever, Martin. You're the most efficient hangman I've ever had. Thank you, Mr. Krebs. Almost ready, senorita? In just a few minutes, Judge. Do you think they like my cooking? Oh, well, shucks, a little indigestion ain't gonna hurt them none. Not where they're going. I hope you're not angry with me for taking over your kitchen. I'm not after your job. Oh, well, anybody can have this job for a plug nickel. All the fellas do is just sit around and complain about the food. Yeah, it's crab, crab, crab. Uh, that's, that's what they do. That ain't what I give them to eat. But when a man's cooking for 40 men every day, you can't expect to please everybody. Did you say 40 men? I haven't seen half that many around here. 40 didn't. Did you think I said 40? Oh, I might uh, I meant it, it seems like 40. You know, the way the fellas eat and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, would you go and take a look at the beans, please? Oh, uh, Stir them up a little bit, will you? Oh, no, no, don't do that. 
I like to serve them that way. Oh, well, different. I just, I just love beans. You do? Yeah. There's no bones in them like there is in a the fish. Yes, yes. Uh, never mind. I'll take it into them. Oh. Just a minute, young lady. Don't forget, part of that food's mine. Ah, I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Mm -hmm. Much too good for them. You know, I can eat a dozen of these things myself. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, there's just enough for the three prisoners. Let me take the food into the... I'm sorry, Senorita, but you can't talk to the prisoners. Ah, uh, why? I want to see their faces when they choke on their last meal. You do? You can see the hanging. Won't that be enough? More than enough. I'll be right back. Here's your dinner. You'll never have as good a meal as this again as long as you live. A special dinner, prepared by the young lady who helped send you to the gallows. You mean that Lucretia Borgie fixed our last meal on her? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it kind of her? I object. Hanging is bad enough, but you ain't gonna poison us, too. What's the matter with you? The food's delicious. I tasted it myself. Just give me plain grub. I ate one of her delicious doodads once before, and I ain't gonna eat them again. Well, take it or leave it. Make up your mind. Because the execution starts in 15 minutes. Hey, Krebs. Would you mind sending the girl in? I'd like to thank her for the meal. She's already seen the mine, if that's what's bothering you. And her curiosity is satisfied. Why didn't you sentence us to hard labor in your mind? That's a privilege reserved for petty criminals, not for the likes of you. You won't be able to hang all the rangers that come here, and there'll be plenty of them to follow. Well, what if others do come? I'll be in the clear. You're legally convicted by the young lady's testimony. There's nothing like law and order. Well, at least we're getting near the truth. He practically admitted he condemned those missing men to penal labor. He condemned us to hang because we might interfere with his peonage system. Yeah, and I guess he outsmarted the girl, too. Have one? No, no, I ain't that hungry. How about you, Hoppy? No, thanks. <sighs> ain't you bit into one of them torpedo peppers yet? No. No? But I've lost my appetite. If we gotta hang, let's get it over with. No, 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 wait a minute. There ain't no rush. Sure it tasted all right? If you're gonna eat it, eat it. I knew it. I knew it had happened of all the gall darn dirty tricks. What's going on in there? I broke my tooth. What's a broken tooth compared to a broken neck? She is the doggonest mean female I ever knew. Spoiling a condemned man's last meal. First she burns me with hot peppers, and then she hides rocks in the victuals. Hides rocks? Hides rocks. Wait a minute. Uh, pull it. Shh. Get up in front of the door. Look at those others. Here. Here's another one, Hoppy. Good. There must be a gun here somewhere. Give me that thing. Oh, beans. He didn't outsmart her. Yes, Mr. Krebs. Bring out the prisoners. All right. Oh. 
All right. Come on out and keep your hands up. Keep him up. Get your own up. Get that gag up there. Are you sure you want to see this, senorita? A hanging isn't a very pretty thing to watch. On the contrary, I think this one is going to be a very thrilling spectacle. We can't get out this way. They got our horses under the gallows. Let's try the bar. What's taking them so long? Martin, turn her. If those rascals don't want to walk out, go in and drag them out. Come on, boys. Let's try this door. trail as soon as he rounds up his horses. A surprise attack on the mine is the only chance we got. Can we get close to it without being seen? I think so. Follow me. Fire it up, you idiots. They've got ten minutes start on us. men. You're Mexicans and our Americans. They're prisoners. You wait here. We'll take care of this. No. This is my fight too, Senor Cassidy. And don't forget, I know how to use a gun. If I had one. You have one. Gracias. Ah.
Uh, Enrique is alive. Oh, I'm very happy for both of you. Augusto, Sorry if there isn't much time for introductions. Krebs will be here any minute. Krebs with how many men, senor? Oh, with at least ten. Looks like we got him outnumbered, but what about guns? We have plenty of guns, senor. The, the guards keep other ones in the tool house, but we haven't got much ammunition and no horses, and to stay here is very bad. Yeah, I can see that. They'd shoot us like fish in a barrel. Wait a minute. I've got an idea that might work. We'll use those wagons, but we'll make Krebs' men drive them. Get your men and the prisoners into the wagon. California, Johnny, get the guns and ammunition out. Right. Put you in. Tomas, Pedro, you other men, go to the first wagon. You, Miguel, you go with the other guard. To handle him. Tracks that way. Must be headed for the mine. Gone. Who's driving those bikes? Looks like our man. Them Rangers chasing. Well, let us help. We're taking you into our own hands, Mr. Krebs. You can't arrest me. I haven't broken any laws. That is none of your own laws. But the federal government's got a law to take care of you. Contract labor and peonage are illegal in the United States. And Silver Bullet is still a part of the good old USA. Yeah, and you're going to pay those men what you owe them before they go back home. You can't force me to pay anything without a court order. And I'm judging Silver Bullet. Maybe we'd better hold a new election. Election? Say, that ain't a bad idea. Come on, get out of here. He did, huh? Damn! Yeah. Next. Come on over here. 
Contract labor, Your Honor. Last case. What does he owe you? 300 pesos, senor. I object. It's Order in the court. Objection overruled. Pay off. Here. Hey, take the change, too. Where he's going, he won't need it. <laughs> gracias, senor. Muchas gracias. For nada, for nada. Hey, get him out of here. <laughs> you know, I figured you were a much older man. Indeed. Why, senor? Oh, the commandant told me that you were the senorita's uncle. Uncle? Yes, uh, you're novio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> novio means sweetheart. You, you mean to say you two are engaged? I see. Yeah. But California told me that novio meant uncle. Well, that's his idea of Spanish. Court's adjourned! <laughs> You shouldn't have come back here. Well, I am back. Where's Harden? Are you crazy? There's a price on your head. You think I don't know that? Hopalong Cassidy and his deputies have been on my trail for the last hundred miles. They're only a ten minute ride behind me now. Harden's got to hide me out. Wait a minute. He's in here. He's over at the bar. Then go get him. Hurry up. All right. But don't you show yourself till I find him. I told you never to come back here. There wasn't no other place left to go. I'm at the end of my rope. That's just where you belong. You don't know what it's like to be hunted and hounded with never a minute's rest. My face is plastered on every post office and livery stable west of the Pecos. And such a filthy face, too. Harden, you've got to hide me out for a while. You owe me that much. I'm not sheltering, murderess. I'm a respectable cattleman. Well, you dirty dog. Don't draw that gun. Now get out of here. Get out before we shoot you and collect the reward ourselves. All right, Harden. But if those deputies take me alive, I'll spill the works. Oh, you shouldn't have said that, Dirk. Put 
California. Come on the side. Take him off their hands. Right. Fred! Oh, uh, say, listen, uh, Sam, I didn't get my money's worth out of that bottle. Uh, could I get a refund? Refund? What do you want, the Battle of Bull Run? That's Dirk Mason they just captured. Oh, it is, huh? Dirk. Oh, is it? Nice work, strangers. You can turn the prison mode to me right now. Just a minute. Who are you? I'm Joe Press, head of the Vigilance Committee, and we know how to deal with Dirk Mason. We're not turning this man over to any mob. Here he is, Bobby. What, Dirk Mason? Did you capture him? Yeah, but he's all yours now, Sheriff, and I hope your jail's strong enough to hold him. Why put him in jail? We know who this killer is. Let's string him up right now. All right, turn him over to us. Come on, let's grab him. Hit the rope. Hold it. Come on, turn him over. I've had enough of your lynchings, Brass, and you'll pay with your life for the next one. All right, don't anybody move. Now, don't try to stop me, Sheriff. I know I'm gonna die. But Jeb Harden is going out with me. You're all witnesses. It was in self-defense. Yeah, sure it was. Self-defense against what? Oh, why shouldn't I? I have a claim on this reward. You can't stick your finger in our pie. I have more right to it than you have. You haven't got a leg to stand on. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I can't issue any reward money unless the claimants reach an agreement. That's right. Me and the postmaster here are duty bound to hold up the reward till all disputes are settled. Just a moment, Sheriff. You haven't heard the full story. Mason broke into my office just before he was captured and tried to hold me up. Brass was there and pulled a gun on him and drove him into the street. At that moment, these men came along. You might say we fleshed the bird for them. Yeah, but you seem more anxious to kill him than capture him. Well, it says there, wanted dead or alive. Oh, you killed him, all right. After we turned him over to the sheriff. That's true. If you hadn't been so around to lynch Mason, it wouldn't have been necessary to shoot him. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. There's no use squabbling over the price in a dead man's head. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll relinquish our rights to the reward if you'll invest the $5,000 in this community. That all right with you, Joe? Well, I... Uh... What you is... see, Mr. Cassidy, we help get rid of a dangerous criminal, and so our community is entitled to some of the benefits. And you get the money, and we get your investment. What do you say? I'll talk it over with my partners. I'll let you know later. Now, we might as well face the facts. We weren't thinking about a reward when we started out looking for Mason, were we? Well, we got it coming to us, and there's no sense letting Harden and Brass horn in. We might have to. I've seen this happen before. Usually when they start fighting about a reward, nobody gets it. Yeah, but there's nothing in this town worth investing unless we buy a saloon or a restaurant. Restaurant? Gee, that's an idea. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. We'd make a lot of money with a restaurant with you around, wouldn't we? <laughs> oh, but seriously. Haven't you both forgotten something we've always wanted? What's that? A little ranch of our own. A ranch of our own? Say, 
Don't you think it's about time we laid our guns aside and quit wandering around like three homeless strays? Wouldn't you like a little peace and quiet? A roof over your head that you can call your own? Nobody to fire you? And ride range on our own land. And raise ham and eggs? Ah, oh, you gotta go for the idea, huh? Well, <laughs> you know me, Hoppy. All I ask is six square meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds swell, but do you think there's any land around here for sale? Oh, well, we might ask Harden. He seems to own all the land in the valley. Come on. Harden, then. He's inside. But listen, if you give me a quarter of the reward, we'll leave him out of it. One side, ten horn. Do you like that? Well, come in, gentlemen. Come right in. Please be seated, Mr. Gasty. Thank you. You have reached a decision? Yes, we've decided to invest our reward money in the valley. Good. That is, if we can find some good ranch land. Well, every square foot of the valley is good ranch land. The trouble is, there's not much of it that's for sale. Uh, about the only place that's available is the Whitlock Ranch. That costs about $10,000. $10,000? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's just twice as much as we have. No one expects you to pay cash. Here's an inventory, Mr. Cassidy. That's a nice, snug little ranch house. 300 head of good stock cattle and plenty of good pasture land. Hmm. Five thousand dollars will let you take up the first mortgage. And considering the high price of beef these days, you should be able to pay off the balance in a couple of years. Well, if that's true, why couldn't Whitlock make a go of it? Well, there are two Whitlocks, a brother and a sister. Is she young? Yeah. Trouble is, they knew nothing about raising cattle and cared less. They let the place run down and got behind in their payments. And, uh, you hold the mortgage? Yeah. And I was about to foreclose. But if you'd like to take up the mortgage yourselves, it's yours. Well, we'll look the place over. If it's what you say it is, maybe we can make a deal. Fine, fine. Oh, by the way, it might be a good idea if we found out where the ranch is. Well, it's on the left-hand side of the road, about four miles south of town. You can't miss it. We'll find it. See you later. Goodbye. I don't get it, Jeb. I thought you wanted to grab the Whitlock Ranch for yourself. I do want it. First, let them sink their money into it. As long as I control the water rights, they'll lose their money and the ranch. Try it. Thanks a lot. That's what I call cattle country. That's good land, all right. Pretty dry. Grass is turning brown. Look at that stream. Looks pretty well laid out. Well, you didn't expect it to be perfect, did you? I suppose if it was, we wouldn't have the fun of improving it. Now, wait a minute, dear. I'd like to look at the ranch house before we make our minds up. <laughs> It'll have a kitchen if that's what you're worrying about. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody home? Let's go on inside. Harden gave us permission. Oh, I know, but I... Oh, well. Anybody home? Guess not. Well, that Whitlock girl certainly knows how to fix up a parlor nice and cozy. Is that a sign she's good looking? Now, what's that got to do with it? She don't go with a ranch, you know. Ah, oh, Miss Whitlock, you can bring me my pipe and slippers. <laughs> hey, get your spurs off that couch. What happened? You all right? Uh, hi, Hoppy. <laughs> Look what I found. Chicken. I might have known it. Let's have it. That reminds me, we haven't eaten since yesterday. Oh. Well, this is not a very nice thing to do, but I am hungry. That's the trouble with you, Hoffman. You worry too much about your conscience, not enough about your stomach. Yeah? Well, <laughs> I'll take care of that right now. Mm -hmm. 
Good, huh? Mm-hmm. Who are they, Lynn? Do you suppose they're Hardin's men? I don't know. But if they've come to throw us off, we're going to throw them off. You know, if you had three hands, you'd choke yourself to death. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Say, it's wonderful. There's no place like home. No, even if it's somebody else's. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, I'm, uh, I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is Johnny Travers, and this is California Carlson. Where are you? Howdy. See, um, Harden sent yes, us... Yes, I know. He sent you to throw us out. The starve us out, too, it seems. Oh, now, uh, please, we're glad to pay you for the chicken, but uh, that isn't exactly what we came to buy. See, Harden told us you were trying to get rid of the place. Trying to get rid of it? I've been doing everything I could to hang on to it. Oh, well, if that's the case, I'm, I'm sorry we barged it in. See, we have $5,000 we wanted to invest, and, and he told us this place was for sale. I'm sorry, I... We better get out of here. Mm, sorry about the chicken. I couldn't resist it. Mr. Cassidy? Yes? How much money did you say you had? $5,000. Lynn, wouldn't it be better to lose half the ranch than all of it? Well, what do you mean? We'll never get another loan. You know it. In another month, Harden will take the place over. So would it be better to form a 50-50 partnership with these men? I don't believe your brother likes the idea, Miss Whitlock. Besides, we don't want to take advantage of your hard luck. Oh, but you'd be helping us. Lynn can't run the ranch alone, and we haven't money to hire hands. So I think we'd better accept three working partners. Are you friends of Harden or Joe Brass? Us? <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. Not after beating him out of $5,000 reward money. <laughs> well, any man who can do that ought to be a good partner. <laughs> yeah, sit down, Cassidy. Maybe we can strike up a bargain. Thanks. They'll probably back out when they hear the bad news. We've already seen the bad news. There isn't enough water. Oh, well, there's plenty of water. You see, the, the river that feeds the whole valley has got two forks, but Harden's dammed up the headwaters. And you have to pay him for the water. And his rates are so high, you'd think milk flowed in that river instead of water. <laughs> None of us small ranchers can make any money if we have to buy our water. We can't afford to do that unless we sell our cattle. So the whole thing's a vicious circle. Mm. If he don't pay your bills, he takes your land. He does worse than that. He shuts off the water and our cattle die of thirst. Why don't you complain to the Cattlemen's Association? Well, Hardin controls that, too. Oh. So if you expect to get rich in this valley, Mr. Cassidy, the cards are stacked against you. <laughs> well, getting rich isn't exactly what I had in mind. I just want a place to settle down. Hardin's water rates may be a little high, but I'm ready to pay a high price for a little peace and quiet. Of course, I don't know how my partners feel about it. How about it, Johnny? Oh, sure. Sure, let's form a partnership. California? Hey, did you cook that chicken, miss? Yes. You get a partner. <laughs> oh, you got three partners. That's right. <laughs> Well, we've got a lot of chores to do. We'll save time, we divide them up. Johnny, you go over to the telegraph office and wire our resignations to the federal marshal. All right. I'll tell him we can find some other deputies to chase us criminals from now on. And I'll tell him... Just so long as you tell him in ten words. Well, I will, because I don't want to hang around town all day. i got plenty to keep me busy out the ranch. I noticed that. <laughs> Wait a minute. i got a job for you, too. I want you to take this $500 into Hardin's office and pay the water bill. I'll do that, Hoppy. i got to go to the bank and open the account. See. <laughs> My throat's awful dry. What if I go across the way and sort of refresh the inner man, huh? All right, I'll see you at the ranch later. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're quenching the inner man, don't forget to pay the water bill. Ha, ha, ha. Howdy. Hi, Lever. Give me a double chaser. What do you want to do, take a bath? Bad. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, you ain't had a drink yet. Oh, doggone it, so I ain't. And I couldn't get here fast enough to get one. <laughs> Sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla? 
say. Ain't that one of the fellows that won that reward? Yeah. I bet he's got a bankroll on him, too. If you can't hook him, Wildcat, you really lost your touch. Sarsaparilla. Hello there. Howdy. Uh, say, ain't you the fellow that captured that killer? Ah, uh, shucks, it weren't nothing. Say, ain't you the fellow that tripped me up? Oh, well, I was just trying to stay out of the fight, that's all. Oh, oh you sure was anxious to get into that ruckus. I, I never seen a fellow with that much gumption. Oh, I'm a battler. Yeah. Uh, Sam, give me a friend here a drink. Got one already. Well, then I'll have one on you, thanks. Give me a drink. <clears throat> Understand you fellas are buying into the Whitlock Ranch. Yep, me and my pals are gonna settle down and take life easy. Yeah. Oh, that's an awful smart buy. Sure is. Awful smart. Naturally bought the mineral rights, too, huh? Mineral? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. What for? You didn't buy the mineral rights? No. My goodness, I thought no. that you was a fellow that knew a fortune when you seen it. Well, usually do. Yeah. Say, now listen. Now, mum's the word. Oh, sure, sure. Mum's the word. What word? Say, come on over here, brother. I'll tell you what I'm going to do to you. I do for you. Well, come on. Uh... Say, now, wait a minute, brother. I got something I want you to see. I think I've got something here that you're going to be interested in. You see here now? Look at here. Never mind that. Just look here. See that See that end of climb there? That there? Yeah, that's right. Now, look here. See where this axle plane? Now, that shows evidence of uh, cestiferous stratification. Does it? Well, that's Can you imagine it? Yeah. Uh, you see where this luber shelf is superimposed over herogenous mycolite all down in through there? You see? Well, uh, there it is. Oh, well, that's what I mean. What's them lines for? Oh, well, now, all this is a geological survey of the Whitlock Ranch. Oh, well, I made the thing myself. You did? Uh, uh, saying here's something else you're going to be interested in. Wait a minute. I got a petrologist's report here that bears out everything I've been telling you. Number two? Thing. Petrologist. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you see here it says, your soil samples give definite proof of the presence of petroleum. Petroleum. That's right. Petroleum. You mean oil? Oil. Hey, brother, there's enough oil under that Whitlock Ranch to lubricate the entire planetary system. Well, bust my galoshes. Sure. Okay, right. Wait a minute. If there's oil there, why don't Harden step in and take it over? That's because he doesn't know anything about it. He don't, eh? No. Now, look, if I was go to him and try to buy the mineral rights from him, why, he'd catch on a second. Sure he would. Sure. I'm not going to go dump a fortune in Harden's lap, you know. Of course we ain't. No. Uh, see, uh... Good. What about the drilling tools? Oh, huh? you don't have to worry about that. Now, I've got a rig and a drill of my own. You can use those. Yeah. Sure. Now, that is, if you'll cut me in for an eighth of the royalties. Sure, I'll cut you in. You think an eighth's enough? Well, make it two eighths. Make it one eighth. Yeah. Well, what can I lose? A million barrels of oil, ten dollars a barrel. A million ba... A ten? Ten million dollars? That's right. Gosh. It's a deal. Here you are. Five hundred. Well, here's to us. Say, hey, doggone it, you know. I was supposed to pay the water bill with that. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute, brother. Don't worry about water. No. You see, in about a month's time from now, you're going to have enough money to buy the Amazon River. <laughs> the Amazon? Hmm. What's that? Well, just make it the Mississippi. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> here's to us. We got something, huh? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's go, huh? <laughs> Hey, partner. Hey. $500 hey. a day. Uh-uh. Say, listen, don't you think you'd better go ahead and prepare your pals for the shock? No, no. Oh, well, now, listen, now, wait a minute. This may be an awful surprise to them, you know. That's what I want to do is surprise them. Huh? Will they be tickled pink? Oh, huh? come on, let's get going. Huh? All right. Come on. Four hundred and fifty. Come on, get on. Go, go. Johnny! <laughs> Look for the bronc. From now on, you can call me King Carlson, the oil typhoon. 
Hey, come on. I want you to meet Wild Cat Willie. It's the best oil sniffer this side of Pennsylvania. What's this stuff in the wagon? Drilling tools, Hoppy. I just bought the exclusive rights to the biggest oil field in the whole state. Look at them tools, eh? Look at the field. California. Did you pay the water bill? Didn't have to. Harden gave us a 30-day extension on the debt. Did he put it in writing? In writing? Uh, well, no, not exactly, but he gave me his word of honor. His word of honor. Harden's word isn't worth any more than those oil rights you've been talking about. Oh, something always happens. Now we have the money to pay for the water, and Harden knows it. That's our money you just threw away. You know, you might have spoken to us before investing in a thing like this. Well, doggone it, Hoppy, I was doing it for all of us. Say, hey, you'll sing another tune when we strike it rich. Strike it rich. You couldn't drill more than 100 feet with that rig you've got there, and even if you could, you wouldn't strike oil if you dug halfway to China. Now, wait a minute. You ain't seen the futurological report. You mean his reports? His reports. Give me them, I'll show them. Well, every rancher in the valley knows that man's an oil swindler. Now, right there. Oil swindler? Yeah. When we strike it rich. <laughs> you mean... So you want to drill, do you? You better get off the ranch before you get drilled. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, folks, I guess I'll be getting along. Oh, no, you ain't. You're going to stay here. You're going to set up that rig and sink a well. Oh, well, now, listen, brother. I didn't say I'd do any work. No, but you're going to. If you want to stay above ground, you better find something below. Get off of that wagon. Get off of that. Yeah, you get... can use mine. Thanks. Uh, get off of that wagon. Pull this back to Not like this. Look, I'm not a dirt scratcher. I'm a cattleman. If I gotta break my back, I wanna do it on a horse. I know, you love the range, particularly the one in my kitchen. Well, if you really wanna know, it's because you're there. We'll have no kitchen sitters around here. If you wanna eat, you gotta work. What about California? He's been sitting in that oil derrick for two weeks. He never does a lick of work. He eats more than all of us put together. California promised me a barrel of oil for every meal I gave him. If that well produces less than 50 barrels a day, I'll be getting swindled. Sure, he got swindled, so now he's swindling us. I'm going to tell him off. What you stopping for? Partner, we've been working here now two weeks, and we've only drilled 40 feet. At this rate, we won't reach oil till doomsday. Your dear doom ain't far off. You don't keep drilling. I know, but I haven't had a minute's rest. You'll rest in peace. If that hole's dry, keep her going. Yes, sir. Now what? Uh, could I have a little water, please? Thank you. Hey, California. I'm warning you for the last time. Huh? Shut that thing off. Thank you. Either you do some work around the ranch or you don't eat. I gotta be here at the drilling. And I gotta eat, too. Say, a fine pal you are, trying to start me out, huh? Don't call me a pal. I'm through with you. Just wait until Hoppy and Lynn get back. Here they come now. Who's that with him? That's Mr. Varney. He owns the ranch south of ours. What's the matter? Harden shut off the water. The creek's already dry. My cattle have been without water for two days. We're going up to the dam now and see if we can get them to open the spillways. Well, I'm going with you. I'll finish that garden patch when I get back. So, Harden gave you his word of honor he wouldn't shut off the water, huh? Want to come along, California? I'd like to, Hoppy, but war ain't my business. Oil's my racket. She might gush any minute. All right, you old faker. When you get hungry, just try and eat that oil well. Come on, come on. Quit stalling. Get to work. No word. Faker. Joe 
brass and some of his vigilantes, Hoppy. Yeah, and they look like they're ready for trouble. Yes, and they're going to get it, too. Hey! What's the matter, boys? Thirsty? No, but our cattle are. And we just want to remind you that Hardin promised us a 30-day extension on our water rights. And he must have changed his mind, because if you want water, you'll have to pay for it. You mean we'll fight for it. My herd is dying of thirst. Hardin will be glad to take the cattle off your hands. At 50 cents on the dollar. Let me tell you, Brass, you'll never kill my cattle. Because I'll take that water. Shut it off. Come on. What'd you back down for, Hoppy? Because what Brass said is true. If we take that water by force, Harden can have us arrested for theft. Uh, I guess we're licked. For the time being. Looks like we'll have to sell our cattle now. Oh, uh, we ought to pay them off in lead. Wait a minute, Johnny. Remember, we bought into this ranch for a little peace and quiet. You know, Hoppy, every time I look at that pile of junk, I get so mad I can't even see straight. California won't raise a hand to help. We ought to kick him off the ranch. Oh, quit picking on him. He's having fun. Hey, this is really a two-man job, you know. Well, there's two of us here. Did they turn the water on? No. We're gonna have to sell our cattle, thanks to California. Would you like to help us with the roundup, or are you too tired? No, no, I ain't too tired. Do I get paid for it? I need some new drilling pipe. Paid for it? After eating us out of house and home? That's the last straw. Now, you can tear down that contraption and get off our property. I ain't on your property. I'm suspended in midair. You're either gonna get off or get blasted off. And that goes for you, too, Wildcat. Don't pay no attention to him. Keep on working. What's that, Hoppy? Well, it's your well. You ought to know. It's just a noise of some kind. My God, it's still there. But... Water. Tastes like water. It is water. Oh, 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 o
underground lake, enough to water a thousand head of cattle. Yeah, and irrigate a thousand acres to boot. I never saw such luck. First they win a reward, then they discover a well. Yeah, and we want to share that luck with all of you. You bring your cattle over to our place and use all the water you want. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Hoppy, but I'm afraid that isn't going to set too well with Harden. No. That's what we're going to find out right now. How did I know they were going to strike water? Besides, you thought it was a great idea. Please don't remind me. Listen, Jeb, suppose I poison the well or something. Well, you be quiet, Brass. Why should we poison the well when I can get it from them legally? I still have them over a barrel. They haven't a single... Speak of the devil. Come in, gentlemen. Congratulations. I hear you struck a bonanza. Yeah. One of your crooked deals finally boomeranged. Boomerang? You've got me all wrong. I'm very glad there's a new source of water in the valley. You might as well be, because we're not buying a drop of water from you from now on. What about the water you've already used and haven't paid for? We're bringing 50 head of cattle into town for shipment. You can arrange the deal and take what we owe you out of the price we get. <laughs> I couldn't sell your cattle for love nor money. There's no demand. The market is glutted. That's a lie. You've been selling your own cattle right along. Well, perhaps... Wait I... a minute, Harden. You're the head of the Cattlemen's Association here. It's your duty to see that every rancher gets a fair share of the market. That's not quite right, Mr. Cassidy. It is my duty to see that the cattle come up to the specifications demanded by the buyers. If my herd is the only good beef in the valley, that's your hard luck. Well, how can we fatten our cattle on the water rations you give us? Oh, why argue with him? There's better ways to handle men. Wait a minute. We're going to sell our cattle if we have to start our own association to do it. But first, I want to pay off this debt. We'll give you a hundred head of cattle for what we owe you. I won't take your cattle. What are you talking about? Cattle is legal tender for debts anywhere in the West. But not your cattle. I want your ranch and I'm going to get it. I'm afraid not, Harden. I'm calling a meeting of every rancher in the valley. Then we'll see how much support you have. Good day. If he gets all the ranches working together, we're going to have a fight on our hands. I don't believe the ranchers will support Mr. Cassidy. Especially when they find out he's a cattle rustler. Cattle rustler? Why, Jeb, Cassidy ain't never stole anything. Not yet. We're going to see that he does. Yeah, and overnight, California becomes a hero. Says he knew all along he was going to hit water. You did? Uh, oh, uh, of course you did. I just wanted to surprise you. <laughs> and that ain't all. I'll bet there's a teasing water all over this valley. Now, wait a minute. Just because you hit water here, don't start bragging. I ain't bragging, Hoppy. I'll tell you what I'll do. Me and my pal sink a well for any rancher that wants one. If there ain't water, we won't charge him a cent. Well, that sounds fair enough. Say, if this works out, we've got hard and licked. You bet we have. Here come the others. Let's get the meeting started, huh? All right. Yeah. Hey, look, boys. Why, well, there's Harden now with his vigilantes. Let them come. We want a showdown anyhow. Yeah. 
I guess he brought his vigilantes along just to maintain order. I didn't get an invitation to your meeting. However, there's some old business I want to bring up. I'm glad you came and brought your gang, since you're the subject of this meeting. Gentlemen, this valley has some of the finest cattle land in the country. Yet your stock is dying and your land's blowing away. And why? All because of one man, Jeb Harden. He shuts our water off and lets our pasture turn to dust. And if we try to sell our cattle, he tells us there's no market for them. Yet he's been selling his own right along. That's right, Hoppy. Yes, and that's true of the vigilantes, too. Oh, yes, the vigilantes. Harden tells us he formed that little group to protect us from outlaws and to maintain law and order. And who are the vigilantes? A bunch of gunmen hired by him to clean out anybody that gets in his way. And Harden can clean us out, too, gentlemen. He can break all of us one by one unless we stick together. We're with you, Hoppy. We'll start our own association, market our own cattle. Sink our own wells. We don't need to buy Harden's water anymore. Oh, wait a minute, gentlemen. Don't let Cassidy stampede you until you hear what I have to say. He used a lot of fine-sounding words. Well, I've never known a crook that didn't. However, there's one thing he said that's quite true. I did refuse to market his stock. I refused because I found out half the Whitlock herd is stolen cattle. I suppose you can prove that statement. I certainly can. This hide came off a steer the Lynn Whitlock shipped to Kansas City last year. The stockyards returned it to me. Take a good look at it, Mr. Varney. There's the original brand, the Bar V. You can see where it's been enlarged to a box W by use of a running iron. Whitlock and Cassidy pose as the small rancher's friends. But that doesn't stop them from stealing your cattle. You haven't proved anything, Harden. Anybody can mark up a hide and you probably did it yourself. So that's your story, is it? Then you won't object if we take a look at the herd. Certainly not. You'll find some of Varney's cattle at the water hole. And they've still got his brand on them. All right, gentlemen, let's take a look. Well, Lynn, it's some kind of a frame-up, Hoppy. Well, I didn't do it. Oh, I know you didn't. But we got to be ready for trouble. If Harden has planted stolen cattle in that herd, we've practically got a rope around our neck. Let's go see. There's one. Go get him, Red. and brass better than any of us. They planned this frame up, didn't they? Oh, well, now, Miss Lucy, now, I'm just an innocent bystander. Come on, wag your tongue. Well, if you want the truth, Jeff Harden would double-cross himself. He got half a chance. Oh, we've known that all along. It's yours, all right, Mr. Barney. Somebody's worked him over the running iron. <laughs> So you're the one that was going to help the little fellows, eh? We'll see that you get justice, Mr. Varney. But, but not your kind of justice. You'll have to come with us, Cassidy. I'll see you get a fair trial. I can imagine the kind of a trial we'd get. We wouldn't even live till we got to the jail. Well, whether you... Get off those horses! Let that calf loose. Come on, get down there! Drop your gun! Yours too. Mr. Varney, Mr. Varney, aren't you going to help them? 
Sure, you don't believe they're guilty. I don't want to believe they're guilty, Miss Lucy, but if those men are innocent, they should have given themselves up. But Harden would have lynched them, you know that. He framed my brother today, and tomorrow he'll frame you. I've got no use for Harden and his gang either, Miss Lucy. Your brother and his partners are fugitives. Yes, and we'll all be if we're siding with them now. You're afraid of them. Oh, no, we're not. We'll all fight Harden if we can get the evidence against him. But there's no sense trying to fight him as long as he stays within the law. Sleep around the other side, they can knock us off like clay pigeons. All right, leave two men here. The rest of us will ride back to town. But they might crawl out of that hole and get away. What of it? If they run away, they'll only prove the guilt. If they stay here, it'll be open season for anyone named Whitlock, Travers, or Cassidy. Chris, Baldy, you stay here. Hey, they're leaving two men on guard. Yeah. Well, we'll stay here till it gets dark, then we'll make a break for it. Where we go, Hoppy? We're fair game for anybody. Back to the ranch. We'll have a talk with Wildcat. Miss Hoppy, why didn't they include me in this frame-up? Well, my goodness, that's because you're not a cattle man. Huh? Uh, say, pass me that, will you, please? You know, when you got mixed up in this oil business, you certainly got your head out of the noose. To hear you talk, you'd think Lynn and Hoppy and Johnny were really guilty. Why don't you... Wait a minute. Oh, Lynn! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, yeah. don't I get any attention? Johnny, are you hurt? Oh, I'm all right. We make a bad target on a dark night. You shouldn't have come. The vigilantes might be watching the house. We made sure no one was around before we rode in. We're only going to be here a few minutes. I want to have a talk with Wildcat. Now. I want you to tell me everything you know about Jeb Harden and Joe Brass. Oh, well, now, listen, I don't know nothing. I, uh... Wildcat, you promised to go straight. Oh, yes, I know, but not straight across Harden's path. Uh, that's suicide. But look what's happened to you. Yeah, I know. And we haven't got a chance unless we get some evidence against Harden. Mm. Oh, well, now, I don't know whether this is evidence or not, but, um... Uh, you remember Dirk Mason? You know, the fellow, the killer that you fellas captured? Yeah, what about him? He used to work for Jeb Harden. Oh, well, that's no surprise. What else? Uh, well, one of the vigilantes told me uh, that Joe Brass had to kill Dirk Mason to keep him from squealing on Jeb Harden. Keep him from squealing? What about? Well, uh, oh, well, now, I wouldn't know about that. I... <clears throat> well, that's a great help. You can't prove anything on that kind of evidence. Hey, wait a minute. Wasn't it right after that mail robbery that Harden quit marketing the rancher's cattle? Well, yes, the cattle contracts didn't come through. Harden told the ranchers that all the stockyards weren't buying any cows this year. And you took their word for it. Well, we had to. You see, Harden's head of the association, so naturally he does all the bargaining. Yeah, but suppose the cattle contracts were in that stolen mailbag. Mason couldn't have used them, but Harden could. You mean to say Harden filled those contracts himself? Well, he must have. He's been selling his cattle right along, hasn't he? 
You bet he has. And he could have told the buyers that all our cattle were stolen, and they'd have believed him. What about that, Wildcat? Does that make sense? Well, anything you accuse Harden of makes sense. But how are you going to prove it? No, I guess the only thing we can do is break into his office and see what we can find. Well, that's impossible. The town's full of vigilantes. Well, they'd shoot you on sight. And we'll have to find a way to get the vigilantes out of town. Here's what we'll do. There's a little clump of trees just north of town. We'll meet there at sunrise. Well, it's missing nice the old guy's a king himself. Where's your cattle thieving friends? I want to see Harden. Step right inside. Get out. I'm busy. I got a message for you from Cassidy and Whitlock. Where are they? They're ready to give themselves up. That is, uh, on one condition. Well? They'll surrender if you bring along the sheriff and guarantee him safe conduct to the jail. All right. I'll guarantee there'll be no lynching. Now, where are they? They're waiting at those big rocks, three miles north of town. Wait here. Brass. Hello, boys. Never mind about the sheriff. Just round up the men and go get them. Right. And brass. It might be better if you shot them for attempting to escape. Leave it to me. Come on, boys. Go inside, please. Sure. Sit down. Yeah. In case anything goes wrong, You'll make a nice hostage to turn over to the vigilantes. California's all right. There's no fresh tracks. Something tells me we've been tricked. Come on. Where are they? Here they are, Hoppy. Good. Hurry 
Poppy. Lynn. Yeah, Hoppy, what you find? Enough here to send Hardman and Brass to the pen for 20 years. These are the cattle contracts sent to you, Barney and the other ranchers. And stolen from United States mail. We told Barney and his friends see this evidence. Come on. You mean Mason's job? Yeah, it's us for them now. They get that evidence to the ranchers, we're finished. Come on. Take half of those over and show them to Varner. Give the rest of them to Wildcat and let him show them the ranches west of town. All right. Wait a minute. You hide here till the vigilantes go by. We're going to draw them to the ranch. That's where I want you to bring the posse. Come on. I'll go with you. Being. Hey, take a look at them contracts. Those were found in Harden's office. California, watch that back door. Right now. Hey, Hoppy, 
Maybe I'm getting low on ammunition. So am I. They seem to have plenty. survey the valley. I still think there's oil around here. You do? Positive. Well, so long. So long. Hm. Brother, there's one born every minute. Thanks, Lynn. Well, that's all right, Hoppy. I'm sure sorry you got that telegram. Oh, so am I in a way, but Buck's having outlaw trouble, and after all, he is a friend of ours, we can't very well disappoint him. And I thought we was gonna settle down. Uh, maybe when we get this job finished, we can come back here and start in where we left off. <laughs> I understand, Hoppy. You know, I never did expect you to hibernate for long. Not him. <laughs> hey. You don't seem to mind housework as much as you used to, Jenny. Well... Lucy, it, it, it's all tied up with something I've been wanting to ask you. What is it? Well, our business partnership's worked out fine, but, but it can't take the place of... I know. It can't take the place of fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Oh, Lucy, it's not that. I just don't think you're ready to settle down, Johnny. Well, Hoppy might need me, and if I collect another reward, well, maybe... Uh... Goodbye, Lucy. Goodbye, Johnny. Come on, kids. Bye, Hoppy. Bye, Bye. California. Well, if I click that... What am I saying? Bye! <laughs> Bye!
people in that camp here. All right, Hoppy, I'll tell the boys. Mm. All right, boys, we're calling it a day. Man, is that good news. My stomach's been arguing with me for hours. Mine too. Why are you young knotheads always yelling for your nursing bottles? Well, we're still growing, aren't we? Of course, you wouldn't understand that. You're all through. You stopped sprouting years ago. I stopped sprouting? I ain't growing. Why are you young... That young and sure told me off. Huh? Pigeon camp, Lefty. Well, this is our chance. <laughs> that grub ain't ready pretty soon. I'm gonna eat the harness right off of them horses. Oh, the horses. <laughs> so it's us youngins who are always yelling for our nursing bottles, huh? A man who's gotta eat, ain't he? Where's Bud? What's the matter with him? I don't know, Hoppy. He sure seems down the dump. Come to think of it, he's been mighty short of conversation lately. Hmm. What's the matter, kid? You look like you lost your best friend. I've been thinking about tomorrow, Hoppy. After we drive the herd into the pens at the railroad yard, my job will be over. Ah, so that's what's worrying you, huh? Yeah. I've been mighty happy at the bar 20. Well, you know, it's generally pretty quiet around till next roundup time. Yeah, I know, but won't you let me stay on, guys? I don't care anything about wages. I'll, I'll work just for my keep. I was kicked around plenty until you took me in. Your ranch has sort of become home to me. I, I hate to think of leaving. I think we can figure something out. <laughs> oh, gosh, Hoppy. It's all right, kid. You three go back to the chuck wagon and fill up. I'll get down to the riverbed and stand guard. You know, we're still in the edge of the Badlands. I'll do it, Hoppy. All right.
Lord, them dang rustlers is apt to try it again. I don't think they were rustlers. You mean them bushwhackers was aiming to cut the kid down? Kind of looks that way. I don't think two lone rustlers would tackle a herd that size. That's just what I was thinking, Hoppy. But have you uh, any enemies you know of? Why, no. Well, you better get back to camp. You're too good a target out here. We'll stay here and stand guard. Jed Stevers is still here. Yeah. Red River Jenga. What's he selling? That's a town postmaster. He's trying to get rid of some unclaimed letters. Yeah, every time a trail herd comes to town, he pulls the town crier stuff. <laughs> Hi, again. Howdy, 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 howdy. Business. Rotten. These consigned unclaimed letters are pouring in so fast, I'm pushed out of house and home. <laughs> Hey, Jed. Did you say Bud Lawton? I sure did. It'll be an awful shock to you. You got a customer. Whoopee! Good for me. <laughs> here he is right here. Here it is, Sonny. And by the mess of writing on it, it's been following you from Hades to breakfast. <laughs> What is it, kid? I'm a lawyer in my hometown. Bad news? My dad's dead. Oh, that's too bad. You see, I... I left home when I was just old enough to mount a horse. I couldn't see things my dad's way. Now I wish I... Where is your home? In the Poncho District. The Diamond Hitch. The Diamond Hitch? Say, I've heard of that spread. Must be a whopper. Yeah, it's one of the biggest in the section. Well, looks like you're gonna have your hands full from now on. I know it's a crazy thing to ask, but... Well... Well, go ahead. You're my friend. Yeah, I know. That's that's why I was going to ask if maybe you three would come along with me. Oh, we'd like to, but we got to think about the bar 20. Yeah, but it would just be long enough to kind of help me get things started. You see, there's only my sister there now. Sister? Hoppy, we can't let Bud down. It's only right to help out a pal. Help out a pal, huh? Uh, <laughs> maybe we can figure out something. We'll talk it over after I pay off the boys. Pardon me. Is there a lawyer in town? Sure, right over there on the corner. Thank you. Well, come in. Oh, how are you? Well, what do you want, young fellow? Uh, I'd like to have a partnership agreement drawn up, please. Well, sit down, sit down then. Sit Thank down. you. 
It's a nice day, huh? Oh, fine. Yeah. Just a few minutes here now. Now, oh, where is that pen? It's behind your ear. I know it is. I know it. Now, uh, what names you want written down here? Uh, Hopalong, Cassidy, California, Carlson, Jimmy Rogers, and Bud Lock, and all the share equally, and two-thirds of the Diamond Hitch Ranch in yeah. Pancho County. Now, wait a minute. Now, just hold your horses. Slow. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cass, Eddie. seeing that you're sober and, and apparently in your right senses, I'd say that you were being pretty generous. These fellows must be mighty good friends of yours. Three of the very best, mister. Yeah, well, sign here. Uh, uh, where are the other fellows? Oh, well, uh, I'll go round them up. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. All right, keep moving, buddy. Well, what's the matter? Never mind what's the matter. Just keep walking and be careful. You fellas are a bit previous, aren't you? I haven't been paid off yet. Hey, what is this? Get a fine bud and get a bite to eat and hit Yeah. fellas happen to go by the names of uh, Hopalong Cassidy and California Carlson and Jimmy Rogers? That's right. Uh, uh, Jay Griffin is my name. I'm the lawyer here in town. I, I wish you fellas had come over to my office. Where is your office? Hmm? Uh, it's just around the corner over there. We'll be over a little later. Yes, thank you. Yes, come in. Oh, you want to see us about something? Yes, the boy had me draw that up just before he was shot. Bud's given us a two-thirds interest in his ranch. He has. Now, here you are. Sign it. We can't do that, Hoppy. We can't take it from Bud. No, that wouldn't be right. And ordinarily, we wouldn't, but there's a special reason why we're going to. Special reason. There you are. Uh, after I have this recorded, where do you want it sent? Address it to Hopalong Cassidy and mail it to Poncho. Poncho? Yeah, I got some unfinished business to take care of over there. But, Hoppy, we ain't leaving till we nail the hides of them two skunks that got Bud. You're not gonna find them around here. You think that agreement had something to do with it? I don't know yet, but I got an idea the hunting will be better in Poncho. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, it's all right. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Me too, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Thank you. What do you mean so long? I said I had some unfinished business to take care of over in Poncho. 
You two better get back to the bar 20 and look after things. But, Hoppy, you forget that Bud was our pal, too. Keen wreck by gravy. You can't ride around that, Hoppy. No, you can't. Well, looks like me and California will have to go it alone, then. That's right. Let's go, Jimmy. Wait a minute. You're ganging up on me, huh? That's the way she stands. <laughs> All right, you two rebels. Come on. trip. No slip-up of any kind, you're sure of that. You can lay all your bets on it, boss. His three friends cramped their style a bit the first time, but we finished a job in town for certain. Those three friends that you speak of, there's no kickback from them. No, they're past history. The kid just worked for them. Chances are they forgot all about him the minute he was planted. <laughs> all right. Now, one last word. Remember, all of you, we're playing for big stakes, mighty big stakes, an empire of cattle and land. The Diamond Hitch is not only the key ranch, but it controls the water privileges of the entire district. Once I take over, I'm clamping down. No more free water. That means that the other ranches will dry up like dust and blow away. Then all we have to do is step in and grab the valley for ourselves, right? Didn't old Sam Lawton mention something about that water question in his will? <laughs> yes, there was a clause specifying the water rights be kept in force, but that only applies to the heir, or heirs, not to a new owner. The minute the diamond hitch changes hands, that provision becomes null and void. I certainly got to hand it to you, boss. The whole thing is foolproof. Uh, maybe. But don't forget, no matter how foolproof a thing might be, one wrong move will wreck everything. So be on your toes, all of you. I'm riding out now to get everything ready. I'll pick up the lot and girl on the way back. You have Judge Stevens on hand. I told you to lay off that stuff. Well, what do you want me to do? I've been going nuts talking to myself. Well, your waiting time is over. Today you become Bud Lawton, the missing heir of the Diamond Hitch. Are you sure you have everything straight? Everything. I've been studying that guy's habits so long, I'm beginning to think I am Bud Lawton. Well, you look enough like him to fool even his sister. Hmm, I hope so. You know, Foster, you're a neat schemer. You put me in as two-thirds owner of the Diamond Hitch. Pretty soon you'll buy me out on paper. Then you start working on the girl for her one-third. That part won't interest you. You'll be paid off and on your way by then. Mm. You know, I've been thinking. Suppose that girl finds out about her brother's death. She won't. I've taken steps to see that no word will reach her. <laughs> well, that eases my mind a lot. You know, a stretch in the pen don't exactly appeal to me. Yeah, well, clean yourself up. Wait about an hour, then ride into town, come to my office. Okay. Boys, we're about there. Might be a good idea if we rode into town separately and kind of played strangers while we have a look around. Lottie, it's a mighty happy day for you. I should say it is. I can hardly believe my brother's coming home at last. Yes, 
Hello, Judge Stevens. How are you, Faye? Mr. Foster, are you sure Bud will arrive today? Well, here's the telegram. Oh, let me see. Oh, goodness, I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen, did uh, Miss Lawton say her brother was coming home? That's right. We're all on hand to give Sam Lawton's kid a real welcome. Ah, uh, that's fine. Thank you. Say, did you hear what I heard? Yeah, I don't get it. Must be something wrong with my ear. How can Bud be coming here when... Hey, uh, can you tell me where Mark Foster's office is? Hey, I'll bet you're Sam Lawton's son. You're right. Well, welcome home, son. Welcome home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Glad to see you. Your ears didn't fool you. Nothing escapes me. I got ears like a mule. Something to that, too. We're sure glad to have you back here. Thank you. Hello there. I'm Mark Foster. I presume you're Bud Lawton. That's right. Glad to see you, son. Thank you. Come inside. You can't take him yet, Foster. We're taking him over with the last chance to do a little celebration. I'm afraid that'll have to be put off. His sister's waiting for him. Sorry, boys. Up here, I think I'm going local. First I hear things, now I'm seeing them. He's down, will you? It looks like we run into something. Bud. Oh, Bud. You sure grown up, Faith. I wouldn't have known you in a crowd. I wouldn't have recognized you either. But then it's been almost ten years since you left the ranch. Yeah. Long enough to make a lot of changes in people. But you're home now, Bud. To stay. And that's all that matters. Sure. Uh, you remember Judge Stevens, of course. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Judge. It's I, all I, right. I understand. Glad to see you back. Thank you. Well, Judge, I'm satisfied as executor of the state to turn everything over to Sam's children. Very well. I'll proceed at once with the necessary legal matters. Are you two better on along? I suppose you're anxious to get out to the ranch. I should say I am. Goodbye. Hello, bud. Don't forget now, you're all invited to the party tonight. Thank you. We'll be there. We'll be there. Bye. Bye. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get that dang faker and killer. Not so fast. There's no argument about him being a fake, but it's the other I'm not so sure. But, Hoppy, it's clear as day. That fellow learned to Bud's inheritance, cut him down, now he's trying to grab it for himself. Uh, maybe and maybe not. I got a feeling that boy isn't in this alone. You mean somebody else is pulling the strings? My hunch seems to run that way. At least we're not tipping our hands just yet. Then what's our next move, Hoppy? I'm just itching for action. He's down, you old fire eater. If I'm not far wrong, you'll get plenty of action. And soon. Come on. feel good to be home, bud. It certainly does, sis. The place looks just the same. No, not the same. Dad, it... Oh, yes. Yes, I know. Bud. Bud, I hate to bring up unpleasant things on your first day home. But it's serious. Uh, you see, most of the men have quit. I've been almost frantic trying to run this place all alone. Oh, but now that you're back... I know everything's going to be all right. Jumping horn toads, what a spread. You could ride for months and still be on the diamond hitch train. Can you imagine Bud leaving all this? It's kind of hard to understand. After all, he's just a kid. Maybe a little stubborn. Just right over and ask those men the way to the main ranch house.
about, boys? I don't know. There's been too much been going around here to suit me. That goes for me, too. Not too bad, but it's kind of the hope that we can land a job around here. That won't be hard. It'd be free open. We I didn't get her paid. That is, going to hire out as a target. Spreading like a Texas twist. Yeah, and it's getting more twisted all the time. Bud, mm -hmm. haven't you noticed anything? No, what? Oh, well, don't you remember? You're quirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were so mad the day you left, you rode away without it. Yeah, I remember. Dad gave it to me. Oh, don't you remember, Bud? I gave it to you. It was a birthday present. Oh, forgive me, Faith. I guess my mind was on the mess this ranch is in. I know, dear. I know just how you feel. You know, sis, I think it would be a big mistake for us to try to hang on to the diamond hitch. You mean you want to sell it? It's not that I want to. But what else is there to do? I'm only thinking of you. I don't want you to lose everything. Dad made me promise that we'd never let go of the diamond hitch. Why, he spent all of his life here. This place meant everything to him. And besides, every rancher in the valley depends on our water supply. And Bud... Bud, the last thing that Dad said was, tell your brother not to let our neighbors down. But we've got to think of ourselves first. Without men to stand guard, we'll be robbed blind. That organized band of rustlers is too strong. Oh, now that you're back, I know we'll be able to get help. Oh, but don't you see? The men need a leader. They resent taking orders from a woman. It's not only that, Faith. I've been on the go too much to settle down anymore. Bud. I'll never agree to sell the diamond hitch. I'm afraid there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Remember, I'm two-thirds owner. Hello, boys. Miss Lawton, we want our time. We're quitting. Oh, won't you please stay? You're the last three on the ranch. I'm sorry, miss. Our mind's made up. What seems to be the trouble, Faith? Oh, uh, Bud, the boys want to quit. Say, so, fellas, this is my brother, Bud. Hello. He's going to take charge from now on. Nothing he can do to stop that bushwagon. I don't suppose there's any chance of persuading you to change your minds. We'll gladly pay you a bonus. Money's no good for you when you're six feet under the ground. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. You see, Faith, it's hopeless. I ran across a prospective buyer on the way up here. I'll get in touch with him and close the deal. Oh, but, Bud... I beg your pardon. I understand you're taking on some new hands. I'm afraid you've come at the wrong time. The ranch is being sold. However, it might pay you to get in touch with the new owners later on. Thanks. You sure working fast. Figuring to make a quick sellout and then the most. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. How do you do? These are my friends, California Carlson and Jimmy Rogers. Howdy, Hello. How do you do? Of course, you don't know us, but we were acquainted with your 
father. So when we heard of his death, we came at once to see if we could be of any help. Well, it's awfully nice of you, Mr. Cassidy. But I don't think there's anything you can do. Maybe there is. I just overheard your brother say he was selling the ranch. I gathered you weren't agreeable. I'm not. But there's nothing I can do. You see, he's two-thirds owner. Maybe I can change his mind. I'm afraid it's hopeless. Bud won't listen to me, his own sister. So what chance does a stranger have? Your father used to listen to him. Maybe I can convince his son. All right, Mr. Cassidy. You go ahead. I'll be grateful for anything you can do. Good. Now, do you mind telling me who's handling the estate? Judge Stevens. Fine. California and I'll go into town. Jimmy can stay here and look after the stock. Oh, uh, do you mind if we come to the party tonight? Of course you may. Thank you. I'll take care of everything, Hoppy. Hello there, how are you? Fine, hello. And by the way, please don't say anything to your brother about our conversation. No, I won't. Thank you. Jimmy's the spitting image of me in my younger days. Yeah? Yeah. You know, Hoppy, the gals just used to fall all over themselves. Trying to... They get away from you. Yeah. <laughs> get away from me? <laughs> Come on, get that old crow bait moving. Let's get up to the top. Crow bait? Sensitive. I thought I told you we weren't taking on anyone. I have something to say about that. Mr. Rogers has stayed. Boyfriend, eh? Please. I'm going to take a look around the place. You know, I... I can't understand him. Bud doesn't seem like my own brother. Why, he's... he's more like a stranger. Well, you know he... What did you start to say? I wasn't going to say anything. Just... I don't want you to take a, think I took offense at what he said. Matter of fact is, I'd like such an arrangement. Aren't you being a little forward, Mr. Rogers? Well, Hoppy always told me to put my best foot forward. Both feet? Honest, I wasn't trying to be fresh. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I'm sure that any friend of Mr. Cassidy's means well. There it goes again. Hoppy this, Hoppy that. Man, woman, and beast, they fall for him like a ton of brick. Well, he is very nice. However, don't look so glum, Mr. Rogers. I'm saving my second dance just for you this evening. Second dance? That's swell. Second dance? Why not the first one? Oh, that's for Mr. Cassidy. Judge, you take a look around, see if you can find out anything about that left-handed gunslinger. I'll do that, Hoppy. And don't get into trouble. I can't be with you every minute. Joe, gone it, Hoppy. You treat me like I was all I care. I can take care of myself any day without any help from you. Oh, sure. Remember that. I will. Judge Stevens? Yes? I'm Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Cassidy? Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, have a seat. Thank you. What can I do for you, Mr. Cassidy? It's about the uh, Lawton estate. Yes? By the way, how long have you known Bud? Ever since he was born. His father was my very best friend. Is that so? He's a nice boy, isn't he? Yes, he was. But I don't know. When he returned today, uh, well, he acted uh, almost like a stranger. Something about him was different. You noticed that, huh? Yes. But I suppose time changes all of us. <laughs> yes, I guess it does. But uh, there seems to be a slight misunderstanding about who's going to own the ranch. Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Cassidy. Everything is settled. Well, maybe, but maybe I can explain what I mean. Uh, just before we left Denton, Oh, 
home, boys. Okay. And I'll just have to raise that. Good play. That's the most amazing thing I ever heard. It's fantastic. Utterly fantastic. But it's true, every word of it. Well, I hope you have something tangible, some proof to bear out your story. Well, I expect the partnership agreement on today's stage. You intend to make use of it? I certainly will if it'll keep that fake brother from getting the ranch. Then Mark Foster must be informed immediately. Oh, for the time being, I'd rather we kept this just between ourselves. But I've already returned the papers to him. He must be told, or he'll go ahead and turn over the estate to this imposter. Well, don't worry about that. I'll see that he doesn't. Yeah, but why wait? Why not expose this boy immediately? Not now. I'm convinced that the boy is small fry. Any move at this time might disturb the big fish. Oh, I see. Well, I certainly do appreciate your coming over, Mr. Cassidy. Thank you. Sorry, I'll take one. Sorry to you. I'm Pat, I don't want any. Sorry. Three. I'll bet ten. I'll pass. Well, look one. Ten and ten better. Did you make it? Twenty and I'll raise you twenty. Now look one. See that and raise you forty. I'll see that forty and raise you eighty. Come on. All right, I'll see that easy. Now wait a minute. You can't bluff a man with a pet hand. You didn't feel. Yo. What? Warm I'll break every bone in your body. Take your dirty paws off of me. Yes, sir. -y. I'm sure for an hombre that can take care of himself. Ah, ah. I'm just gonna run you out of town, for that bum steer, you old goat. Now get out of here. Clear out of town. Go on. This is the end of the line. You stay out. Soft in the head as well as in the carcass, running myself down that away. <laughs> Don't take it so hard. Let's go see if that partnership agreement comes in. Boys, watch this. <laughs> well, who worked you over? Some strangers. From the looks of them, I'm pretty sure I ran into those fellows Sonora was telling us about. You mean them three from Denton? Well, there were only two of them, but they fit your description to a T. I believe I can account for the third one. 
The young fella. Each at the ranch. The three of them showed up out there looking for work. Work? They didn't come here looking for work. I thought you said there'd be no kickback. Well, there's nothing that can't be cleaned up now. Well, get out and do it. I better watch out for that big fellow's right. It comes at you like the hind end of a mule. He won't get a chance to use it. Foster, I don't like the looks of this. Things are getting too hot to suit me. You getting ready to tuck your tail between your legs and play jackrabbit? No. But... <laughs> now, don't worry. I'll finish with you and have you on your way in no time. Now, this is what I want you to do tonight at the party. I wonder if the other two will show up. I'm so glad to see you. Now's a time to make that announcement. Yes. Friends? Friends, I... I have something rather unpleasant to tell you. I think you ought to know that my sister and I are disposing of the diamond hitch. Well, that's why I hope you know what that will mean to these ranchers. You mean about the water rights? Your dad always took care of us with that, son. Without his help, we couldn't have existed. Yes, I know. I'll do everything I can to try to persuade the new owners to continue the arrangement. Well, who are you selling to, bud? A large eastern syndicate. Uh, they don't want me to mention any names until the deal is closed. Well, I'm afraid you'll all have to excuse me. I have to leave immediately in order to meet the syndicate's representative at the county seat in the morning. Good night. Just a minute. What do you want? I'm afraid you'll have to hold up the sale of the ranch. What are you talking about? Suppose you explain what this is all about. I think this will explain it. Why, this is a four-way partnership covering two-thirds of the Diamond Hitch Ranch. Yes, and it's signed by Bud Lawton. I never signed any such paper. I didn't say you did. I said it was signed by Bud Lawton. Mr. Cassidy, what, what do you mean? Miss Lawton, I held back telling you this as long as I could. But Bud was shot down in Denton. This man isn't your brother. You would seem to be drunk or crazy. Take it, Mr. Curry. That's right. A little water. Keep your head, you fool. Say nothing. I'll handle it. Let me see this. Here's some water for you. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to be so blunt about telling you. I understand, Mr. Cassidy. I understand. Now, supposing we get back to your story. Why was Bud Lawton killed and by whom? Well, I'm sorry, I don't know. Maybe I can supply the answer to both those questions. This partnership. What do you mean? People don't go around giving ranches away. <laughs> of course you're right, Sheriff. This man and his friends are imposters. They're trying to rob Sam Lawton's children. I told you the truth, and you can verify it by getting in touch with the authorities in Denton. 
Well, I'll have to lock you three up until I've had time to investigate your story. Fred, you can't do that, Sheriff. I'll relieve you of that, too. Them trees as good as stretched. Yes, well, we'll use the temper of the townspeople as an excuse. But we're going to handle this a little bit differently. Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Cassidy. Hello there. Hello. Oh, Mr. Cassidy. I wish there was something I could do to help you. Well, that's very thoughtful. But you just sit tight and don't worry too much about it. Sure, you just take it. Don't worry about it. Why, I can feel the noose around my neck already. Get out. Sit down, take your boot off. <laughs> my donut. Come on, hurry up. Well, we had our dance anyway. Yes, we did. He'll be doing his next dance at the end of a rope. Yeah, never mind that. Come on. Now look at that. Them socks was guaranteed. Forever. Forever? Yeah. Miss Lawton, don't let anyone threaten or bully you into selling the ranch. If the going gets too tough, this partnership agreement will block them. Judge Stevens will tell you how to use it. After it's served its purpose, you can destroy it. Jesus. 
You mean you're letting us out? Yes, and hurry it up. That mob's liable to be here any minute. You can make it out the side door. Your horses at the end of the alley. You're a white man, Sheriff. Well, I don't want the death of three innocent men on my conscience. Yours. Hurry it up, boys. We haven't a minute to lose. safer if the sheriff went with us. No, I can't. Take a look out there, California. There's a couple of dollars out there. The left-handed gunslinger. Sure. Nice little death trap he had set for us. You mean them hombres out there waiting to plug us? That's right. And our friend here to hand in the report that we were killed while trying to escape. Let's get them bushwhacks. Wait a minute. That won't be necessary. He's going to save us the trouble. Gonna invite them in here. I can't. They'll start shooting the minute I open that door. Uh, that's too bad because I'm gonna start shooting if you don't. Open it up. Don't shoot, boys. Well, what happened, Sheriff? What's the matter? Nothing. Come on in. Come right in, boys, and join our happy little family. Get their guns. Now, boys, you go to that front one and keep your eye peeled. Get down there. Hold it. Who hired you two to do that shooting down at Denton? What are you talking about? We've never been in Denton. No. Hoppy. Yeah? That fake brother just rode in. Keep him covered, Jimmy. He's heading for Boston's office. Sure. How did he get his orders? You mean the bankers mixed up in there? Up to his neck. That syndicate's just a blind. Foster's the head man behind the whole setup. Lock them up. I'll be back in a minute. Get in there. Come on. Get him. a nice little scapegoat for just such an occasion. What do you mean? Kit Moyer. Oh, well, that's your name. So far, Moyer is the only one they could connect with this fake air business. If he should be found dead with a revolver in his hand, the supposed suicide will be self-explanatory. And that puts us in the clear. You dirty double-crossers, trying to put all the blame on me. I'm ready to talk now and talk plenty. Escaped from the jail. He shot down Bud Long. Tried to kill Rip and myself. Where is he now? He's in my private office. Let's go in and get him.
here now. Yeah, I can. Wait a minute, boys. Looks like you got him, boys. Hold your fire. I'm coming out. Take it easy. Open that door. Talk, Moya. I'm not Bud Lawton. My name's Kit Moyer. They had the real Bud Lawton kill. And got me to pose as the heir. So they could grab the diamond hitch for themselves. Who had Bud killed? Mark Foster. <laughs> like you got enough men to run your ranch now. And with Jimmy Axler's foreman, everything should run smoothly. Mr. Cassidy, without your help, I don't know what I would have done. We're glad we could help. Well, we better be getting along now. We got a lot of work to do at the Bar 20. I hope you'll be coming back this way sometime. <laughs> you can count on it. California and I are going to check on your foreman. Goodbye, Jimmy. Bye, Hoppy. Bye, Bye Jimmy. You didn't walk out on the lady, did you? She had enough help. I figured I was needed at the bar 20. <laughs> <laughs>
Romans, Romans, and countrymen. Three score and seven years ago, I came to bury Caesar. That ain't it. Gone, uh, I better read this speech of mine. <laughs> Friends, uh, I said that. I stand here. Not as a representative of our great sheriff trying to sway your intelligent minds, but as a firm believer in justice. My candidate is an honest gent. During his term of office, he's always handled things with a firm hand. Has always been reliable, and above all, steady. A little applause at this time wouldn't be out of order. Thank you. <laughs> As I said before, lend me your ears. Oh, 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 oh. oh, not those ears. I stand here as Hoppy Street Deputy and Campaign Manager. Our platform is built on a firm, solid foundation. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, well, there it is, folks. Pop on, catch it for... <laughs> Why did I have to get into politics? I was just making my campaign speech up there. Well, you wanted to be my campaign manager, didn't you? Oh, shucks, you don't need no campaign manager. We don't need no election. Ain't nobody gonna run again yet. No? No. Well, then maybe we'd better get somebody to run against me. Huh. For instance, who? You. Me, Sheriff? Well, or George. Me? Oh, no, no, no. No, Hoppy, not me, because, well, you... See, I busted my thumb up there. I'm kind of handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be afraid of the job, would you? Afraid? Why, well, I ain't scared any man the wrong side of the law, dead or alive. Especially dead. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jimmy? No thanks, Hoppy. If I sheriff all those tough hombres would come back into town again. Well, there's one outlaw that isn't waiting for that to happen. Who's that? Remember the Hammond gang, those cattle rustlers that used to run the panhandle? Yeah, yeah and everything else down that way. Well, I put it... Uh, well, you put a stop to it. Well, that rider is Tad Hammond. Hammond? The old leader of the gang. Say, I thought you put him in jail for 20 years. Well, maybe the warden couldn't count. Hey, you don't suppose he escaped or something? Or... I don't know. I'm gonna find out. Hello, Hammond. I thought I'd put you away for good. I was paroled. So you come back to your old stomping ground, huh? Not because I want to. The warden told me to give you the good news. He elected the sheriff of this county my parole officer. Just my luck that you'd be still in office. And I'm supposed to keep you out of trouble? Out of trouble and out of jail. Well, in that case, I'd advise you not to wear that gun. Well, don't worry. My trigger finger doesn't itch anymore. Except when I see you. Do break out? No, I'm on parole. Sit down, I want to talk to you. Sure. Oh, Tom, send over a couple of drinks. How's business? Oh, it couldn't be worse. Look at the place. The old days are gone. Ever since Cassidy's been sheriff, everything is on a level, and you know what that means. Sure, no profit. Mm, he certainly made life miserable for me here. Miserable for you? I think what he's done for me. He's taken five years off my life. I'm not even free now. <laughs> Cassidy's my parole officer. I have to sit still and lick his boots. There's nothing we can do about it. 
Unless we elect another sheriff. Mm -hmm. Fat chance of that. Well, he's up for re-election, Eddie. Yeah? Well, why don't you run against him? <laughs> oh, you're crazy. Cassidy's the most popular man in town. Nobody'd vote for me, except a few barflies. What's become of all that gang used to run with me? Where's Ike Simmons and his gang? <laughs> They're cool on their heels over in Indian territory. Cassidy drove them out and they don't dare come back. And the Garms brothers. They had 15 gun hands in their outfit. <laughs> Cassidy drove them across the state line, too. But what's the difference? You never got along with them anyway. We have one thing in common. A hatred for Cassidy. I bet I could dig up 40 men out of the Indian Territory. Men who will stick together, run him out of town. Well, maybe you've got something there. But I can't win an election with 40 thieves. If we can't win with ballots, we can win with bullets. Looks like we're all here. How many men have you got, Ike? Fifteen. I have ten. The Gom's brothers have eight. Yeah, and here comes Clanton with seven more. That makes forty. You didn't tell me Clanton was coming. Now listen, don't dig up that old feud with Clanton again. boys, I guess you know why I called you all here together. Our candidate is Jerry Doyle. I'll handle the campaign in town, and it's your job to keep the ranchers from voting for Cassidy. Spread a rumor the election's been postponed. Bribe the voters, scare them, use your guns if necessary. I get it. We take the chances while you take it easy. I'm still on parole, Clanton. I have to lay low till after election. Cassidy won't even let me pack a gun. Then why should I take orders from an ex-convict? I'd rather pull a hammer than a tin horn like you. Come on, break it up! Break it up in here! Come on, I'll break it up! Yeah. Throw that gun! Well, it finally took a killing to prove my point. No wonder Cassidy ran you out of the panhandle. If we'd stick together and quit fighting among ourselves, no one could stop us. We're with you, Herman. You can count me in. All right, but why take the trouble to win an election? It'd be easier to kill Cassidy outright. Not while he's sheriff. But if we elect Jerry, Doyle will have protection. Jerry will never swear out a warrant for a man who kills Cassidy, will you, Jerry? I'll say he won't, because we're all going to be deputy sheriff, aren't we? Hey, got a message for you. The election's been postponed till after the fall roundup. Yeah? Thank you, stranger. You're saving us a long ride. All right. River's pretty high, old-timer. I don't think you'll be able to cross. Yeah? What about the election? Oh, never mind that. Cassidy won't need your vote. Well, reckon maybe he won't. Come on, Martinelli. Let's go on. Let's go and have a 
Hello, Scott. Oh, hello, Hoppy. I thought you'd forgotten to vote. Oh, your daughter wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> Here you are. You back again? You voted once already. Oh, I'm just trying to be sociable. <laughs> no loafing around the polls or the election clerk. Move along. You heard what Hoppy said. Oh, you and your election rules. There's no doubt about how this one's going to turn out. Don't be so sure of that. Well, I'll bet Hoppy's in there voting against himself right now just to keep it from being unanimous. Well, I hope he didn't. I don't like the look of things. What's the matter, Judge? Well, not a single voter from out of town has shown up all day. Well, it looks like Jerry Doyle's friends didn't stay away. Who are those men, Hoppy? Oh, gamblers and gunmen. That's all that's left of the old gangs that used to roam the panhandle. Aren't you going to lock them up? I don't want anybody to say I won this election at the point of a gun. Well, you ran them out of town once, Hoppy. Yeah, and we'll do it again after the election. You're going to let those fellows vote? I can't stop them unless they're ex-convicts like Tad Hammond. Well, can't you even stop beating up your campaign manager? Why, you are I'll tear you apart limb from limb out. Wait a minute. Oh, it's you. What's the fuss? Hoppy, I was just minding my own business when 30 of these coyotes leaped on me. I fought them off with my bare fists. 30 of them? Well, all there is here. Just a minute. Are you sure you haven't had a couple of nips? Hoppy, I was just getting a bit. Who, me? No, no, Hoppy. Hoppy, I saw him. Bribing this voter. Plying him with liquor. It's against the law to sell liquor in election day. Didn't sell it. He was giving it away. You tell him, partner. I sure And do as it. for you, you old dried up sack of bones, I got a notion to take care now, of you right now. Wait a minute. If you're in such a fighting mode, take off that coat. All right. Cooler that way, ain't it? Why, you... Here, huh? Hey, vote for Jerry Doyle. Free liquor for everybody. <laughs> Yippee! Hey, Cassidy. Yeah? What are you trying to do, kill off my votes? I hope that won't be necessary. But if there's any more trouble, they'll all land in jail. Yeah, and you with them. Let's run them in anyway. You're still Sheriff Hoppy. Well, since you and your friends are so anxious to run off a fair election, I want to guarantee that my votes are counted. Huh. I could count them in one finger. That's Judge Reynolds' job. Sure. And Judge Reynolds is your friend. I want one of my friends on a balloting committee. Such as who? Ike Simmons. Ike Simmons? Well, I guess that's all right. I didn't know Ike could count above ten. No, without taking his boots off, he can. Judge, my worthy opponent, Mr. Doyle, doesn't seem to trust you. He wants Ike Simmons to help you count the ballots. Sort of watch you, you know. Ike Simmons? Who's going to watch him? Well, he's a good man for the job, California. That's right. Takes a thief to catch a thief. Hey, Simmons, I've had enough Take of it you. easy. Peters and about 20 outfit are coming up the road. I've just seen them. Yeah, and they're all friends of Cassidy. Get ready, boys. There may be trouble.
Let's rush him. No, oh, they'd mow us down. But if you fellas can hold him here, I'll cross the river downstream and ride into town for help. the other boys? In a shooting scrape with the Garms brothers. The Garms brothers? Yeah, they blocked the Red River Ford. Tried to keep us from coming into town. When we started to cross the river, they started throwing lead. It's a nice election campaign you're running. I've got nothing to do with the Garms brothers. And I suppose you were just an innocent bystander. Remember, I'm still on parole. I'm not doing anything hasty. Well, for a man that isn't doing anything hasty, you're traveling in pretty fast company. Be with you in a minute, Buck. I'll go with you, Hoppy. Oh, you stay here and guard the pole. How about me, Hoppy? You do what Jimmy tells you. You're the undersheriff. Undersheriff? Under Jimmy? Come on, California. After the election, we've got to start in on that celebration dinner you've been planning. Yeah, uh, you know, Jimmy, I'm plumb worried. I was going to make a dessert and I can't even remember what it was. What kind of pie is there besides apple, lemon, peach, strawberry, pumpkin, cherry... Uh, lemon, apple, pumpkin, squash, peach, and custard dough by gosh, prune, and apricot, and quince, cherry, coconut, and mints. Mints! That's it. <laughs> if Cassidy connects us up with the Garms gang, we'll be in trouble. By the time he gets back, you'll be sheriff. I know, Tad. I'll but... leave it to me. All right, Ike. Come on, boys, let's vote. Give me a bell up. Just a minute. Just... I smell something wrong. That's just Clanton. You can't vote here, Clanton. Why not? Because your judge said so. You've lost your civil right. I know because I sentenced you to prison myself. I remember. Give me a ballot. I didn't have this mustard's thumb. Here, 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 boys. Remember what Cassidy said. No fighting around the bulls. I'm sorry this had to happen, kid. But I want this election run fair and square. Fair and square? Is that what you call this six men leaving Come on, on California. You? Let's get that dinner Just started. Just a minute. Uh, dinner? Sure. I'll settle with them later. I'm sorry this had to happen, Judge. Fuck, you wait here till I get around behind them. Right.
Grab him, Herschel. guns. Get to your horses. Well, five captured and three shot. Thanks a lot, Buck. Well, I better get these prisoners into town. Come on, Hoppy. Let's go in and clean out the whole bunch of them. <laughs> oh, I'd like to, Buck, but I don't want to start a civil war on election day. But we haven't voted for you yet. You won't have time. The polls will be closed. Well, I hope you know what you're doing, Hoppy. But in case you need any help, we'll be waiting for you, fella. Thanks a lot, Buck. For everything. Come on, boys. Get going. So long. So long, boys. So long, Hoppy. Get in that cell. Cassidy, I've got a new parole officer. Yeah? And the county's got a new sheriff. Go ahead, Judge. Give him the election returns. Poppy, you got 120 votes. And Doyle here got 133. And I can't figure out how it happened. There was more votes than voters. That's what happened. Yeah, they bribed the voters and stuffed the ballot box. They're as crooked as a dog's hind leg. That's a lie. Wait a minute. You've had enough fighting for one day. Besides, the new sheriff's liable to throw you in jail. There's your badge and there your keys. Don't let them get rusty on you. Suffering cats, Jimmy. He must be twins. The hoppy I know would never let that crook take office. Well, there's nothing else I can do, California. Well, there's something we can do. We'll convince the governor the election was a fraud. That shouldn't take long. He'll be back in office next week. If he lives that long. Come on, Sonny, hand over that tin star. I'm going to be the new deputy sheriff. This ought to make me look right respectable. Yeah. You better deputize the Garms boys, too. Come on, Doyle. Let us out of here. Uh, don't you think we ought to wait a little while? Well, now, you're not going to double-cross the men who elected you to office, are you, Jerry? I see our new sheriff's going to rule with an iron hand. Yeah, and a head to match. It's just that he's more broad-minded than you are, Cassidy. Oh, by the way, from now on, Jerry Doyle's saloon will be the new sheriff's headquarters. <laughs> Hoppy, sometimes I just, I just don't understand. Me neither. Well, what is it you don't understand? Well, what'd you back down for? What are you going to do now? First, I'm going to wash up. Second, I'm going to eat a nice, big, juicy steak. Then I'm going over and visit the sheriff's new headquarters. You mean Doyle's? Sure. Uh, just count me in on the first two. <laughs> Understand now? No. Me neither. Good. Come on. And 
this says you're bluffing. Raise you a hundred. Bullets. A pair. <laughs> Lucky at politics. Unlucky at cards. Eh, Sheriff? <laughs> Will you tell your men to stop shooting up my saloon? You're the sheriff. Why don't you arrest them for disturbing the peace? Yeah, or make them deputies. <laughs> <laughs> now, this has gone far enough. I can't front for you fellas so long as those hoodlums are in town. Now, listen, Jerry, we put you in office for one purpose. To give us the protection of the law. Yeah, and we ain't leaving town till Cassidy's six feet under. And you're aiming to stay for quite a spell. Yeah, we'll see about that. Now, boys, here's a pot worth gambling for. What's up, Ted? Cassidy once put a price on my head. Now I'm posting the reward. It's $2,000 for the man that kills Cassidy. Whoever gets rid of Cassidy will be the biggest man in the West. Oh, I know he's quick in the draw. So are all of you. Well, you don't seem so anxious to do the job. I'll take my chance along the rest of you. We'll deal one hand of poker, no draw. And the winner gets the first shot at Cassidy. Suits me. All right, deal the car. Hey, boys, gather around. It's gonna be the biggest poker game that you... So long as this game concerns me, do you mind if I watch? Go right ahead. Don't let me spoil your fun. Rest up, you get on the other side. Come on. I wouldn't touch that pot, Hammond. You placed your bet. Or are you getting absent-minded? Deal him. Uh, not, not me. I'll sit this one out. You boys don't seem very interested in your cards. Turn them over. King High. A pair of deuces. Not a pair. Jacks. I got nothing. Pair of aces. Well, it's all yours, Sam. Or do you share your luck with your brother? I ain't armed, Cassidy. Simmons will loan you his. Get up. Stand up. No, oh, Hammond, it looks like nobody wants to earn that price you put on my head. Well, it was only a joke, wasn't it, boys? Conspiracy to murder is no joke. Since you were a witness, arrest these men. Arrest them? What? There are too many of them. Yeah, there are way too many of them. Well, since you won't do your duty, I'll give you 12 hours to get out of town. And if we don't leave? You'll leave, all right. Riding, walking, or feet first.
nice lunch, Catherine. Thank you. Sure was. You know, Hoppy, I've rechecked those ballots a hundred times. I still can't figure out how Doyle got so many votes. Let's take another look at them. Will you excuse it? Certainly. Uh, do you mind if I finish my coffee, Judge? No, go ahead. Sure. Trying to eat that. Uh-oh. That better? Oh, much. Now let that be a lesson to you. You've got the appetite of a horse and the jaws of a chicken. Chicken? I could eat one right now, feathers and all. <laughs> Stuffs himself like my enemy stuffed the ballot boxes. Yes, but how are you going to prove it? I don't know. Are these all printed on the same press? Absolutely. I saw the printing done myself. Well, how does it happen this broken type only appears on Doyle's ballots? Broken type? Yeah. This E and the R. Hoppy? That means that those ballots were printed by another press. It also means they're counterfeit. There's the evidence. Why don't you ride to the state capitol and see the governor? I'm not leaving here until Hammond and that gang get out of town. Hoppy Hammond and his gang are saddling up at the livery stable, but there's three of them missing. Well, maybe they've already left. Look here, Hoppy, you can't go out on that street today. They just want to see if I meant what I said. You're not going alone. Oh, these hombres are even too tough for me in my weakened condition. Oh, really? Yeah, and this time you ain't getting no barroom mirror to help you out. All right, you can be the eyes in the back of my head. Why did I have to open my big mouth? What? N nothing. Let's go. California, take this side of the street. Watch your step. You get down this side, Jimmy. Madam, a combination of a Texas Western and erupting Brazuvi. Get him up! I'll get you covered. Drop that gun! I got you! Oh, God. What a dummy I was, just think. Uh, what a dummy it is. 
Oh, I do it. You such foolish things, I'm more trouble than I'm worth. Let that be. Come, go to the outside. Lie still. Get him up, get him up, get him up, get him up. Get him up. Everybody, every one of you. Looks like you've won again. This town ain't big enough for both of us, so we're hitting the trail. You're short three men, Clanton and two others. Where are they? Oh, Clanton. He has a message for you. Yeah? What's the message? He wants to deliver it to you personally. house and get that fixed. All right. There, it'll be all right in a few days. You always did want a vaccination, Mark. Yeah, but I didn't say anything about wanting it with a 44. No, but... Uh, Ow! It hurt? A little. Doggone it, I should have taken care of those coyotes myself. <laughs> Hoppy, what were you trying to do? Commit suicide walking into a trap like that? Well, the new sheriff wouldn't do his duty, so well, I... Well, then we've got to get another sheriff. And we'll take care of it my way. Sure. I'm taking the next stage to the Capitol and show those counterfeit ballots to the governor. Then we'll have some law and order around here. Uh, suit yourself, but I think you should have a bodyguard with you. Don't you, Jimmy? I sure do, Hoppy. Hello, Ike. Hi, Joe.
Any sign of a posse? No, no posse, no grub, no nothing. I'm through, Hammond. Me and my boys are heading back for Indian Territory. <laughs> so you're going to let Cassidy bluff you out again, huh? What do you mean, bluff? I saw what happened to Clanton and the Garms brothers, and that was no bluff. Why, we could turn this country inside out with Jerry Doyle as sheriff. Doyle. They'll ride him out of town on a rail. Hey, Hammond, here comes the coach. Do you want to take a crack at one more haul before leaving? Suits me, but we split 50-50. Fair enough. Did you take your man? I'll head him off. And run him into us. Come on, boys. Are you mad about something? No. Well, you know, it wasn't my idea to come along. As long as we have to make this trip together, you might as well be sociable. <laughs> oh, it isn't that, Jimmy. I'm just worrying about how things are going in town. Whether or not the governor will help us. Oh, I think you will. I hope so. surprise. This is better than a ship of the gold. Come on, get out of here. Yeah, if you can't get Cassidy, get his right-hand man. Come on, boy, let's string him up. Now, wait a minute. They're worth more as hostages. Take it up to camp, boys. Come on. Hey, Pete, come in. Take this note into town, drop it on Cassidy's doorstep. Thanks, kid, for baiting a nice little trap. Time up. There you are, sir. Thanks. Yes, sirree. If it hadn't been for me, Hoppy wouldn't be alive today. We was fighting a bunch of Indians, led by Lean and Mule, uh, sitting bull. Well, the winged hobby, 
I drug them behind the tree, shielding them with a wall of living flesh. That's me. All of a sudden, this hombre, leaning mule, er, uh, boo, comes a flying at me with a bowie knife friend, a tomahawk. My ammunition's gone. There's nothing for me to do but stand there and take. Single he slings a knife, pinning my shirt to the tree. But quick as a flash, I pull it out and I fling it. Come on, get up here. What's the matter? He missed you. Look at that hobby. What? Well, what is it, Hoppy? Hammond's kidnapped Catherine and Jimmy. Kidnapped them? Are they hurt? I don't know. Does he want a ransom? Yeah. Cassidy, if you want to see your two young friends alive, come to the Bighorn Buttes before sundown alone. It's your life or theirs. And it's signed Hammond. Big Horn Butch. That's Hammond's old hideout. Yeah. Saddle my horse. I'm leaving right away. Hoppy, there must be some other way. No, there isn't, Judge. I shouldn't have let those kids go alone. Let me round up the Bar 20 boys, Hoppy. All right, but tell Buck not to do any shooting till I get to the hideout. You mean you're you're going along? Not exactly. Sit down, Doyle. I got a note here I want you to read. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it. No, I didn't say you had anything to do with it. I want to know what you're going to do about it. I can't do anything. Besides, Hammond says he wants to see you alone. But I've got a better idea. You're going with me. No. No, Cassidy. Come on. Get your horses and guns. Get over to the house, boys. Hoppy now. Come on, we can't let him go up there alone. You know what Hoppy said, Buck? We gotta stay under cover until the shooting starts. Yeah. Hammond, come here. Yeah, that's Cassidy, all right. I thought you told him to come alone. Who's with him? Looks like our friend Doyle. Never mind about him, you keep your eye on Cassidy. If he turns and makes a break for it, let him have it. Let him have it. 
Bobby can't keep me out of this scrape any longer. Me neither. Let's go. We got him all right. He lost his nerve. I never expected that. <laughs> Cassidy lost his nerve.
California Carlson, first sheriff. <laughs> Doggone, it sure looks good up there. Yeah, a lot of dignity, too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of dignity. Uh, Poppy, I've waited for this for 40 years. <laughs> Sure, sure. You want to be sheriff now that Hoppy's cleaned out that den of the 40 thieves. Why, you young nuthead, that's the trouble. Uh, me, a man of action, and uh, no chance to see action around here. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, if I am elected the new <laughs> sheriff... The governor has granted our sheriff jurisdiction over Indian territory. If I am elected the new sheriff... Uh, Indian territory? Sure. Every fugitive killer in the country hides out there. All you have to do is go in and drag them out. Oh. Drag them out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh! Oh! oh. You hurt? No, but Hoppy, I... I know. Why did we ever get into politics? Ha, 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 ha.